see the other one's 30. I can go to 10 o'clock now. So now I'm gonna go up a little higher. This should go maybe 40 or 50. So I do the same thing, a little bit on the front leg, hinge it up, follow through a little bit higher. I have different distances. So it's all about different distances. If you wanna play lower, you can play it back in your stands and kind of hold on to it. Play it back in your stands, finish lower. That's gonna go a lot lower. So different trajectories, different heights, and different speeds or different positions on the clock will give you those different distances. So start there, then you can apply some other things down the road. This is how we do it at Heatherwood as a professional. We'll see you later. Brad Smith here from Heatherwood, Director of Instruction. I'm here to show you how to putt even better. Okay, not only we had a speed drill, we have making sure you hit it on the line. And the line is this thing I made for a couple pennies, two pencils, a string. You don't have to have the colors. I think I had an old uh, Halloween pencil and some red string. You can find, do whatever you have to do. The whole key is to get this ball so it's, the string is intersecting the ball. So then what you're doing is you're trying to roll this ball on a straight line. So you gotta find a straight line, make sure it's straight uphill. I guess you can do downhill, but I like to go uphill. And all I'm trying to do is understand if I'm pulling or pushing. So this is where we get the, make sure the ball is rolling down that imaginary line in this case, we don't have the imaginary line, it's the real line, and I can get my putter that has a line here, and I can line it up to the red line. So this line here is I'm gonna set that up to the red line. So you can still run your, your process, your routine if you want, and it's all about taking that ball down the line. And you can see I had good face control, it rolled down the line very, very well. If I push it, you'll see, so it could be swing path or face angle, so my face angle is gonna be a little off. And you can see I pushed it. Plus I hit it too hard. Speed control is pretty important. So this one I'm gonna pull it. So this one I get here and the face shuts down, like a lot of people do. They shut it down because they're looking or they're getting too quick to look at, go in the hole. You will not lose a ball on the putting green, so no reason to look up. Keep your eyes still, take it down this imaginary line and you'll start knocking in some putts. Let's say you're playing golf. You don't have this imaginary line, hopefully you have it in your head, but you can put the ball, you can put some lines on the ball, okay? Or if you don't want to use the lines, there's usually a, you know, you could use tie list or whatever and line that up to this imaginary line that you have when you don't have the line. And we get set up here. and get it lined up there, there you go. So that line matches the line I wanna roll it down. So now I can line the line up of the ball with the putter, again, the putter line. So if I didn't have this line here, I would line all that up if I'm out on the plane on the golf course, and now I can roll that ball, hit a little too hard, okay? And I did push it a little bit. So that's why you shouldn't practice what you're not pushing in the pulling, okay? I like to practice what I want to do, not what I don't want to do, okay? But at least I know the push and the pull, that kind of thing. But I can line that putter up. If you have good speed on this short of putt, the ball should only be this far away. Okay, anywhere from the fr front part of the hole to the back, about a foot past. Don't want a longer and you don't want a shorter because you're not going to learn break. Very important. But that's how we win. And it's all about, here at Heatherwood, learning how to hit it like the pros.
Brad Smith, Director of Instruction here at Heatherwood. And we have the luxury of having Austin hit a shot for us. And we're going to talk to Austin how he thinks through the, the, the process of playing golf. So we're here on number 10 at uh, Heatherwood. And we're trying to play a shot where we have trouble on the left-hand side and a little bit on the right side, but the right side, I don't feel, comes into play that much. So, the way I usually would do it, I would tee up, since I play a draw, I'm going to play on the left side of the tee, away from trouble, teeing away from trouble. So it's all about angles. So if your angle is better from one side or the other, that's what you're going to try to do. So Austin likes to play a fade with his driver, However, he plays a draw with most of his other clubs. So we're going to talk to him about how he would play this hole. So we have a dog leg left, and with this yardage book that he's used to using through college and now as a professional, he's going to look at the yardages and know how he's going to be playing this hole. It also shows him how, if, the, if he knows where the pin is, where he needs to come in from also. So he may change his strategy where the hole is. So on this hole, we know the pin is on the right-hand side, so he's probably going to play a draw, but we're going to ask him. So how would you play this hole and tell me how you, what you're thinking in this process? Yeah, so I'm definitely always going to try to hit a draw on this one just because of the dog leg left and because of how the trees kind of interfere with if you were to hit a fade. Um, some guys like to take it up top and can kind of fade one over the corner. I like to just drop back a club. A three wood for me draws a little bit easier, so I can aim just a little bit right of that 150 marker out there and just try to shape one from right to left around the corner a little bit to give myself a good chance. Yeah, because he sees on this here, he sees that the cut is pretty, I mean, how far do you hit your driver or your three wood? I carry it anywhere from 265 to 270. Yeah, so he, he can cut the corner pretty easily without any trouble, so that's what he's trying to do. So, and I think he likes to tee up on one side or the other, depending on the shot. With, where, which side do you want to tee up on? With, with the draw, definitely I would tee up more on the left side of the box. Okay, um, this hole, sometimes I might tee up a little bit more right, depending on where the tee box is located. If it's on the far left side, I would definitely go a little bit right, just to give myself a little bit more visual of the fairway. Good. But today, with the tee box more centered, I'll, I'll tee up on the left side to give myself the room to hit the draw on this shot. Perfect. So it's all about angles. Perfect. So let's see how he does this. And one thing you should be watching, he runs a great routine. Very important. Why do you run routine, Austin? Uh, it's important to keep it the same uh, over every shot. Uh, so I have a checklist, kind of, you could say, that I go through in my head. Um, and it's just a system to keep, keep me in the, in the shot and make sure I do it every shot beforehand. So it's all about staying focused. Absolutely perfect. Great shot. Thank you. Is that pretty much what you visualized? Yeah, definitely very, very close to what I visualized. Maybe wanted a little bit just further, a little further left, left. but yeah. I mean, I'll take that 10 times out of 10. Yeah, it's in the middle of the fairway, so yeah, just a little more left. Yeah, yeah. so that's awesome. Yeah, good job. No complaints there, thank you. That is exactly how professionals do it here. <laughs> thank you. Good job. Thank you. Welcome to the City of Springboro Heatherwoods Golf Club. I'm Mayor John Eggerbo. We are so happy that the Ohio High School Athletic Association Southwest Regional Golf Tournament is going to be hosted right here in Springboro. Welcome. We are so glad to have you. We wish you nothing but success throughout the whole tournament. If there's anything at all we can do in Springboro to make this tournament even better, please let us know. We'll see you around the golf course. Weibel Energy Systems is a full-service mechanical contractor and building services company focused on making buildings work better. You can rely on us for all of your building's operational needs, including HVAC installation, service, and preventative maintenance, 
building automation and controls, energy services and monitoring, healthy building consultations, and commercial plumbing, as well as security cameras and door access controls. Weibel Energy Systems serves Dayton, Cincinnati, and Columbus. Learn more at GoWeibel.com. The 398-yard par-4 opening hole at Heatherwood is a downhill dogleg right. The tee shot is blind. Out of bounds lurks around the right corner of the dogleg, while water on the left may collect long drives that roll through the fairway. For those who find the short grass, only a downhill short iron will be left for the approach to a large two-tiered green. The 491-yard par for second hole favors a right-to-left ball flight off the tee as a large pond lines the right side, narrowing the fairway, which also slopes towards the water. The demanding second shot will be with a mid-to-long iron to a green surrounded by trouble. The water wraps around the back of the green. Three bunkers protect the right, and swales, mounds, and rough on the left put pressure on a player's short game. A long and beautiful 200-yard par 3 third has a water hazard on the right that shouldn't come into play. The elevated green is shaped at a 45-degree angle with an opening on the right side, allowing for right-to-left shots to be ran up to the putting surface. The winding 531-yard par-5 fourth hole has water everywhere. The drive must avoid the pond on the right and a bunker on the left. Another pond comes into play for the second shot, whether players decide to lay up to the right or carry over the water to try to reach this green in two shots. The 420-yard par-4 fifth hole requires a precise tee shot through a chute of dense trees and short of a creek that crosses the fairway diagonally. Those missing the fairway will face a difficult second shot from the rough as more trees block a clear path to the green which is small and surrounded by mounds and rough. The 399-yard par-4 sixth hole is lined on either side by out-of-bounds. A good strategy and precision is required off the tee, as mature trees narrow the landing area. For the approach shot, distance control is key in order to find this small green guarded by two bunkers. The 377-yard par-4 seventh hole is one of the shortest par-4s at Heatherwood, but it is uphill and lined by out-of-bounds on both sides. The winding fairway and a cross bunker make club selection off the tee more important than usual in order to find the short grass. The approach shot will be with a short iron to a shallow, kidney-shaped green protected by deep bunkers. The 168-yard par-3 eighth hole may not be the longest, but it is situated at the highest point in the entire golf course, making wind a very important factor. Player success begins on the tee at the 513-yard par-5 ninth. The severe downhill fairway allows players to hit the longest drive of the day with a hope to reach the green in two shots. Those laying up their second must navigate through two grass bunkers that narrow the fairway at about 100 yards from the green 
which is surrounded by four large and deep bunkers. An opening in the front allows for long shots to be ran up to the green. The 440 yard par 4 10th is a sharp dog leg left. A solid drive with a right to left spin will leave only a wedge to the green, but it could also end up out of bounds if overdone. The uphill approach shot is to a large green unprotected by bunkers, but its convex shape will make slight misses roll off the putting surface. The winding 546 yard par 5 11th hole requires both accuracy and thoughtful shot making. The tee shot must avoid a creek that runs along the left side of the entire hole, mature trees on the right and two pot fairway bunkers. The second shot favors a right to left ball flight and it also requires distance control to avoid overshooting the fairway. The small green is dangerously close to the creek on the left and it slopes from right to left towards the water. As the shortest hole in the golf course, the 140-yard par 312 provides an opportunity for anyone to make birdie. Golfers must avoid overshooting the green as it is built on a small plateau that falls away in the back. The 348-yard par-4 13th hole provides very little margin for error. The tee shot must combine both accurate direction and distance control in order to find the left-to-right sloping fairway. Only a wedge will be left for the approach to this shallow green that puts, once again, a premium on distance control. The demanding 421-yard par-4 14th hole is a beautiful dogleg right. The tee shot must avoid a water hazard on the right and a small bunker on the left to find the undulating fairway. The green is protected by a pot bunker in the front left and another in the back. The 394-yard par-4 15th hole is yet another example of the shot-making demands at Heatherwood Golf Club. A right-to-left ball flight off the tee will leave players with the best angle to attack the green. The second shot must carry over a creek to reach this shallow green placed at an angle. The 451 yard par 4 16th is the longest par 4 on the golf course. The tee shot must be threaded between dense trees on either side of the fairway, as well as a creek that runs along the right all the way to the green. The second shot will be with a long iron to this large green, protected only by a bunker short right. Shots missed too far to the right will find the water. The 229-yard par 317th has no bunkers to protect one of the largest greens at Heatherwood Golf Club. Many pin placements allow the superintendent to change the difficulty of the hole. The 484-yard par 4 finishing hole puts pressure on every facet of a player's game. An accurate drive is a must in order to avoid mature trees on either side and a creek lining the right. From the fairway, most players will choose a long iron for the approach to the large convex green. 
A series of sand and grass bunkers surround the green, as well as rough, mounds, and swales. The 398-yard par-4 opening hole at Heatherwood is a downhill dogleg right. The tee shot is blind. Out of bounds lurks around the right corner of the dogleg, while water on the left may collect long drives that roll through the fairway. For those who find the short grass, only a downhill short iron will be left for the approach to a large two-tiered green. The 491-yard par for second hole favors a right-to-left ball flight off the tee as a large pond lines the right side, narrowing the fairway, which also slopes towards the water. The demanding second shot will be with a mid-to-long iron to a green surrounded by trouble. The water wraps around the back of the green. Three bunkers protect the right, and swales, mounds, and rough on the left put pressure on a player's short game. Long and beautiful 200-yard par 3 third has a water hazard on the right that shouldn't come into play. The elevated green is shaped at a 45-degree angle with an opening on the right side, allowing for right-to-left shots to be ran up to the putting surface. The winding 531-yard par-5 fourth hole has water everywhere. The drive must avoid the pond on the right and a bunker on the left. Another pond comes into play for the second shot. Whether players decide to lay up to the right or carry over the water to try to reach this green in two shots. The 420-yard par-4 fifth hole requires a precise tee shot through a chute of dense trees and short of a creek that crosses the fairway diagonally. Those missing the fairway will face a difficult second shot from the rough as more trees block a clear path to the green, which is small and surrounded by mounds and rough. The 399-yard par-4 sixth hole is lined on either side by out-of-bounds. A good strategy and precision is required off the tee, as mature trees narrow the landing area. For the approach shot, distance control is key in order to find this small green guarded by two bunkers. The 377-yard par-4 seventh hole is one of the shortest par-4s at Heatherwood, but it is uphill and lined by out-of-bounds on both sides. The winding fairway and a cross bunker make club selection off the tee more important than usual in order to find the short grass. The approach shot will be with a short iron to a shallow, kidney-shaped green protected by deep bunkers. The 168-yard par-3 eighth hole may not be the longest, but it is situated at the highest point in the entire golf course, making wind a very important factor.
player success begins on the tee at the 513 yard par 5 ninth. The severe downhill fairway allows players to hit the longest drive of the day with a hope to reach the green in two shots. Those laying up their second must navigate through two grass bunkers that narrow the fairway at about 100 yards from the green, which is surrounded by four large and deep bunkers. An opening in the front allows for long shots to be ran up to the green. The 440-yard par 4 tenth is a sharp dog leg left. A solid drive with a right to left spin will leave only a wedge to the green, but it could also end up out of bounds if overdone. The uphill approach shot is to a large green unprotected by bunkers, but its convex shape will make slight misses roll off the putting surface. The winding 546-yard par 5 11th hole requires both accuracy and thoughtful shot making. The tee shot must avoid a creek that runs along the left side of the entire hole, mature trees on the right, and two pot fairway bunkers. The second shot favors a right-to-left ball flight, and it also requires distance control to avoid overshooting the fairway. The small green is dangerously close to the creek on the left, and it slopes from right to left towards the water. As the shortest hole in the golf course, the 140-yard par 312 provides an opportunity for anyone to make birdie. Golfers must avoid overshooting the green as it is built on a small plateau that falls away in the back. The 348-yard par 4 13th hole provides very little margin for error. The tee shot must combine both accurate direction and distance control in order to find the left to right sloping fairway. Only a wedge will be left for the approach to this shallow green that puts once again a premium on distance control. The demanding 421-yard par 4 14th hole is a beautiful dogleg right. The tee shot must avoid a water hazard on the right and a small bunker on the left to find the undulating fairway. The green is protected by a pot bunker in the front left and another in the back. The 394-yard par 4 15th hole is yet another example of the shot-making demands at Heatherwood Golf Club. A right-to-left ball flight off the tee will leave players with the best angle to attack the green. The second shot must carry over a creek to reach this shallow green placed at an angle. The 451 yard par 4 16th is the longest par 4 on the golf course. The tee shot must be threaded between dense trees on either side of the fairway, as well as a creek that runs along the right all the way to the green. The second shot will be with a long iron to this large green, protected only by a bunker short right. Shots missed too far to the right will find the water. The 
229-yard par 3 17th has no bunkers to protect one of the largest greens at Heatherwood Golf Club. Many pin placements allow the superintendent to change the difficulty of the hole. The 484-yard par-4 finishing hole puts pressure on every facet of a player's game. An accurate drive is a must in order to avoid mature trees on either side and a creek lining the right. From the fairway, most players will choose a long iron for the approach to the large convex green. A series of sand and grass bunkers surround the green, as well as rough, mounds, and swales. Welcome to Heatherwood Golf Club, City of Springboro's municipal course, where you can host the wedding or the special event of your dreams. From small intimate functions such as rehearsal dinners and baby showers to larger events like weddings, graduation parties, or corporate events. Join us to experience our exceptional service, high-end facilities, and breathtaking views. Check us out on Facebook, Twitter, or online at golfheatherwood.com, or just stop by to play a round of golf or check out the clubhouse. You may also contact me by phone directly at 937-748-3222. Hello everyone, I'm Matt Cole, the head golf professional and director of club fitting here at Heatherwood. One thing we put a really big emphasis on is club fitting. Most players don't know just how important it is to their game until they can actually see it. And we utilize technology made by Foresight Sports called the Foresight GC Quad. What it does, it has four cameras, so it takes 200 high-speed photos at 10,000 frames per second. So basically we can know everything that's going on with that club and how we need to build the best set for you to improve your game. I got my friend Chase here. I'm gonna have him hit a ball so that we can show you just a little bit of the technology we offer here at Heatherwood. Go ahead, Chase. Pretty good one. Okay, folks, if you look on the screen, what's gonna come up is basically gonna show us everything that's going on with that golf club. So as you can see here, it's even able to give us the point of contact, which is the red dot on the face. It's giving us the path where the face was and tells us the lie angle of that club, which is extremely important. Anytime the lie angle of that club is too far down, the toe's gonna grab the ground and flip open. So you're gonna miss more shots to the right. And there's a lot of golfers out there that miss a lot of shots to the right. So anytime, just come in, give us a call. We'll set you up with a fitting appointment. Find out why we're one of the best fitters in the state of Ohio. So I first got interested in the golf, um, mainly through my brothers actually. So I have a middle brother, Josh, he also played at Kent State. He'll be, he's four years older than me, and then my oldest brother, Jake, also played at University of Dayton, and he's six years older than me. So I got into golf, I was really into all sports growing up. I played soccer, baseball, basketball, and golf. Um, I think I started playing when I was four. and. You know, we live out here, we're pretty much out here every day, so just being around Jake and Josh, my two brothers, watching them hit, it got me into the game and it seemed like as I got older I realized that I was pretty good at it, so yeah, just learning from them, learning from my dad too, he was big into golf, he played in college. We're just a big golfing family, so that's kind of how I got into the game. The state championship's a big tournament. Definitely a lot of preparation that goes into every tournament I play in, but definitely more focus is put into that one. The course they play it at is pretty long, and 
you got to hit it straight off the tee, so definitely put a lot of emphasis on kind of like the driver and stuff like that. But then you also got to be good around the green, so pretty much all the facilities they have here help to prep me. That's where I prepare for all my tournaments. Um, yeah, just play as much golf as you can is how I like to prepare. Playing in the state championship was definitely a great experience. I would say it's probably one of the best experiences I've had just playing against all my peers. I know a lot of the guys are just from other high school tournaments and it's definitely pretty nerve wracking, especially like I knew I had a pretty good chance to win. So kind of everyone's rooting for you. And I had a lot of my friends from high school came up to watch me. That was just, it was awesome. My parents were there, people from Heatherwood. It was great. Yeah, winning the state tournament actually kind of jump started my college career because at the time I was, I think I committed to Kent State earlier that year, so I kind of played my whole senior year knowing where I was going to college, but um, I mean, I had a pretty good high school season. It's just like the competition at the state tournament is obviously really good, and knowing that I could win that tournament against the players that were in it just like gives you a ton of confidence, which is what you need on the golf course because it's as much a mental game as it is a physical sport. So yeah, winning the state tournament was a huge boost of confidence for me, uh, mentally and physically. Tips I would give for the players who are looking to make it to the state championship. Uh, I know a lot of the guys on the Spring Bro team, but just in general, I would say stick with it. Like I said earlier, golf's as much mental as it is physical. So being able to get your mind right and know that you have the game to make it there is a big part of it and then kind of just trusting the training you put in because obviously you got to put the time in but uh, just a lot of trust goes into golf I think and being able to commit to your shots under pressure and kind of knowing what is the best part of your game and kind of using that to help you succeed. Heatherwood's definitely it's a challenge tee to green there's some intimidating tee shots out here like I know two is pretty intimidating and then coming down the stretch 16 through 18 you got to hit some good shots so figuring out what your option is off the tee that's going to give you the most success committing to that and then around the greens um, I feel like you can make a
the city of Springboro and Heatherwood Golf Club welcome you to today's live coverage of the Ohio High School Athletic Association Southwest District Division I Boys Golf Championships. I'm Neil Hamburgy. I'm here with Austin Schoonmaker. We're going to be bringing you the coverage today. Good morning, Austin. Yeah, hey, good morning, Neil. Um, we just had a live shot of the range. Kids are warming up and getting ready to go. If you were trying to find us this morning at about 10 o'clock, we did have a little bit of a frost delay. So our first tee time is going to be here in just, a, well, one minute. So we're going to be going off at one. We're going to goal this morning is to bring you uh, all the tee shots of all the players. So if you're tuning in to see your favorite player, we're at least getting one camera and get his tee shot out there. Again, here's a live shot of the driving range as the kids are warming up. Um, but we should be getting ready to head to the first tee here for the 10 o'clock time any second now. We do have, like I said, we had frost this morning, but it is warming up quickly. And it looks like we're going to have a beautiful day for golf. Again, we are expecting someone to be on the first tee here any second now. But Austin, as these young men are warming up for the round, what are they trying to get done this morning? Yeah, trying to get loose um, physically and mentally. Obviously hitting some balls in the range, getting warmed up, trying to get a feel for how their game's uh, looking today. Obviously going to head over to the uh, short game area, do some putting, get a feel for how the greens are rolling and the speed that they're rolling at. Um, and then obviously get mentally prepared as well uh, for the day ahead of them. Welcome to the Division I Boys District Qualifier for the Southwest District of the OHSAA. Teeing off first in the 10 o'clock starting time from Talawanga High School, Brady Schutte. That's Mark Robart to start on number one. You'll be seeing him all morning. Uh, this is Brady Schutte from Talawanda. He's a junior. Getting ready to get today's round underway. Yeah, 394 yard par four here on hole number one. Brady going with driver. Thank you. Nice swing there for Brady. Being off to start second from Loveland High School, Ethan Walzer. Ethan, a sophomore for the Tigers. Nice swing there. Ethan hurt here a couple good balls, so that one's headed down the middle of the fairway. Ding off third from Centerville High School, Caleb Witt. Caleb, also a sophomore for the Elks. A mini club twirl there for Caleb. Must have liked that one. Teeing off fourth from Beaver Creek High School. Will Creighton. Rounding out the first tee time here to start the day. Will Creighton. Creighton. Will is a sophomore from Beaver Creek. Scotty Scheffler move there by Will. <laughs> Active feet. All right, and the first group's underway. So what we do have here today, we have 16 teams and 16 individuals uh, trying to qualify for next week's state championship. It's going to be played Friday and Saturday at uh, the OSU Golf Club on the Scarlet Golf Course. So each team has uh, five players. They will count the four best scores of the five. And then, like I said, there's also 16 individuals that are trying to qualify um, as an individual today, they're taking three teams to the state championship and three individuals not on those qualifying teams. So that's kind of what's going to be happening here this morning. We will be going off the front and the back. We have got tee time staggered, so 
as we see the 1030 time walking down one fairway. We will soon have the 1035 time going off at number 10. We continue to do that in 10 minute intervals until we get everybody on the golf course this morning. Again, all these teams and individuals have qualified through sectional qualifying. So we may talk about what they shot as far as qualification goes, sectionally and things like that as we move forward through the day. But um, it's kind of what's going to happen this morning. And then as we get players turning to 9 and 18 greens, we also have cameras behind those greens. So we'll give you some some action shots of them as they're holing out and finishing on those holes and uh, continue to do that until we qualify three teams and three individuals. Here's a quick look at 10T. Um, Austin and I, how we're kind of keeping track of the players is by what they're wearing. So we're really happy to see a flowered shirt or a paisley shirt or whatever that has a prints on that young man's shirt. That's going to make it easier <laughs> for us to know who that is when we see him later on. Uh, so this is going to be Bob Rice getting ready to get us started. I think it's going to, I think it's going to move. I think it's going to move this way and that way, the shadow. Yeah, I think so. I wouldn't worry about it. Welcome and good morning. This is the Division Two Boys Sectional or District Division One. I'm reading your script, Steve. Qualifier for the Southwest District of the Ohio High School Athletic Association. Thank you for being here. Tina first. From Coleraine, Michael Casagrande. Michael, again with the print golf shirt as a junior. looking a little bit to the right Again, we'll talk about the holes here a little bit number 10 quite a bit more difficult than number one as far as the starting hole goes but it's a 440 yard from Mason Blake Ernst dog leg to the left Blake Ernst next to play sophomore from Mason That one's right down the middle. Teen off next from Fairmont, Evan Gentilly. Evan Gentilly, also a sophomore. Looks happy with that one. If you can look out in the fairway there, right by the tree line there on the left, you can kind of see the 150 post, the white post there. So that's really their target line. We're actually from this tee a little bit farther to the left of that. It actually opens up if you can get it around the corner of the trees there. Again, dog leg left, 440 yard par four. And Tina fourth from Troy, Van Davis. Ben Davis, the fin final player in this group. Freshman for the Trojans. And heard another good ball, Van. So the 1035 group off and running. Looks like we may have Michael Casagrande going to hit a provisional ball. Um, there is an out of bounds there. You can see the stakes there. The driving range is off to the left of this hole, so it looks like Ben's going to hit another one just in case that one isn't in play. All right, so looks like that one's 
going to be okay. Couldn't really self carry the fairway or not. It's about a 180 to 200 yard carry to get it to that fairway from that tee. So definitely have to strike it solidly to carry it out there. But uh, these young men are off and running. Again, we're bringing you live coverage of this morning's Ohio High School Athletic Association Southwest District Division I Boys Golf Championships. Here from Heatherwood Golf Club in Springboro, Ohio. Sixteen teams trying to qualify for those three spots in the state championship next week. Along with 16 individuals trying to take one of those three individual spots and get to play next week for the state championship. Definitely go ahead, Neil. I was going to ask you, Austin, what the what the goal is here as you're getting your day started, and and you know, obviously, you want to get off to a good start. But uh, what do you do to try to make sure that happens? Um, I don't want to cut. Yeah, I know. Mark off here. <laughs> <laughs> Teeing off first in the 1040 group from Talawanga High School, Micah Daniels. Mike is a senior for the Braves. Yeah, Micah going with driver here on number one. See Micah there pointing a little right, um, likely at the, those trees over there. Seeing off down, second right. from Loveland High School, Brad Gray. Brad also a senior. Swing there for Brad down the middle of the fairway. <clears throat> Teeing off third from Centerville High School, Zach Kester. Zach is a junior for the Elks. Smooth swing there by Zach down the middle of the fairway. Teeing off fourth from Beaver Creek High School, Anderson Davis. Anderson last to play here for the 10, 10 original tee time, but 10.40 after the, after the delay. Anderson is a senior for the Beavers. Started off a little left there for Anderson, but definitely open opens up down the left side, so should be should have a decent look at the green from there. Yeah, number one, kind of the mirror image of number ten, dog leg to the right. Again, from that tee there, uh, we're playing it at 394. Um, trying to look and see, you can see the top of the 150 stick barely there in the distance, and that's their target line. And again, trying to. Um, get one in play there after it reaches that little area there with the 150 stick. It does go downhill a little bit to the green. So 
probably not playing at 394. But um, again, good solid tee shot down the middle sets you up for what could be a birdie opportunity for sure to get your round started. Again, easier hole than number 10 for sure. Number 10, you got to hit a really solid drive to get it out there to get yourself in position to uh, attack that green. Yeah, certainly, especially. Um, I don't know how long it's been since we built that new tee there on number 10, Neil. Four years or so? Yeah, somewhere in that range. Um, the boys are playing from there today. Um, I don't know if you mentioned, but playing from uh, 440 yards in hole number 10. And as you'll see all morning, those trees that protect kind of cutting the corner or anything like that, you kind of have to hit it out to the right. Um, definitely the safer shot, but leaves a much longer shot in. Uh, if you can work something from right to left or hit a high one over the trees, you can kind of get a shorter shot in, but it's certainly a more difficult uh, starting hole for these boys today. That is true, but you know, they got to play all the holes also. That's they right. play them in different order. So um, I think, though, um, I'd rather start on the front if it was me personally. But, uh, you know, these young men don't get to get that choice. Here's a nice view. We're looking at number one there as we're talking about the dog leg. Playing first from Corain. Jackson Lamabrines. All right, so jumping back over to number 10. This will be the uh, 10.45 start time. This will be Jackson Labrindez um, from Colerain. He's a junior. Swing there for Jackson. Playing second from Mason Thomas Neary. Thomas is a junior for the Comets. Looks like that one may be going a little bit right. Playing um, next from Fairmont, Eli Schwedman. Eli Schwegman is a senior for the Firebirds. Looks like that was hugging the tree line there on the left side. It may have just nipped a tree there as it Play went next past. from Troy, Jeffrey Smith. Our final player in this group, Jeffrey Smith, a junior for the Trojans. Looks like a good swing there by Jeffrey. And as we talked about this morning, we did have a little bit of frost delay, but uh, it is warming up quickly. Actually saw some with a peeled the layers off already. So that's a good sign for not only them, but us, Austin. <laughs> <laughs> it certainly is. I actually threw my uh, gloves in the truck thinking I might need them this morning, but definitely don't. It's, it's turning into a beautiful morning for golf. Um, say temperatures now probably in the mid 50s, not a cloud in the sky. And not much breeze blowing, although just a little bit here this morning. Look for that to pick up this afternoon. But uh, great conditions. Um, of course, always in fantastic shape. So um, should be some pretty good scores out there, I think, this morning. Yeah, without a doubt. Obviously, Dan Walter and his staff uh, for the maintenance side of things have, have Heatherwood here in fantastic shape. Greens are rolling really, really solid. Um, 
we should see some some good scores for sure. Um, with the wind picking up in the afternoon, uh, might make it play a little bit more difficult as these boys are getting on the course. But everyone's playing the same course, yep. so should um, be a great day for golf. Great day for golf. Yeah. Um, for those of you not familiar with Team Golf, as I mentioned before, there are five players on each team here this morning. They will take the low four scores, so one score will get thrown out. Um, they do use that score, that thrown out score, if there's a tiebreaker, and I do believe Fairmont actually qualified through their tiebreaker score here. So the four players, they were tied, and they went to that tiebreaker score to get them here out of sectional qualifying. So it's not that that score, that fifth score doesn't matter at all. It could come into play if there was a tie. Um, with the other four scores. So looks like we've got uh, Eli Schwegeman. We saw his tee shot start off a little bit to the, the left and clip that tree. Looks like it dropped right down there. Again, looks like he's wedging that back into position, um, probably about 100 yards or so from the green there to give him a chance to get it up and down and make his par to start the day. Again, tee times going off um, every 10 minutes off each nine. So back to number one, Mark Robart, Mark Robart with the uh, Teeing off first group. in the 1050 group from Talawanga High School, Connor Schulte. Connor, a senior for the Braves. Our first iron here we're seeing off number one. Good swing there by Connor. Loveland High School. Casey Eversole. Casey Eversole, a junior. Also going with less than driver here. Teeing off third from Centerville High School, Rohan Reddy. And third to play, Rohan, a sophomore. Solid swing there for him. Teeing off fourth from Beaver Creek High School, Jack Bales. And Jack rounding out the 10.50 tee time here. Jack is a senior from Beaver Creek. Solid swing there for Jack. Look like it started down the middle and was fading a little bit, which should lead him to be in a pretty good spot there to start his day. All right, you're looking a shot, looking at a shot from the Springboro City blimp <laughs> um, of number one T. Um, if you weren't with us last week, we actually had three rounds, three days of coverage last week. We covered the D three D2 boys both and then the D2 girls and we were uh, given some info that there were only a, what was that, only 12 active blimps in the world Austin and only 127 actually blimp pilots in the world so there's some knowledge for you this morning and parting on you from me I, I'd classify that as useless knowledge I think Austin 
but uh yeah, you could win a bar bet, maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> so if you do have some questions or anything for us, you can send us send them to us here on the on the YouTube channel. I'm sure you're watching. We'll any questions about the golf course or uh, golf swing or really anything you want to know here about Heatherwood, just fire us a question on the YouTube channel there, and also we'll try to get an answer here on air today. All right. So as we look at the 1050 group heading down one. We, um, those players are playing in the three position for their team. So typically coaches will put the better players later on in the team. So usually the, the two and three or the two and one players will typically be better or at least more prepared or senior laden or, or whatever it is that the coaches feel more confident about putting them out later. So if they need a pressure putt or something late in the match that they feel more comfortable with those young men in the later spots doing that. So these men, young men here are playing in the three spots. So two more positions to go here on the front nine getting ready to see the 1055 group go off of number 10 and those young men are also playing in the three spots for their teams again an overhead view here of number one you can see the dog leg there um, and then back to Bob Bryce on this number is the 10 1055 tee time playing first from Coleraine Jack Berger Jack Berger, a junior for the Cardinals. Are well, at least the first one I've seen. Also, of the quick tee pickup. <laughs> yes, it is. So, From looks Mason like Jack was happy with that one. Brody Hansen. Brody, a senior for the Comets. Brody shot 77 at Glenview to help move his team into today's districts. I think the second left-hander we've seen also. I think that's right. We do have a left-handed individual in the truck that will correct us if we don't get the left-handed <laughs> count right. Yeah, he's on top of that. <laughs> Next, from Fairmont, Noah Bittner. Look at this back-to-back left-handers. What's happening here? Noah, a senior for the Firebirds. Buy a lottery ticket. have started a little bit to the left, but it looks like it's turning back to the right. Ideal tee shot I hear think I think here Austin would be a little bit of a Going right to next, left play. From Troy, Bryce Massingill. Although you can play either one off the sea fairways pretty wide out there as long as you strike it solidly. Yeah, certainly. Uh, Bryce senior for the Trojans. Going with Less than driver here. Looks like a fairway metal. Again, about eh, around 200 yards to carry that fairway you see there. Watching that one anxiously. Looks like he may have caught that that a little higher than what he wanted but uh, as they're looking at it here I don't know maybe that went right also because they're they're waiting for a safe sign from the spotter up there to see if that's in play I think 
Bryce is going back to his golf bag to hit a provisional here. So, um, again, just doing this in case his first ball is out of play. So um, kind of help pace the play here a little bit. If they find that first ball in play, he, he'll obviously continue to play that one. If his first ball is out of bounds, which is if we mentioned there is some of that on the right side of this fairway up there, uh, then this ball will be in play, and this will help pace the play. All right, looks happy with that one. But I'm sure he'd be happier if he found that first one in play. <laughs> All right, so 10.55 group, heading off of 10T there. Again, these young men playing into three positions for their teams. So kind of two waves of team play here today. Um, obviously playing in foursome, so we'll get uh, eight teams off in the first wave, and then second wave will contain another eight teams. So that's kind of important to know as we start getting a little bit farther on in the day and start looking at scores that um, – kind of have to compare waves when you're looking at scores. So Austin and I will go over that again when we mention wave one or wave two is the, of the team. Being off first and 11 o'clock starting time for Talawanda High School, Ty Huber. Ty, a senior for the Braves. Looks like he's got iron here at number one as well as his teammate from the previous group. Yeah, nice swing there for Ty down the center of the fairway. Teeing off second from Loveland High School, Jacob Alkire. Jacob, also a senior from Loveland. Also going with iron here. Again, not that 150 pole that Neil was talking about earlier is only probably, I don't know what you say, 240 yards or so, 250 yards. Um, and it yeah. does play downhill. And with the course being firm and fast, um, iron definitely can be a good play towards that 150-yard post. Yeah. Looks probably. like Jacob played nicely there. Yeah, depending on, you know, your length. Teeing off third from Centerville High School, Elliot sure. Durbin. Elliot also a senior from Centerville. The Elks going with the hoodie this morning. Um, wouldn't think that they'd need to keep those on much longer here as the temperature's warm. Elliot had 74 at Yankee Trace uh, to help the Elks qualify. qualify. Teeing off fourth from Beaver Creek High School, Jack Faulkner. Jack is a freshman among the three seniors in the group. Jack from Beaver Creek. Swing there for Jack, and that will get the 11 o'clock group off number one on their way. Start their round. Bringing you coverage all day long. Today's Southwest District Division One Boys Golf Championship. We are looking at. Uh, live view of the putting green here and the infamous Tommy Boy putting statue <laughs> that we have there on the putting green. Um, 
What are players looking to get done here on the putting green this morning and also before the round? Yeah, they're trying to get a feel for the speed of the greens. Um, obviously, also trying to get some putts to go in. <laughs> obviously, nice to see some balls roll in or just get a feel for, for how everything's working um, morning of. But definitely just trying to build some confidence as well as uh, feel the speed of the greens. This looks like Bryce Masson Gill. I believe that's probably his provisional, so they must have found the first one out of bounds. So this would be his fourth shot to this green. I had to count in my head there, Austin. You know, <laughs> one out, two in, three off the tee to get to four. I've hit so many out of bounds that I just <laughs> knew that was the fourth one. <laughs> back over to number one again. Here's a good view. You can see that 150 post a little bit better there in the line that they're playing on. Um, they're back off to number 10 again. This, that would be Brody Hansen right there. We're seeing playing his approach into the green. Uh, trying to get getting that shot there from the camera behind the tee. So really not going to get an idea of what type of shot they play because they're going to go off the screen here to our left and get blocked out by trees there so but try to give you as many swings as we can of these young men today first from Colerain Reed Schaefer all right back Good on the tee now that the landing area is cleared this is going to be Reed Schaefer um, for the Colerain Cardinal Reed is a senior and these young men are playing in the two position for their teams We're having a wave of left-handers. <laughs> yes, we are. I've already lost count. Yeah. All right, looks like that one started off a little bit right, but was coming back toward the middle, I think. At least I thought I saw someone wave down the middle. From Mason, Ben Morneau. Ben Morneau, a junior for the Comets. Looks like that one's going a little bit right. Playing third from Fairmont, Mason Weimer. Third player in this group, Mason Weimer, senior from Fairmont. And Fairmont qualified out of Yankee Trace, and again, they were tied and took the fifth score as the tiebreaker to qualify for today's district championships. Mason didn't seem happy with that one. Couldn't really see where that one went. Hopefully it ended up in the fairway. Playing last from Troy, Blake Sager. Blake is a junior for the Trojans. The last player to play off of uh, number 10 here in the 1105 group. underway again 16 teams here today trying to qualify for three spots in next week's state championship 
And then we'll also be qualifying three individuals not on those three qualifying teams. Also have 16 individuals not on the teams also trying to qualify for those three spots. Again, state championships going to be next Friday and Saturday. That would be the 20th and 21st, as we look like someone going back to the tee here for a provisional on 10. Yeah, this will be Ben Morneau. Looks like he's happier with that one. Again, same situation as in the group before. If they do find that first ball, he will uh, he'll go ahead and play that first ball. Looks like we've got another individual in this group that's not sure whether his ball's in play or not. So here's the second provisional in this group. This would be Blake Sager. Looks like that was down the right side. Obviously not the way you want to get your day started, but um, you can also look at it as I've got plenty of holes to make up um, for the battle. Everybody has a bad hole now and then. If you just keep your mental focus and move forward, it doesn't have to uh, necessarily turn into a bad day. It could be a great day still. That's right. Teeing off first in 11 10, 10 starting time from Talawanda High School, Aiden Bruder. Aiden, a senior for the Braves. Good swing there by Aiden. Second from Loveland High School, Anthony Moran. Anthony also a senior. Anthony had a nice round of 71 at Glenview. To help the Tigers advance here today. digging Anthony's shoes. Austin. I know, those are very sweet. <laughs> very uh, color coordinated with the outfit. And everyone knows the key to good play is proper footwear. That's right. Third to play Zach Hartley from Centerville. Zach is a senior. Good swing there by Zach. Teeing off fourth from Beaver Creek High School, Luke Grillio. Last to play Luke from Beaver Creek, also a senior. That's the 11-10 group heading down number one at this point in time. Um, all players from Tabawanda, Loveland, Centerville, and Beaver Creek are on the golf course. 
next group's playoff 10 will have all the players from Coleraine, Mason, and Fairmont along with Troy once that group tees off on 10 right here. So first wave almost out on the golf course this morning, Austin. And boys' field's a little bit bigger than the boys' Division One field, I should say, is a little bit bigger than the Division Two boys and Division Three boys. Um, they played in threesomes last week, um, but they only had 12 teams. So 16 teams in the big school division. Again, these are the large schools. The largest school number of boys here um, is Mason. I think Mason has the most students in the state of Ohio, actually. So they've got 1,300 boys in their four classes. Um, and it goes all the way down to, I'm looking here real quick to try to find a number. There's a 321, there's a 284. So Oakwood's only got 284 boys. So quite a bit of difference in this. And again, they had to break these divisions up evenly with number of boys. So three divisions in golf. So um, Oakwood gets thrown into the bigger division, kind of where the cutoff point is. That's right. Good thing about golf is, you know, you only need five guys that can do it. <laughs> right? You right. got five really good guys. It doesn't matter how many other boys you got in your school. So, um, and obviously Oakwood's um, qualified here through sectional qualifying. Again, all these teams played last week and made it here through qualification um, at four other sites. They played uh, Miami Whitewater, Glenview, Yankee Trace, and Reed Park here in Southwest Ohio. They came out of those. Uh, those four locations to qualify for today's district championships here at Heatherwood Golf Club. Again, we are in Springboro, Ohio. As you're looking at the uh, shots here at the golf course today, we are a municipal facility. Um, so, you know, anyone can come play, so just give us a call if you want to come out and make a tee time, and uh, we'd love to see you. All right, again, looking at a shot of the putting green before we jump over to number 10 for the 11 15 group. Alex Diesel is going to be the first to play over there for the Cardinal of Col Rain. Alec is a junior. Shot 75 at Miami Whitewater. And again, the number one player um, for the Col Rain Cardinal. Good. Yeah, it looks like Alex is still. Looks like there's some players from the previous group that are still. Waiting to go. Looks like he's gonna. Either I don't know if those are still players there. Or well, I know the person out there on the right's a spotter. Um, looks yeah, like it's a golf cart. Yeah, but looks like he's getting ready to pull the trigger. Like that one may have went just a little bit right. Again, looks like we do have a spotter up there at this point now, so um, couldn't really see a safe sign or not from that. But uh, next play will be Curtis Crimmins. Curtis is a sophomore from Mason. Playing next from Fairmont, Thurman Shreel. Thurman, a senior for the Firebirds. Looks like he's going with a fairway medal off of number 10 tee today. from Bob, so good start for And Thurman. now playing from Troy, Mitchell Sargent. Mitchell Sargent, the last player in this group, sophomore from Troy. 
75 at Reed Park to uh, help the Trojans qualify for today's district championships. Good one there. Yeah, nice swing there for Mitchell. Hit it solid, headed towards the 150 post, so really good start to his round. Yes, we really don't have much time to talk about things in between tee times because they're going so quickly, but um, you've had a lot, you played a lot of team play. What, uh, how do you feel the differences between team play and individual play as far as, you know, your game itself? I think the goal is to uh, still just to play to your best ability and, and take it one shot at a time and um, obviously um, not playing selfishly but you know you're you know focused on your own game you're not worried about how your other you know team members are playing and you know hopefully they play well as uh, to help the team out um, but if you're if you're if you're trying to focus on you know you know how your how your boys are doing and stuff like that it can be a little distracting so i think it's just important just to stay in your own game uh focus on the shot uh in front of you so i know that it's sometimes hard to do you know it, most of these guys are going to be good buddies with um with their teammates um and it's going to be hard to focus not focus on that but um, teeing off just first to stay in the in your own 11 game. 20 group from saint xavier high school michael stagnero all right first time we see any players from the other eight teams here today? This is Michael Stagnero, a junior um, for the St. Xavier Bombers. And Michael going with iron here on number one. Seventy-five for Michael at Miami Whitewater to help St. Xavier qualify here today. Teeing off second from Lakota East High School, Ben Isom. Ben, a senior from Lakota East. Being off third from Springboro High School, Brogan, Brogan Cambria. Brogan, a senior from Springboro. Brogan with a nice score of 70 at Yankee Trace to help the Panthers get here today. Probably a little bit of advantage for Spring Brogan. This is their home club. Um, see these young men all the time out here. So definitely familiar with the golf course and the line. Any weather condition. Teeing off fourth from Bellbrook High School, Brody Sites. Again, back to the Spring Rose advantage. I think that that's um, exaggerated a little bit more if the weather conditions were poor. Yes. And being that it's a great day to play, probably doesn't come into effect as much as it would if it was a cold, windy day you know, where they may have had a chance to play in those conditions before. So, again, still an advantage, but probably not as big as an advantage if it was an, a, a bad day for golf. Yeah, without a doubt. Brody, last to play here for the 11-20 tee time. Brody is a freshman from Bellbrook. Swing there for 
already hit it solid down the middle of the fairway. All right, so again, we're seeing the first players from St. Xavier, Lakota East, Springboro, and Bellbrook head out on the golf course at the 11.20 time. So next, we're going to see the first players from the last four teams that we haven't seen yet. That would be Elder, Moeller, Oakwood, and Tipcanoe. Uh, so we'll have at least one player on the golf course from all of the 16 teams here today. As we're looking, looks like we're looking 10 fairway there. Quick look at who that is there. It looks like Thurman Shreel. A long way out there for where he is, probably 200 yards or so from that position to the green. Again, this is a 440 yard par four. Pretty big crowds out there here today. You can see a few in the, the background of this shot here. Again, if you are in the Springboro area and would like to see some high-level high school golf, um, come on out. We'll be here <laughs> all day. <laughs> yes, we'll be we here until probably 5 o'clock or so playing golf and gonna get three teams qualified for the state championship along with three individuals. So, um, yeah, if you want to take a lunch break and come see us, we'd, we'd love to have you out here. and. I guess the challenge might be finding a place to park, but uh, <laughs> there's some spots I'm sure you could find. So, um, yeah, you're in the area, want to come out on a beautiful day and get a little exercise and watch some golf, please come do it. Again, looking at 10 fairway shots in from 10. I believe this is going to be Curtis Cremens from um, Mason. This will be a long shot in here, probably in the 180 yard range or something there. Kind of again on this tee shot again. This is a dog leg to the left. So if you can hug that left side, you can definitely shorten up the shot. Pan it over here to uh, this is going to be Alex Diesel. You see here in the the red hat from uh, Cole Rain. And not to correct you, but I believe this is Mitchell Sargent. Nope. Yep. Sorry, Austin. I'm taking bad notes here. Yeah. No, I just didn't read the, the notes that you took. <laughs> I have to take the blame for that. But anyway, Mitchell, Sergeant from Troy there. And again, 150 post, you haven't seen get to it yet. So he's probably 165, 170 or so on his approach shot in there to number 10. No bunkers surrounding number 10, just a relatively flat green there, but uh, um, not a, a large green. So again, didn't get a chance to see pin positions this morning. So maybe we'll get a... An overhead shot at some point, and we'll get an idea where the pin is there on number 10. But again, back to the Tommy Boy statue by the putting green, and players concluding their pre round warm up again. Tea time's going to roll through 12:20 um, today, so we've got about well, an hour or so left of times. This is the 11:25 tea time playing first from Elder Jack Richardson. Elders is, I'm sorry, Jack is a sophomore for the Panthers. Again, first look at uh, Elder today as they're just uh, getting ready to get their team rounds underway. Quick T pick up there usually means happy with the shot and on the tar intended target line. In second from Moeller, Charlie Schenk. Charlie Schenk next to play for Moeller. Also, I wouldn't say that's the best golf name you could have. Um, but uh, obviously, he seems to do, be doing pretty well <laughs> with it. Doesn't seem to affect him at all. I believe there's a, a Schenk on tour as well. I, I could be wrong, but I think there's at least on one of the major tours. Again, 
Charlie from Moeller, a junior. As he gets his round underway, and again, quick tee pickup. Kind of looking around the corner Playing there, so it looks like he may have hit a nice From one. Oakwood, Alex Hyde. Alex Hyde next to play here for the Lumberjacks. As a senior, Oakwood qualified at Yankee Trace for today's round. Alex watching that one intently. Max Gustafson. Max Gustafson, the last player in this group from Tippecanoe. Max is a sophomore for the Red Devils. And a fairly quick tee pickup, so Max looks like he's happy with that one. All right, again, going off uh, one and ten here today, play this morning. Just getting the first groups out for the second wave of teams. So um, Jack Richardson, Charlie Shank, Alex Hyde, and Max Gustafson here heading down ten fairway, or toward ten fairway, I guess. bring you all the tee shots of these young men this morning as we quickly jump over to number one with Jason Maraca. Looks like we just barely caught his swing in time as he got <laughs> that ball in the air quickly. Teeing off second from Lakota East, Logan Spagnolia. Jason was a senior. I guess he still is a senior, but <laughs> <laughs> for St. Xavier. Yet. <laughs> Next to play, Logan Spagnolo, um, also a senior, but he's for Lakota East. Swing there for Logan. And you hear the crowd, the applause on number one tee from the grandstand there. <laughs> Teeing off third from Springboro High School, Jack Rock. Jack also a senior for the Panthers. A nice round of 72 at Yankee Trace. And their sectional. Swing there for Jack, over the trees, cutting the corner Teeing off bit. fourth from Bellbrook High School, David Gregory. And last to play here, David is a sophomore for the Eagles. Shot 76 at Reed Park, and where Bellbrook advanced through the sectional tournament. White pants, Austin. Bold move. It is. I think it's past Labor Day. Isn't there a rule for that or something? <laughs> like that? I don't ever listen to that, but I don't really <laughs> either. But I just think more of keeping them clean yeah. uh, and all the muck I get into. Looks like he's rocking some Nike or Jordan shoes, yeah. too. They're very stylish. Yeah, you know, if you keep it in the fairway all day, though, you shouldn't have trouble keeping your white pants clean. That's right. <laughs> all right, that would be the 1130 group. Um, off and running on number one this morning. Again, you're looking at live coverage from Heatherwood Golf Club in Springboro, Ohio. The Ohio High School Athletic Association Southwest District Division I Boys Golf Championship. Looking to qualify three teams and three individuals for next week's state championship to be played at the Ohio State University Golf Club and the Scarlet Course. They'll be doing that on Friday and Saturday. I 
believe that's the 20th and the 21st next week. So that's the goal of everyone here today to get to play one, one more week of high school golf as uh, players look to head out and compete here this morning. Again, beautiful morning for golf. We did have a frost delay, a little cool this morning, but warming up quickly. Not a cloud in the sky. Should be actually perfect weather for golf here. Um, as we have a slight little breeze starting to pick up, I see the flag stick. I can see number 18 green here. Flag stick starting to blow in the wind a little bit. So um, breeze does look like it's picking up a little bit, but uh, nothing, at least to this point, um, to worry about too much. All right, let's jump over again. We're looking at uh, number 10 T, uh, Max Gustafson from Tippecanoe uh, with his approach again. Long approach shot. He, he hit it. His tee shot to the right side of this fairway lengthens this hole quite a bit. So in the 200-yard range here for his uh, approach, maybe a little bit longer depending exactly um, where the pin's located at today. So definitely going with a long iron here. Number 10 fairway. Nice pass at it there. A little bit of a body lean, but it looks like he struck it pretty solid. Yeah, that 10th green is pretty narrow up there, so coming from that range, it honestly is a pretty difficult shot from around 200 yards as most of them are from that distance <laughs> to get it on any surface, mm -hmm. but uh, definitely a narrow target. Now, I haven't got a chance to see the 10th green, but there are, aren't any bunkers surrounding that green. There's a couple of grass bunkers, but uh, no sand, no just rough surrounding that green, but still a pretty narrow target. Right, you're seeing these young men in pre-round pep on the putting green here at Heatherwood. Um, Kind of got this one blocked out by the trees there, but I uh, believe that's Alex Hyde from Oakwood there. And then in the distance there, getting ready to take a shot now would be Jack Richardson from Elder. <laughs> and you can see the 150 post there, so you can see Jack is probably in the 150, again, depending on where the flag stick is, in the 150 range. So quite a bit of difference there by hitting your tee shot to the left as opposed to hitting it to the right where we saw... Max Gustafson earlier in the 200-yard range, so 50-yard difference in the approach, and a very similar distance off the tee leaves you, you know, so shows the importance of the target line on number 10. This is uh, the 11:35 tee time. Uh, getting ready to do the 11:35 tee time off of number 10 now. This is going to be Colin Joshua from Elder to I'm play first in the 11:35 group. I think I heard Bob saying he wanted to hold off just a little bit to those guys got out of the landing area there, but uh, looks like they're, he's about ready now. Can I go? Again, I'll do ideal line here is to hug that left side of the tree line, and if you can't turn it around the corner a little bit, but shorten up your approach to the number ten green. Looking right, looking for a safe sign from the spotter there, and I didn't see any sign from the spotter, so I think he's okay. The next to play in this group will be Mark. Playing next from Muller, Mark Macris. M Mark Macris next to play. Senior for the Crusaders. Started that one left. I thought I actually may have heard it hit one of the trees there. Looks like it may have kicked, kicked out. Kicked, yeah, looks like it may have Play kicked out to the, the right there by one right of the front four check. tees. All right, next to play would be right chin. 
Might be the first iron we've seen off this tee off. I don't remember anyone hitting iron off here until this young man here. Yeah, certainly the first iron on 10 today. See where that one went. And play next from Tippecanoe, Will Real. Will Real next to play. Will is a senior uh, for the Tippecanoe Red Devils. Like he's happy with that one. Yeah, down the right side of the fairway for Will. Hmm. Looks like Colin Joshua is going to play a provisional ball here off number 10. Your high school, Charlie Fish. As we quick, quickly jump to number one, Charlie Fish will be playing for the St. Xavier Bombers. Charlie is senior at 72 at Miami Whitewater to uh, help the Bombers move forward. Happy with that one. Little club tour and quick tee pickup. <laughs> Teeing yeah, off second from there. Lakota East High School, Nick Collins. Solid swing there for Nick. Nick also shooting 74 in the sectional tournament. Teeing off third from Springboro High School, Ian Cambria. Looks like Ian still got the hoodie on this morning. Ian's a senior for the Panthers, 74 Yankee Trace. Nice swing there for Ian down the center of the fairway. Teeing off fourth from Bellbrook High School, Brody Miller. Brody Miller from Bellbrook, a sophomore for the Eagles. Yeah, nice uh, swing there for Brody down the left center of the fairway. All right, and that would be the 1140 group on their way. Again, Boston's always nice to have everyone with different <laughs> color shirts on so we can identify them a little easier, a little easier when we see them uh, coming up nine and later on in the, today's coverage. <laughs> Yeah, certainly the second wave of teams uh, a little bit easier to de decipher between the players. Uh, the, the earlier wave seemed to <laughs> all be wearing the same thing. Yeah, we <laughs> might have a little trouble uh, differentiating some of those, uh, but we'll do our best to make sure we identify these young men properly. 
All right, so looking at that group head down one fairway. It should be moving over to uh, number 10. Looks like we're a little bit behind on 10, obviously. Uh, we're waiting for the fairways to clear and so on and so forth. So again, obviously we can't have the 1145 group tee off until the landing area is uh, cleared. So um, going to look at, uh, I believe this is right Chen from Oakwood. Again, as we talked about previously, a long way in here from that position. That's probably 210, 215, Austin. Looks like he isn't on the fairway very far there, so uh, quite a lengthy second shot here for Wright. Yeah, certainly. I believe was Wright the one that hit iron off the tee? I think he was, yes. Yeah, so maybe looking just at a little different strategy there. Um, kind of taking some of the penalty out of play and just kind of hitting an iron up there and accepting, you know, having a little bit longer shot in, but um, maybe trying to avoid a little bit of the, yeah. the trouble that does lay up there. Not a bad way to start. Yeah, it's really kind of how you feel, right? To get your round going if you're, you know, obviously a lot more difficult to make a birdie from that far back, So, but if you're comfortable in your long iron play and uh, you know, think two long irons will get you on the green for a, a chance at a birdie putt, keep some of the trouble out of play, and especially if you have some issues with your driver every once in a while, which I think everybody does at times. So, <laughs> um, yeah, good way to uh, to start if that's what you're comfortable doing. Again, last few groups here, we've got uh, um, well, about half hour or so of tee times left to go, and pretty typical warm-up is to you know get loose hitting balls on the range and then finish up your warm-up on the putting green pretty typically. I think most people um, go through that routine as they're heading to their first tee time. So um, quite a few young men right now. This is the 11.45 tee time. Get putting done. Playing first from Elder, Luke Mead. As we hear Bob, this is uh, the 11.45 tee time. Luke Mead, senior from Elder. It's going to be first to play here. Lost it away and they're coming down at you. Um, so. Hey, get out of bounds. Get out of bounds. Get off the cart. It's like Bob's trying to direct some spectators here, um, which are in line of sight or in play here. So trying to... Uh, Police the area yeah. a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Why is he waiting forever? I don't know. We'll wait. We'll wait. We'll get it figured out here on ten here shortly, and uh, this is your player. We've got some sort of difficulty. And this is the 11.45 group, so just a couple minutes behind, but not terrible. Um, get this all worked out here, get the uh, line of play um, and landing area cleared, and we'll get Luke Mead underway here shortly. Again, looking at the 10th tee, the back tee here on number 10. Again, that tee added oh, within four or five years ago. Significantly changed this hole. This hole was... Um, relatively easy hole before playing in the 375 yard range or somewhere like that um, but making it 440 back on that back tee elevated tee back there has changed this hole quite a bit uh, again just waiting for the landing area to clear here for Luke Mead to get his round underway Elder qualified out of Miami Whitewater See one of his teammates there, uh, Colin Joshua. Um, 
Everything is approaching the tent, so it looks like we're waiting for Colin to clear the landing area here and should be about ready to get underway. One thing that this delay is going to do to us a little bit, Austin, is we're going to have people teeing off at the same time here shortly. I think, I think um, we're going to go ahead. All right, look at me getting ready to go here now, finally. All right, so as we've been we're backed up on number 10T, you can see we're getting ready to tee off on number one at the same time here now. So Austin and I'll kind of help talk you through both of this. Austin, I'll take 10 and you can take one. All right, yeah. second from Muller, Will Dalton. Yeah, you can see. Luke Colley from St. Xavier. I'm not sure if I pronounced that one yeah, right. That'd, but been <laughs> nice. that'd been nice to hear the starters pronounce his name there. But uh, Luke is a senior for the Bombers. Yeah, and on the top uh, right of your screen. Yep, bottom left, I have Will Dalton from Moeller getting ready to play here off 10 tee. Happy with that one down there on number 10. Yeah, the right side of the fairway for Will Dalton. Playing next from Oakwood, Henry Mullen. As you can hear, Henry Mullen next to play for Oakwood off of number 10. Bradley Hinkle, oh, I'm sorry, Walker Wood um, getting ready to play on number one. Walker from Lakota East. stocking cap this morning still. <laughs> and a nice swing there for Henry and, and from Walker. Chip a canoe. Owen White. Owen White to play for Tip off of number one. He's a freshman. Shot 78 at Reed Park. And Bradley Hinkle, um, a senior from Springboro, getting ready to go on number one. Shot 76 at Yankee Trace. dueling left-handers here, Austin. How <laughs> often do you get to see this? I'm sure Brian Eikenberry in the truck's loving this. He is. He's had to go to, he might have to take some shoes off, or take his shoes off to count how many we've had now. <laughs> Looks like Bradley hit a good one there. Last to play on number one, Aiden Caswell from Bellbrook in the top right of your screen. It looks like Owen's ball down there in the 10. Looks like it might have started to the left. And it looks like Owen's going to hit a provisional just in case they, they don't find that one. Looks like Owen got that one more solid. Again, Owen a freshman. Well, 
Um, getting his uh, first district round underway. Again, a lot of these young men probably haven't played a lot in front of cameras, so a little nerves there along with first tee jitters, Austin. So um, important to try to get a good swing off of your first hole of the day and uh, get things started um, as well as you can. Anything you would do special for first tee jitters? Everyone's got them a little bit, so what would you do um, to help alleviate some of those <laughs> jitters yeah i think um, if you can kind of channel the the anxiety or nerves kind of into just being excited for the for the big day ahead of you um, you can kind of focus more on the excitement and that can kind of help um, obviously deep deep breath or just some sort of uh, breathing techniques can help as well um, and just trusting that you know you've already put in all the work that you can and just try to Trust in your game and just kind of allow yourself to um, play what you have that day. And and uh, but yeah, I, I think breathing is probably the probably the most important thing. Taking some deep breaths and just kind of trying to calm your heart rate a little bit can certainly help. Yeah, and again, like I said, TV cameras. There is a large video board by the uh, driving range that they're seeing some them play on for the first time. So they show up, they see that they've got the normal jitters, and then. To throw that on top of it, everything else, the crowds are a little bit larger as the farther you move on. So probably haven't played in front of this many people. Um, so, um, yeah, a lot of things to work through this morning to, to get going. And, and um, I mean, the best thing that can happen to all of these young men is get on the golf course and start playing golf um, and just focus on what they're here to do today. All right, again, we're looking at the shot from behind 10T out into 10 fairway. Show you the swings here of these young men um, as they're hitting their approaches into 10. Really not going to be able to tell you much other than kind of the distance that they're playing from. And again, you can see the 150 stake here. That would be Bradley Hinkle from Springboro. Oh, uh, it right is around number one, not number 10. I'm sorry. Yeah, right around 150 yards into the green. You can see. Walker Wood there in the all black, uh, a little bit right of the 150 marker. You can see over there on your left, I believe that would be yeah, Aiden Coswell. That's hard to tell purple from blue there yeah. when you get that far away, but I agree. I think that's Aiden Coswell. And then the other player in that group's Luke Kali. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, I think Luke Kali is actually walking into the frame, and that, or Aiden Coswell is walking into the frame, and that's Luke Kali there. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> it's hard know to the, tell. Uh, it's I know hard the, to tell from here. The St. X Bombers have their uh, whatever, I think we discussed it last year, that uh, four letter thing on the back of their shirt i think it means something in latin um it's like am b whatever i think i saw that from a distance uh that might have been luke but either way uh it's gonna be hard to tell from a distance uh, once they get close to the camera we'll certainly be able to tell who's who uh, when they come back up nine and 18. all right now we're over to 10. yeah so this would be henry mullen from oakwood in the hoodie slash beanie next to play on number 10. You can also see Owen White there in the red from Tippecanoe.
soon as those young men get out of way there, the landing area on number 10. We'll have the 11.55 group starting. Again, running a few minutes behind on number 10. Um, but again, should see that group there shortly. And then uh, the 12 o'clock group still on time on number one. So 12 o'clock group soon to play here off of number one. Again, if we get the young men playing at the same time, we'll go split screen and try to give you all the tee shots of all these young men this morning as they head out on the golf course and get their round started. Again, you're watching live coverage of the Ohio High School Athletic Association Southwest District Division I Boys Golf Championships from Heatherwood Golf Club in Springboro, Ohio. Sixteen teams along with sixteen individuals trying to punch their ticket to next week's state championships in Columbus. Again, you're looking at one tee so there, but we're going to jump over to ten real quick. So this is the 11.55 tee time playing first from Elder, Mikey Schutte. Mikey, a senior for the Panthers, shot 71 at Miami Whitewater. Again, playing in the two position for them today. Going with driver off a of 10. Playing second from Moeller, Aiden Kennedy. Aiden the senior, shot 74 at Glenview to help the Crusaders. Also going with driver here on the 10th tee. swing there by yeah. Aiden. It's like a lash at that one. Playing third from Oakwood, Eli Rhodes. Eli Rhodes next to play. Senior for the Lumberjacks. 77 at Yankee Trace. That one's heading to the right. The play next from Tippecanoe, Austin Seifring. Austin Seifring, final player in this group, senior for the Red Devils, and again 78 at Reed Park. Looks like um, 
Mike Schutte is going to hit a provisional on 10 as we Team jump over to number one. 12 o'clock starting time from St. Xavier High School, Robert Gerwin. Robert Gerwin will be playing first um, from St. Xavier. Robert is a senior. Seventy three at Miami Whitewater for Robert in the sectional qualifying. Did have a quick question about where they can see the live leaderboard at. A um, couple options there as Bobby Seeing Horseman gets ready to play Dakota next. East High School, Bobby Horseman. Uh, quickly, Bobby, a senior from Lakota East, shot 74 at Glenview, getting ready to play here off of number one. But back to the live leaderboard, a couple options. Um, I Wanermaker, um, kids will be putting scores into I Wanermaker. That should happen after every hole. So if you want to see every hole there, the I Wanermaker app will allow you to do that. Um, Golf Genius is what we'll be using here at the table. That'll be updated every three holes. Um, so if you want to go to Golf Genius, the code to see scores is D, the number one, B as in boy, M, V as in victory, King off third and from G. Springboro High School. So D, one, B, M, V, G, and the Golf Genius app will get you some scores. And again, we'll be showing you some of those once we get players on the course a little bit here this morning. Uh, finally, to play here for Springboro on number one, Gavin Augustine. Gavin, a senior uh, for the Panthers, had 71 at Yankee Trace in sectional qualifying. Oh, looks like he's going with a fairway wood off of one tee. Yeah, nice swing down the right side of the fairway there for Gavin. King off fourth from Bellbrook High School, CJ Scoey. CJ Scoey last to play for the 12 o'clock tee time from Bellbrook. CJ is a sophomore, shot 75 at Reed Park. In the sectional qualifying. Solid swing there for CJ as well, down the right side of the fairway. So. That will conclude the all the team play off number one. Have a couple more groups of individuals teeing off on number one. We have so we have two more, or sorry, one more group of teams off the back nine. Yes, a winding down tee times this morning, Austin. After a little bit of a delay this morning because of frost. Again, just getting to the individuals, there are 16 individuals qualified out of sectional qualifying who were not part of qualifying teams. They're going to get the same opportunity here today to move forward and play as an individual and uh, have their opportunity to qualify for the state championship even though their team wouldn't. So we're getting ready to see some of those individuals off the of number one. So two more groups left to go off for number one, three more groups left to go off for number 10. Again, last players for Elder, Moeller, Oakwood, and Tippecanoe will be who we'll see on 10T next. And then we'll see the two last times of individuals over there also. What we're looking at here now on number 10, looks like someone's looking for their ball there from a tee shot on 10. Again, little creek runs around there that they're looking in. So that is a staked hazard. Um, could play from that position, get a little bit farther over to the um, left there. You'd be out of bounds. So really at this point, um, just trying to determine where that ball would have crossed that hazard, Austin, and um, where it's deemed to be. Looks like coach there trying to give some advice. Again, only person allowed to give advice to these players is their coaches. Parents can't give them any help at all. Um, 
expect they'd receive a penalty if parents were to say something to them. They can obviously help them find their ball. Um, so, um, but uh, again, trying to determine where this ball would have went out at right now also. Yeah, like you said, there is a little creek there as well as some out of bounds. So I think they're probably just trying to determine whether the ball is, I mean, if they found it in the hazard, he could either play from there or take a drop. Um, or if the rules official that you can see there has deemed it, they can't virtually be virtually certain that it is in the hazard, then he would have to probably go ahead and play the provisional ball that he would have played off number 10. Yeah, it looks like that's what they've decided as he's heading on up to wherever his provisional is located. Again, not a great start, but again, um, a lot of holes left here to make up for a bad start. Again, we are looking at number 10, approach shots into the green. This would be Austin Sigfring from Tippecanoe. Again, 170 yards or so is what we're looking at shots here um, for those balls in those positions. Again, the 150 stake's gonna be off to the left of screen here. Um, and again, give or take a little bit depending on pin position. Um, pins in front obviously shorter, pin back a little bit longer, but uh, Again, Mikey Schutte here from Elder. And as you can see, I'm using his range finding devices. Those are allowed in play today, so you can use your range finders here today. So we may not know how far he's got Austin, but he knows now. We're happy that he knows. <laughs> Wouldn't do him much good if we knew and he didn't. <laughs> Again, Mikey Schutte from Elder sizing up his approach on number 10. As you can see, as we get closer to getting all groups on the golf course, Tommy Boy is a lonely figure on the putting <laughs> green at this point as just about everyone has finished up pre-round preparation. Looks like as I look over there, only one person left on the putting green. Um, so um, just about have all the players out on the golf course as we look at a quick look at the leaderboard here. Um, we'll be keeping, we'll be updating scores on the course after every three holes. So. Um, We'll get some early round scoring in here. I think Austin's trying to pull it up on his phone right now um, to kind of tell us where we are. But uh, this a uh, little early to even make any declaration of who's playing well or not. So we'll get to that here in a little bit. But right now we're going to jump over to 10T. Um, this is going to be Case Morgan from Elder. Case with the low score, I think, of any of the sectional scoring. Shot 65 at Miami Whitewater. He is a junior. 65 is good anywhere, Austin. That sure is. <laughs> Going with driver off of this tee. You try to hug that left side, get you in good position for a good start. anxiously to the left though again if you hit it solid you can definitely get it up over those trees and shorten this hole if you've got a lot of length playing second from Muller Landon Harris Landon is a junior for the Crusaders Landon shot 71 at Glenview fine score for him also going with driver off of this tee Again, these young men playing in the one position for their teams. So last, uh, last player for each one of these teams to get on the golf course this morning. That's right. 
right at him. Again, depending on the length of uh, the players, obviously, Austin kind of, you can kind of hit it through Wayne the fairway third. if you're a long player there taking From it down Upwood. the right. So it looked like he may Joey have been wondering Martin. if that was going to go through the fairway onto a little grass swale there. So, again, um, depending on how long you are, where the landing area is going to be. Henry Mullen from Oakwood. I'm sorry, Joey Martin from Oakwood next to play. Joey's a senior. Shot 74. Playing for it from Tippecanoe, Eli Vassard. All right, last person in this group to tee off Eli Vassard, junior for the Tippecanoe Red Devils. Eli had a pretty nice scoring average for the season, 37.2 uh, for his nine hole matches. So nice year for Eli. And again, um, playing in the number one position for Tippecanoe here today, getting his round underway on number 10. Happy with that one. And also that'll uh, get all the players for all the teams on the golf course this morning. So just a few players left to go. It'll be all individuals. So we've got uh, 16 Being individuals. Off first in 1140 starting time from Harrison High School, Aiden Walls. Again, we're backed up a half hour today. So the 1140 time is actually the 1210 time now. So. Um, just a few minutes behind there on number one. Again, Aiden Walls um, from Harrison, qualified individually and uh, getting ready to get his round underway. Uh, he is a senior and shot uh, 79 at Miami Whitewater to get into today's competition. Teeing off second for Little Miami High School, Austin Nicholas. Austin Nicholas will be next to play. Austin's a freshman, so he made it through individual qualifying as a freshman. That's a pretty good feat for him. Shot 73 at Glenview, so outstanding round there. Um, he's from Little Miami. And it looks like Austin's happy with that one right down the middle, um, about the 150 post there. Teeing off third from Franklin High School, Aiden Standifer. Aiden Standifer next to play. I see Aiden out here a lot, Austin. He's uh, from Franklin, so not too far from here. Uh, Aiden is a sophomore and shot 74 at Yankee Trace. Uh, nice scoring average for the season for Aiden, 35.4, so under par for all his matches this fall for the Wildcats. Going with uh, less than driver here, looks like a fairway medal for him. Club twirl and quick tee pickup. So usually signs of a very good shot. Ethan Sonsdahl. Last player in this group. Ethan Sunsdahl. Ethan is from Greenville. Uh, he's a senior for the Green Wave and actually got in um, through a playoff here, won uh, the one spot with three players in it to qualify for today's round at uh, Reed Park. So that's going to be the 1210 group, first group of individuals we've seen today. Again, not members of any team, but there will be three individuals uh, advancing to the state championship. So these young men are uh, 
trying to be one of those three um, as you know not being a member of a team still got a chance to get there Austin and again state championship next week on Friday and Saturday at uh, the Ohio State Golf Club Ohio State University Golf Club at uh, and they're going to be playing the Scarlet course all right so looking at uh, one more group left to go off of number one two groups left to go off of number 10 so should see uh, um, if my math is correct, 12 more young men get to tee off here, Austin. That's quick math. <laughs> and so, like I said earlier, we will have cameras behind 9 and 18 greens. So once we get play there, we'll uh, start bringing you some action there and, and show you um, some play from around those areas. What's probably going to happen here is once a uh, these last three groups get off. We'll have a little bit of a break. There won't be any uh, players on the tees or the greens at that point. I think Austin and I will take a little break and maybe grab us a little something to eat. So we'll probably take a half hour break here once these last three groups get off uh, and on the golf course and then come back to you and uh, bring you some more coverage of all the play the rest of the day. Again, we have 16 teams, 16 individuals here at Heatherwood Golf Club in Springboro, Ohio, trying to qualify for the state championship. As you look at the shots there, you can tell pretty large crowds out here today following these young men. And uh, you know, if you are in the Springboro area and want to see some golf, make sure you, you stop by. Here we're looking at number 10, again, as we've done this morning, looking at a member of the Tippecanoe Red Devils. That'd be Eli Vossard um, playing in. And looks like he's probably got a, around 150 yards into this green for his approach on number 10. This is the 12-15 tee time. There's a shot of 18 green as we're, I'm sure we'll be heading over to the 12-15 time on number 10 tee. We're going to have a first look at Colin Lebowski um, from LaSalle. Colin's a sophomore qualified individually at Miami Whitewater with a round of 78. in the red bucket hat on. <laughs> Love that. You hit it far enough, left's good. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> From Anderson, Marshall Morency. Marshall Morency next to play. As you heard uh, from Bob from Anderson. He's a sophomore. Shot 73 at Glenview. Uh, turn his way in today's competition. Driver here on 10. It looks like he likes it. Hit that one well. Playing third from Lebanon, Sam Strasser. Sam is a senior for the Warriors. Sam qualified out of Yankee Trace.
Started that one out to the right. Looks like he was bringing it back in toward the fairway. Getting a wave from Bob down the middle, so Sam should be happy with that one. Playing next from Butler, Seth Jones. Seth is a senior for the Aviators. 76 at Reed Park. Got a him here today. Seth going with the Ken Griffey Jr. look with the hat there, Austin. <laughs> Just looking right there a little bit. I know you do this to me all the time, Austin, but you're not too young to know who Ken Griffey Jr. is, are you? I know the name. <laughs> I, know. Yeah. I know. Austin and I, we He's talk a all the time. Guy. Yeah, Austin, that, we talk all the time, and I'll say a name, and Austin will look at me like, who's that? Like, oh, I <laughs> forgot that you're quite a bit younger than I am. So I'm also not the biggest uh, no, baseball you're, guy. You're not, but... Uh, yeah, that's probably more of an age uh, thing than yeah. a baseball thing. <laughs> King off first in the 1220 starting time from Harrison High School, Jack Ward. All right, last group to get their round started on number one, Jack Ward from Harrison, senior, 76 at Miami Whitewater to qualify as an individual here today. Going with a hybrid, or well, that might be actually a, a driving iron off of number one there. Got a little club twirl there by Jack, so nice swing by him. Teeing off second from Little Miami High School, Jake Wittenauer. Jake Wittenauer, senior for the Little Miami Panthers. Big, nice scoring average this fall, 35.58, averaging under par. Nice swing there by Jake. Down the right center of the fairway, so it should be in a good spot. Teeing off third from Wayne High School, Braylon Haney. Braylon, a sophomore for the Warriors. So you ever get to play with Braylon? Austin was actually a teammate with Braylon's brother at Wright State. You ever play with him? I have not. Um, obviously great player. Braylon uh, shot 70. Um, at Yankee Trace to advance here. Uh, but yeah, like you said, played a, obviously a ton of golf with his brother Bryce, uh, but have not got to play with Braylon yet. Actually, I take that back. I have played with him once. Did that swing reminded you right there? No, but <laughs> I, I just got thinking about it. I think we played maybe nines holes or something like that. Um, maybe 18. Ding off fourth from Springfield High School, Weston Moeller. Yeah, nice swing there for Bryce.
backhand. Looks like he likes that one better. All right, so all players on the golf course this morning. I have a few minutes before we get players to 9 and 18 green before we can show you some action there. So as I was saying earlier, we we're probably going to take a little break here shortly. But before we do, uh, Steve Jurek um, is going to join me here at the table. We're going to talk a little bit about the process that goes into putting this event on. Steve is the, I don't know what your exact title is, are you the executive director of the Miami Valley Golf Association or what, what is yep, the title? That's that's basically cheap cook and bottle washer yeah. and whatever it takes to get things done. Yeah, so you do it all for the most part, right? Uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's a community kind of thing. So because of that, we have lots of volunteers and lots of wonderful people that make these kind of things happen. Yeah, so for those of you not familiar with the Miami Valley Golf Association, um, Runs a bunch of golf events here. They are in charge of putting on all the district's events here. So they, Steve's handled all the tournament operations, setups, and things like that for sectionals and districts yep. um, for our Southwest Ohio. Um, so um, I guess a few questions to ask while you're here. Um, so what's what's the mission, I guess, for the Miami Valley Golf <coughs> Association and Miami Valley Golf? You know, golf's a great game. It's a sport that you can play your whole life. It's a way that you stay healthy. Uh, it builds community. It's got so many wonderful qualities that uh, we believe that it's a great way to get through life. And because of that, uh, we invest in the future, such as today, with the hopefully kids that we've been playing golf for another 60, 70 years, let's hope. And we also basically help people at any point in their career. Um, but first and foremost, we're community golfers, and we provide course ratings, handicap services, the gen services, how uh, we fund a lot of our oper operations. Uh, and um, we're essentially the USGA's arms um, in the Miami Valley market. Uh, we came into existence in 1994, and um, I've been with them since 1997. So it's been a quite, quite a few years, and um, you know, we've got probably and I think we took around 25 lunches to volunteers today. And then, of course, you've got all your folks that are shooting cameras. Sure. And, um, you know, the city of Springboro certainly has done a Herculean effort to, to make these kind of things happen. And then Dan Walter and, and his turf crew, I think we counted 25 out there this today. And, of course, he's got some volunteers from other spots as well. So, you know, our game just brings people together. And my my role is to try to bring as many people together, you know, with a common interest and, and put on a good product. And I understand we even got a little bit of uh, social media play from uh, Marines. Um, <laughs> we did. What was that? That was, uh, what was that? Clutch, Clutch Mikey. Mikey. Clutch yeah, Mikey, Clutch Mikey. I guess Clutch Mikey went viral on, that would have been probably Tuesday, I guess. Yeah, but Southeastern. I don't know if that was yeah, D2 I think or D3. I think it was Tuesday, but, uh, so. Yeah. Yeah. So again, we'll, we'll do some player interviews once players get off the golf course yeah. today. So you'll get to see some of that if you stay with us all day. We'll get to talk to the kids. But one of the kids from the earlier rounds here, um, he was a treat to watch. And like <laughs> I said, he, uh, he he's gone. I don't know. I heard six hundred thousand views. Or yeah. What I mean, heard, uh, so. golf. I just picked it up. Yeah. I saw that. Yeah. Uh, saw it on. You well, good know, for him. Obviously. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, the uh, the whole Waffle House idea. <laughs> you know, a little better than minimum wage. I, I you know, kids yeah. obviously creative. So yeah. that's that's. I'm really sure good. if you haven't seen it, you want to, you can you can find it. I guess if you search Clutch Mike, yeah, it's Clutch probably going to pop up. Yeah, I might want to add a little Golf Digest to it or something. Yeah. It just depends on how much energy you want to put into finding yeah. it. But it's pretty funny. Yeah. So we've been together for a long time. I mean, when yeah. you started, I was. We were kind of. We're the same age. We are the same age. I think yeah. you're a little older than me, right? Oh, yeah, well, yeah. yeah. I turned 60 in March when oh, you turned yeah, 60. In June. Yeah. 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 So. Well. All right, so quickly, how does all this come together? I mean, people just see the final product here on TV, and the players show up this morning, and they play golf. They don't have really a whole lot of idea of all the preparation and meetings and so on and so forth that go into pulling this together. So kind of quickly give us a rundown of how um, – we get to this point and then move forward. It's kind of like any other type of playoff scenario in that you start with everyone and then you keep whittling it down. So um, high school golf starts uh, usually the first Monday in August uh, and they play matches throughout their season. Uh, I think they can play 25 days of matches or something like that over basically a 80 or 90 day period. Uh, then they start sectionals um, and sectionals uh, depending on the division of play 
is usually the last week in September or the first week in October like these fellas here today. So um, I think we were right around 770 kids that started this uh, uh, footprint uh, moving forward, uh, or I'm sorry, 768 players or something to that effect when it came to all the sectional players. And then you whittle it down to the, to the few that get here to the districts. So there are 16 sectionals, uh, and then there's these five districts. And, and the boys' D1 is by far the biggest. Um, and that's because they qualify four players, or four, I'm sorry, they, they qualify um, 16, well, they, they qualify, there's four sites, so they qualify four teams and four individuals at 16 sites. So it's uh, quite the undertaking, and, you know, it's mom and dads, it's high school golf coaches, it's golf facilities such as Heatherwood, it's everybody who just comes together to accommodate, which is what is really a mad rush. I mean, here at Heatherwood, you've got high school golf pretty much every day. We do. You we know? do. We, um, and uh, you got a junior, elite junior academy that you. We do. So <coughs> and uh, you're all in. We are. And again, quickly mention that elite junior academy. That's open to anybody that would be in, like to be involved. And we've turned out some pretty good players and some pretty good teams, as you can yeah. see here today. Well, Springboro is so certainly one of the favorites coming in. So we'll we'll see what happens with that. But yeah, if you if you're looking for a place to get some golf instruction for your young men or young women. Um, you know, give us a call and we'll tell you what we got to offer here for that. Um, so quickly, probably ha I haven't mentioned it at all yet, and I don't know um, how many people know, but we're getting ready to undergo a pretty major renovation project yep. with our irrigation. So districts won't be here next year um, because of that project. We yep. just won't be able to provide the plant conditions that this de this deserves. So we're going to, I guess, take it to another site. So yeah. What's going what's to yeah. happen with um, that as far as moving forward? As a matter of fact, the folks from Pipestone and Miamisburg were here this morning, and um, we're going to move uh, all five of the districts to uh, Pipestone, and uh, you know they were scoping it out and counting cars and looking at parking <laughs> and you know buses and 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 really what has, I mean there's I haven't counted cars yet. Hopefully I'll get a chance to, but you know we've got to have well over a thousand spectators. I'm thinking. Yeah, and I talked to Jay quickly this morning. I think. Jay was surprised at the magnitude a little bit of what was going on. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, they'll, they'll be able to handle it for sure. They absolutely will. And hopefully we'll be able to, uh, you know, everything lining up properly. We'll be able to broadcast some of some of uh, the event next year. Maybe not quite the same as this year, because obviously the talent is is uh, with the, <laughs> with the handlebar mustache and, yeah, and, yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But uh, uh, we'll see where it goes. And uh, again, you know, this is just a wonderful way. I can't tell you. I'm sure you've gotten a lot of contact as far as the, the YouTube or the, the live channel that we had last year. And, you know, I can't, I, the emails are phenomenal. You know, the grandmother who's an invalid now and in a nursing home somewhere gets to watch her granddaughter play. And she was a lifeline golfer and just, you know, sure. just lights their life up. Sure. And, uh, you know, and, and again, you know, we're coming back to the reason why we're all here is we've got a sport that we really can be multi-generational. And, you know, it teaches so many life values when it comes to, you know, uh, calling penalties on yourself, doing what's expected and what's correct as opposed to trying to get away with something. You know, um, it's, um, it's a great way to go through life. And, um, you know, Heather Woods uh, really helping the community here in the city of Springboro. And, frankly, a lot of our municipalities make a big investment in our game. Sure. And, again, I um, believe exactly what you're saying there. And, again, it is a um – really enjoy doing it. it's a lot of work <laughs> i mean you know sure and, I, and you know i know how much goes into it but it's a labor of love we enjoy doing it and, and we're happy to do it and uh um yeah for all those stories of that grandma or grandpa that don't yeah, get the chance to get to town while. or can't yeah. get out to, those are great stories to hear makes it all worthwhile um quickly before I, we let you go and, and get on here um so not here next year. What are we looking like as we move forward? Coming back here, what's the what's the plan here well, with Heatherwood? So I uh, we'll be back to Heatherwood as quickly as Heatherwood would would be in the situation to be able to manage it. Um, we know that uh, irrigation projects are huge investments, and you know the process usually takes a, l a little longer than you plan for. I mean, now sure. granted, it's gotten a lot better in the last you know decade or two. But, you know, supply line and, and uh, you're running a lots of pipe and lots of PVC and, and uh, all these kind of things go into a project that starts next fall. 
that hopefully gets done by the time you get in the spring, but sometimes those things linger. Sure. So, you know, it, it, well, it'd be at Pipestone for 24, 25, and then maybe back here in 26. That would be my best guess at this point. Um, but, you know, who knows? Uh, we're already making some changes from a sectional standpoint because we're basically taking one golf course out of the rotation. Uh, and so some of our other golf courses have really stepped up there, too. Okay. So now, do you know, the state's not going to be at Ohio State next year. And uh, that's unfortunate. Ohio State's pretty much hosted the championships now for, I don't know, as long as I can remember and mm -hmm. the records that I see. Uh, they haven't really announced where they're going. Uh, it's a 36-hole facility from what I'm told. It's a little further north, uh, and they'll still probably use North Star as the alternate site for either the boys' D2 or D3. Uh, looks like the, the D2 championship, D3 championship this weekend, the weather looks a little bit a little bit uh, a little, little suspect. I've got quite a few of our tournament officials that are going to go up and and spend some uh, cool, damp sure. time yeah. up there. But what's a state championship without that? <laughs> it's, it's, it's exactly right. <laughs> Snow, what, you got to have it all for state golf. Yeah, right? I mean, you know, we had a little frost today, and frankly, it's a beautiful day and oh, it's starting to heat up. Yeah. So again, we've been lucky so far. Hopefully, we make it for one more day tomorrow, and um, again, we'll we'll be concluding our district play here tomorrow with the girls division one state championships yep. so again if you want to watch some high school golf some young ladies uh make sure you join us tomorrow um again thanks for joining me steve you know always Neil, a pleasure appreciate you and putting and, uh, all the energy into this you, you guys can't see all this what he's got here in front of him but this is all labor of love and he works really hard on getting it right and then we threw in a bombs page and uh i want to make her and using golf genius to ensure that everything works right but uh there's a few moving parts, and these, we, I can see you've make, had a little We make it work. Yeah. We, we always make it work. I know. I know. So. All right. Again, well, thanks for joining us. And uh, so as far as moving forward goes, we're going to take a little bit of a break. Austin and I are going to grab some lunch. Look here, time-wise. Um, let's try to get back on air, let's say, 115. So while we're gone for lunch, we've actually got some content ready to boot up for you, some instructional videos and things like that from our instructors here at Heatherwood. So if you... Uh, Want to stick around? Uh, Going to show you some stuff here that may help your golf game. And again, look forward to seeing you back here at uh, 115. Hello, and welcome to Heatherwood Golf Club. My name is Tom Bach, PGA professional, owner of the Bach Scoring Academy, located here at beautiful Heatherwood Golf Club. Today, we're going to work on our putting stroke a little bit. And all the best putters in the world have great tempo and great rhythm to their stroke. An ideal tempo and an ideal rhythm is. The backstroke takes twice as long as the forward stroke for a two to one ratio. Today I have my blast motion sensor with me and my iPad, which is a great device that we use in the academy to help train tempo along with many other features in the golf in the putting stroke. So in a perfect world, on average, tour players take about 0.6 seconds on the way back and about 0.3 seconds on the way through. We're going to try to mirror that tempo regardless of how long or how short the putt is so that we have a consistent rhythm and a consistent tempo to our stroke. It will take the same amount of time to complete our backstroke, what impact will be at the same time, and our follow through will finish at the same time. So we're going to set up. We have a pretty straight putt here. We're going to get into our athletic posture. I'm going to make some practice strokes to feel the tempo and feel the amount of stroke or the amount of swing that I want to put into the putt. Then we'll set up and aim it, get back into our posture, and just have a nice rhythm to our stroke. The more consistent your rhythm to your stroke can be, the more consistent you will be on your distance control, and your putting numbers will go down, and most importantly, your score will go down. Thanks for joining us today. We'll see you soon. Hello, welcome to Heatherwood Golf Club. My name is Tom Bach, PGA member and owner of the Bach Scoring Academy here at Heatherwood. Today, I want to work on a very difficult shot for many people, but we're gonna try and make it as simple as possible. We have a downhill lie where we need to pitch it up in the air onto the green, okay? This can happen often if you hit your ball too far or it chases through the green and ends up on a bank behind it. Many players struggle to get this ball up in the air high enough to be able to stop it on the green. One of the most important things with this shot 
is again, we're gonna use the bottom of the club and make sure we use the sole of the club, but we have to hit down under the ball in order to let the loft of the club shoot the ball up in the air. The more we try and help it up or lift it up, the more likely we are to not get all the way underneath it and perhaps thin it and send it, send it across the green. So, since we're on a downhill slope, it's gonna be real easy and gravity's gonna to wanna to pull us towards our front foot. So we're gonna set up on our left side, if you're a right-handed player, with our weight, with our ankle, knee, hips, and shoulder joints all lined up. So we're gonna stay forward. I like to go a little bit wider in my stance for this shot, I call it a trick shot, um, just to help keep my lower body real stable and real quiet. From here, we're gonna keep the club face square or slightly open to add a little bit of loft. And we're simply gonna swing this club down under the ball, making sure that we get the sole of the club underneath the bottom of the ball. And we're gonna let the loft of the club or the angle of the club throw it up in the air. All right? So face slightly open, weight forward, ball slightly forward of center to match the center of our gravity where our weight's set up here at address. Swing the club back let the club go down right into the ground. That's how you hit it up in the air with a soft shot off of a downhill lie. Thanks for joining us today and have a great day. Hi, welcome to Heatherwood Golf Club. My name is Tom Bach, PGA member and owner of the Bach Scoring Academy here at Heatherwood. Today we're gonna help you with some bunker shots. There are a few key elements in bunker shots that we wanna to cover today. One of the most important things is, just like with all of our wedge shots, we wanna use the bottom of the club and the bounce of the club. The setup in the bunker shot is gonna be a little bit more of a wider base than, our nor than we would normally have, and we're gonna set all of our weight forward or for a right-handed player on the left side, so that again, we're lined up over our ankles, knees, hips, and shoulders. From here, we'll open the club face slightly, Again, with the wider base and setting our weight forward, we want to keep our lower body quiet. At this point, we're just going to swing the club back as if we were hitting a pitch shot or a flop shot. Maybe open the face up as we go back a little bit and splash the sand. As long as we splash the sand, the ball will come out. So again, set up, a little wider base, weight forward, club face slightly open, open it up on the way back and splash. In the follow through, you wanna keep your arms relatively close to your body and that will help elevate the shot up in the air. Good luck with the bunker shots. If we can help with anything, please feel free to reach out to the Box Sporting Academy or any of the fabulous golf professionals here at Heatherwood Golf Club. Hi, welcome to Heatherwood Golf Club. My name is Tom Bach, PGA professional and owner of the Bach Scoring Academy. Ever struggle with those uneven lies from around the green? Well, here's some suggestions on how to tackle them. In our setup, just like with all of our greenside wedge shots, we want to set our weight a little bit forward with everything posted on our lead side. So our ankle, our knee, our hip, and our shoulders are all leaned up, leaned, lined up together. And with the ball below my feet, we're going to have to have a little more squat in our stance so that we can get down uh, and get the club underneath the ball. It's important with all greenside shots to have the club face set either square or slightly open so that again, we expose the sole of the club and we can use the bounce of the club to help us get through the turf. So in the setup, ball's positioned a little bit forward of center since my body is forward. I'm posting up on my left side, have a little more squat, and since the ball is below my feet, I'm actually going to raise the handle of the club a little bit so that it goes with the slope of the grass. And now, when the club comes through the turf, it, the bottom of the club or the sole of the club will be level with the ground and I have a lot less chance for the heel to catch and turn the club over or the toe to catch and turn the club over. So from here, we're just going to set up forward a little more squat in our stance, club face slightly opened. We're just gonna swing our triangle with our shoulders and our arms and let the club go under the ball and it'll pop right up in the air. That's how you deal with the ball below your feet. 
If you run into a situation with the ball above our feet, everything will be the same from a setup standpoint. We're still setting up on the left side. Ball position is still slightly forward of center. We don't need to have extra squat at this point because now the ball's higher than we are. We actually will maybe grip down on the club ever so slightly to counteract the hill. And this time we're gonna lower the handle again so the bottom of the club is laying flat, level with the ground. Swing our triangle and let the ball pop right up in the air. Thanks for joining in today. Have a great day. Hi, my name is Tom Bach, PGA professional and owner of the Bach Scoring Academy here at Heatherwood Golf Club. Welcome to our great facility. Today we're gonna do some tips for you. Uh, right now we're gonna work on that simple 20 yard pitch shot from right next to the green. We're often faced with this shot on long par fours or if we hit a wayward drive. And this is a great opportunity for us to save a par or maybe even make a birdie on a par five. So a few of the key fundamentals of this shot would be to get set up in a position that kind of mirrors the impact position. And by that I mean in the full swing, we would normally shift back and drive and shift through and turn through the shot. With this particular shot, since it's such a small swing, we're just gonna go ahead and set up into that impact position by setting our weight a little bit forward, maybe about two thirds, three quarters, and leave it here. In order for to enhance consistent contact, we wanna try and keep our lower body as quiet as possible. From here, the club face should be set square or slightly open, just so that we expose the sole of the golf club and the bounce of the golf club so it can work properly. At that point, it's just gonna be a matter of simply keeping our weight still and our lower body still, making a small swing back and a small swing through with our torso so that as we finish the shot, the end of the grip is still pointed into our hip. You don't have to feel like you need to keep your arms or your hands or your wrists stiff or straight or locked. Let them do whatever they want to do. We just want to make sure the engine of the swing is our, is our upper body. Let's try it. So face square to slightly open, weight forward. Notice with my body, with my position here, not only is my weight forward, but everything is lined up over ankle, knee, hip, and shoulder. I'm not tilting back. Everything's set forward. And then it's just a simple swing back and a simple swing through with the end of the grip pointing right into our hip. And that's how you hit the simple 20 yard pitch shot. I'm Tom West, General Manager here at Heatherwood Golf Club. I'd like to tell you a little bit about our great facility. As you've seen, you've been here now for a little bit. Our practice range is first class. We are the only facility in the area that has a Bermuda tee, grass tee, which means the grass grows in seven to 10 days versus the bent grass. We always have a great hitting surface. We've got a great short game practice area. We've got two bunkers, a greenside bunker. We also have a fairway bunker, about a 4,000 square foot putting green. The golf course itself is 18 holes, challenging uphill, downhill. You're gonna to need to hit shots left or right, straight, high, low. It's gonna require every club selection in your bag. Now, once we get into winter, we also have an indoor teaching facility. We are one of the only facilities that has a putt view, which is dealing is kind of like a track man for your putter. We have that, we have three simulators, we have the GC quads, and the big thing that we do here is we have our Junior Elite program. The program is phenomenal. It's geared toward helping every student to progress, get better, and work on physical fitness. We do that January through March. If you want some information on that, please contact the golf shop. We'd love to have you out here. Again, enjoy the facilities. We're proud of it. I'd also at this time really like to thank the entire staff, the golf staff, Neil, Matt, everyone involved. The maintenance crew has done a phenomenal job here getting this golf course ready for the event. And again, we hope you enjoy it. We're glad you're here. Good luck at the state. Tom West, today I'm gonna to teach you to control the trajectory on your golf shot. 
one of the most important things that you can do in a game of golf. If you can control the height and the trajectory, you control the distance. A couple shots, one is if I'm hitting the ball in a little bit, what we call that little stinger or knockdown shot, the way you would play that. I'm gonna play the ball a little bit in the back of my stance. My hands are gonna be slightly forward and I'm gonna lean a little left. The main thing is through impact, I wanna make sure this left wrist does not hinge here and get the club face in front of it. I wanna keep the, the hands in front of the club face here, driving the ball nice and low. So that trajectory is gonna be low, ball's in the back of my stance, weight's a little forward, hands pressed a little forward this way. Knock down shot. Reverse, as I'm trying to control the trajectory, I need the ball to go high. Out here today, you're gonna to find some flags that are tucked behind some bunkers. You're gonna need that high soft shot. How are you gonna play that? It's gonna be just the opposite. Play the ball a little more forward in my stance, a little more weight on my right side, slightly, about 60%. But now what I want to do is I want to make sure the club face gets actually in front of the hands, increasing the loft of the club face, making this ball to go high and soft. Little ball's a little forward, hands my wrist a little bit, and up. Trajectory is much higher, going to come in soft. Now the one we all want, the normal shot. What is that? It's which is a good trajectory, coming out kind of low, starting to rise, and still land soft. I've got a seven iron, so my seven iron is gonna be slightly behind the middle of my stance. Weight is equal, about 50-50, maybe slightly 60-40, right on, on the right side. But now I wanna get through impact, the hands and the club face are all square. I wanna control this trajectory here. And that's a normal seven iron. That's how you play the three different shots. You're gonna need them out here today. Have fun again. I'm Tom West again. Today, I'm gonna to teach you how to hit the golf ball a long way. We're gonna work on our driver. Now, what we wanna do, first of all, is position the golf ball being a right-handed player. We're gonna play the ball more toward my forward foot or my left foot. A Little more forward. Now, what I really wanna do is I wanna to try to make a big turn. I need to get as much turn in my shoulders, my hips as possible. And I also want to extend the club head. Get the club head out and away from you, meaning getting it out here. Don't let your wrist hinge up like you're trying to hit a wedge or a, a, a short club. We want to create a big arc, both in the back swing and the forward swing. It's out here, extend, my shoulders and hips are turning. And then same thing in the forward swing, get it away from you. And all the way up. Good, long, high forward swing. Again, you'll hit the golf ball further. You'll love it. Play the ball a little more forward in your stance. I'm going to try to create a big arc. Get the club away from me. Back swing, forward swing. Good follow through. Make sure you got good balance. Everything is going to the target. You'll be happy you did it. Welcome back to Southwest Ohio Junior District Tournament. We're going to take a little bit of break. We're going to try to talk about a little bit about your posture when you come through the ball. Most people are hitters, or they try to hit the ball. They swing and they hit with their arms. So they come in and they lose posture by trying to hit at the ball. You do have to think a little differently. You have to think out there. So we have to keep thinking, swing through it, swing through it, swing through it, and keep our butt up against the wall. So our butt's gonna be up against the wall. And when I swing, I'm trying to keep my butt back. And if I'm doing that, I should be able to hold my posture a little bit longer and stay down and through it. Because the whole idea is to keep this and turn. If you're having still trouble with that, with smaller swings and trying to get that motion, what I like to do is do it in a mirror, put the mirror back where the camera is and get set up here. I can turn here and then I work on the rotation. Then I put the mirror on this side facing the camera and I'm working my hip back, working my hip back. And that's all I'm trying to do, trying to feel what I feel in my left hip, and my shoulder down, keeping that posture. That makes me use that lower body, which will allow you to hit a lot further, a lot straighter, and uh, not come up out of it that much. So keep working it. 
Welcome back to the Southwest District Tournament. And we're here to kind of show you how to get better. This is a good time to learn a little bit about your golf swing. If you know you're coming over the top, which is this, this is where you're using a lot of arms and your, your right shoulder is going over the top. You have to learn to come back and under, okay? So my shoulder is gonna go this way. It comes back and down. It never goes this way. I'm not trying to hit it with my right arm. I'm pulling through my left side. So this is something I like to do, and I wouldn't do this very big. I would take small swings and do it with my right arm only, because you're never gonna do this. This is really hard to do, and you're always gonna come from more inside out. So if you can hit a ball with one hand coming from inside out, and you're hitting the ball, this is where we, we wanna be. And your arm will even release a little bit. You won't hold on to it, and you're not gonna do that. You're gonna actually release a little bit better too. So once you get the feel of that, there's a couple other things you can do. If you're still having trouble with that and getting the feel of it, just pull your right foot back and take smaller swings and swing your foot line. And that's gonna be a really good drill to do. So if you're swinging your foot line, you're gonna swing more inside out also. Try to start small and build on it. Anytime you're working drills, kind of work on that inside out motion or whatever you're doing take your time on it really think of that one thing if you have the foot back or you're using right arm whatever it is you're still working that one thought don't try to put other thoughts in there if you have other problems in your golf swing just work on one sw one swing thought at a time and if you did that you'll probably improve a lot quicker so keep working it welcome back to the southwest ohio junior golf championship. One thing a lot of people don't do, mental management is really important in golf. They say the golf, once you learn the golf swing, and a lot of these players out here have great golf swings, it's all who has it here. And we'll find out at the end. But the big thing is run a routine. Routine is very important. Practice your routine. Make sure you know your routine. Because when you're under pressure, that routine changes. Very, very important. I'll show you what I like to do and what I try to have a lot of my students do. Practice swing is where you get to think. This is where we can kind of die, just tear it apart as much as you want. Then I like to walk back here, get behind the ball. I'm looking down the line. I'm picking my, my line. I usually pick something out in front. I walk in. The most important thing is getting the club face lined up. So once I get that lined up, I get my feet lined up. Once I'm there, I take one last look at the target. I keep that in my head and then I swing. Okay. And then if I want to tweak something, I can take another practice swing and that's what all the pros do. If they're doing something wrong and they didn't one very happy about that, they would fix it right then and then leave it. And you need to move on from that. And that's really going to help you with your mental management. We'll see you later. Good luck. Welcome to the Southwest Ohio District Golf Championship. We're gonna take a little break here, and what I like to show is a lot of things that you can do with your limonade, okay? There's uh, some angles that we can work on. If you're trying to get your path, your swing path a little bit better, we can put this about two foot back and put it outside your ball so you don't clip it and then this will make you realize what you need to be doing about with your swing path. So it's all about swinging on this line instead of over the top. So I would start small, build on it, because if you're coming over the top really bad, you don't wanna be hitting this. And if you do come over the top really bad, and you know that, move it out a little further so you don't hit it. Okay, work it from here. And then you can kind of visualize where you're bringing this club back down in that line. So that's one thing you can do. Another one you can do, you can put this club or this uh, limonade right there at an angle. And I like to put the ball just on the outside of the tip here, just in case I mess up a little bit. And I visualize this, I can feel like I've got to come underneath this so I don't clip this. And that'll make me swing more inside out. And that's what I'm trying to do, work inside out. If you flip too much with your hands, 
Here's another little drill. So you don't have to buy these $200 gadgets all the time. You can use this. So you can actually work on leading with your hands better and rotating. Because if you flip, you're going to hit it, get a nice bruise on your side. Pain is the quickest way of learning. So if you're turning properly, you won't get that. But start out small. You can work on angle with this, leverage, coming back down, and then turning. So there's a lot you can do here. There's even a lot more you can do with that. That's just a few. So work with your alignment aid, not only on alignment and ball position, but with those other things that allow you to swing a little bit better. Glad I could help you. Welcome to the Southwest Ohio District Golf Tournament. We're going to take a little break here. And I'm going to show you how to make sure your alignment's correct. You should be practicing on the driving range here with alignment aids. Because if you're not, you have no idea where you're hitting it to. Okay, so if I have my alignment aid there and I'm hitting it in a wrong area and I'm pulling it and I'm actually hitting it from right to left, then I know I'm doing that wrong because my alignment aid shows I'm pointing over here. So I will start fixing my golf swing if my alignment aid is right, because I've had people where they start aiming wrong, aiming way right, and they're hitting at the target because they have no clue where they're aiming. So if you're aimed properly, just like putting, just like chipping, you have to aim properly. If you're aimed properly, you'll start hitting it down the line better. And then you know if you're pulling it or pushing it. So the whole idea is to get lined up so when you make a swing, you know you're hitting it down the line. And that's going to be very important for you to play your best golf. Hello and welcome to Heatherwood Golf Club. My name is Tom Bach, PGA professional and owner of the Bach Scoring Academy. Today we want to do a little bit of green reading drills, a little bit of practice, give you some help and some tips on how to figure out where to aim and how hard to hit the putt. So you ever run into a situation where you look at a putt and you just can't tell if it goes to the right or if it goes to the left, if it breaks a lot or if it breaks a little? Um, sometimes our eyes can play tricks on us, especially when we're looking down at the ground. If you ever have any doubt, what I like to do and have my students do is we're gonna feel the slope with our feet. So if I have a putt from here to this hole, I can see that there's a pretty good slope over here. And as I stand and walk around and kind of survey my putt, I can feel that I'm tilted a pretty significant amount this way. That tells me that the ball's gonna wanna roll downhill and I probably need to aim this putt somewhere maybe six, eight inches outside of the hole because I can feel a pretty good slope. So from here, I have a pretty good idea of where I wanna aim in order to make this putt go in. At this point, we'll settle in and we'll make our practice strokes, looking at the target, feeling the stroke to determine how hard we wanna hit it. At that point, you can feel your stroke through your practice strokes and repeat it and have a good chance to make your putt. So don't let your eyes play tricks on you. Your feet are always right. Thanks for coming to Heatherwood Golf Club today and we'll see you out on the course.
All right, welcome back to today's live coverage of the Ohio High School Athletic Association Southwest District Division I Boys Golf Championship. You're just looking at uh, some play there on number nine. That was going to be Elliot Durbin there coming out of the bunker up to the green. Jack Faulkner there to play. Again, our first look at nine today, so we'll get an idea of the pin position and kind of give you a little idea. This number nine is a short par five. Uh, straight down a hill, so two solid shots definitely gets you to the green or around the green, Austin, and obviously one of the best birdie opportunities on the golf course today. Yeah, for sure. Um, obviously, you're looking at par fives as your birdie opportunities, and this is definitely the shortest one, so um, players are going to be looking, you know, a lot of players are going to be able to get here in two with it being downwind as well. Um, yeah, it's 5.09 today is the tee they're playing at, and again, downhill significantly. Uh, probably a uh, 50 feet drop or something from tee to green, maybe a little more than that. And again, downwind. So, truthfully, you're probably playing in the 480 yard range to 470 yard range, really, with two solid shots. So, two solid shots definitely get you around the green for most of the players in today's field, I would assume. Um, so, again, if you're getting around the green, and um, I would think we'd see some Eagles here today, actually. Right, we're looking at Jack Faulkner here um, from Beaver Creek. Again, Jack's a freshman. And this is going to be Ty Huber. Uh, Ty's from Talawanda. One of the more difficult pin locations here on number nine, Austin, kind of tucked behind a bunker. Um, everything from this side of the green is going to be going uphill at that hole location. We saw something similar to that last week in one of the rounds, Austin, and really didn't see very many putts made um, to that hole location back there, or at least in that area back there. Yeah, it's just tough to get that ball really close to that uh, pin location. You can't really see from the camera angle, but there is a bunker short left. Um, that's kind of guarding the left hole location, and the green does slope a little bit away. Jack's approach just comes up a little bit short there. Again, coming out of the fringe, just didn't come out of there like he was hoping it would. Next to play is going to be Jacob Alkire. Jacob's a senior from Loveland. Again, these players here just making the uh, turn, their ninth hole of the day. They started on number one. Let's go some split screen action here, Austin. Yeah, on the top right of your screen, we have the group of Reed Schaefer. Ben Morneau, Mason Weimer, and Blake Sager. Yeah, it didn't look, doesn't look like they, um, the two greens we're going to see are going to be very easy pin locations. That's no. probably the toughest location on number 18 as we're looking at there, tucked behind a uh, bunker. Um, all carry to get to that location if you're going to attack it. Yeah, certainly. They're playing 18 today, 416 yards. And again, it's going to be coming up the hill opposite of number nine and into the wind. Top right of your screen there, that would have been Reed Schaefer from Cole Rain. Really nice putt there from long range. I seem to remember last year a, a similar pen to this for the Division I state championships. Also, I can remember a couple young men from St. X chipping in oh long yeah. chip shots from the other side of the green That's here. right, that's right. So it was a similar location, um, although I think this one might actually be a little bit tougher. That would have been Blake Sager uh, there putting just a little bit long of the hole. Yeah, looking at uh, Ty Huber on the bottom left on number nine, straight up the hill at this. This is Mason Weimer from Fairmont on top right of your screen. And then Ben Morneau from Mason in the green shirt. Nice putt there 
by Ty well hold looks like about a five footer he made right there six footer maybe so nice stroke there again these young men completing nine holes of play again top rated screen Blake from Troy tapping in there on 18 again we have Ben Morneau from Mason Looks like he's got somewhere in that four to six foot range putt here. Maybe a little longer than that. There's Elliot Durbin. Finishes out on nine. All right, we got uh, blimp view. <laughs> Here on nine green, you can kind of see there to the left side of the screen there that bunker that this pen location is protected by. Again, this is a 416-yard par four straight up a hill into the wind today, so very difficult to get close to that hole. Not that it can't be done, but it's going to take a, a good golf shot to get anything in there close. And this green from where this young man said, this is pretty much a straight uphill putt. If you're coming from the other side of the green, you'll be coming down a pretty decent slope once you get to a certain point down the hill. So. Um, again, you can see there Mason Weimer tapping in. And it looks like Reed Schaefer electing to go with the flag stick in from short range here on 18. And pours that one in. All right, short walk from 18 to these players will be turning to number one. They would have started on number 10. So they'll just be walking across the cart path there to uh, number one T to get the back nine started for them. As we look back up, number nine fairway from behind the green. Again, um, short par five. So um, as long as they can keep it in play and not have to work around some of these trees, you know, left and right, there are a little bit of trouble. Um, they should be able to get it up around the green. This is uh, Aiden Bruder. Anthony Moran, Zach Hartley, and Luke Grillet. Having a hard time making out shirt colors here real quick. That's how we differentiate between the players. So let's see what we've got here. Can you make that out? I believe that who just looked like uh, I believe that would be Aiden Bruder. But I, I mean, yeah, no, I think you're right. I, there. I, so <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're still guessing. And, uh, you can see the 150 stick there in there. And I'm assuming this is Aiden's drive. So he's going to be in 180 yards or so to this green. So again, for a second shot on a par five. Um, should be at least be able to get it on the green or at least around the green. We see his ball and two, another ball. Two balls. <laughs> <laughs> I know the the Elks were rocking the hoodies this morning, yeah, so that could be could be Zach Hartley from Centerville. Now that this is yeah, I think they had yellow Zach. shirts on. This is going to be Zach here. I think who we just saw was Luke Grillet. I believe this is going to be Zach Hartley from Centerville. Again, pretty good drive to get it into that point. I mean, Austin, that's a long ways down there to where he is, but it's possible he got it down there. Other option is that he got behind some of those trees and tried to play through those trees and it knocked him down. So not real sure where Zach stands on that hole right now, but uh, we're looking at 
Um, that's going to be Aiden Bruder there. And Luke Grillett's going to be in the black pants coming up here, the fairway there. And the um, fourth person in the group, Anthony Moran. Not sure I see Anthony yet. Uh, Anthony's going to have an orange shirt with some black shorts on when we, we do see him. And again, we're using what they were wearing this morning to differentiate, differentiate between these people. We don't have walking spotters with them to tell us who's who. So we're trying to make that out as we, uh, as we see them come into camera view. And there is Anthony Moran there in the black shorts, orange shirt. And also being told there's two eagle putts. Again, we should see quite a few eagle putts here today, yeah. Austin. Um, it's pretty quick. safe to say that Anthony and Aiden would be the ones with the eagle putts here. breeze starting to pick up a little bit here at our broadcast location Austin so as you're looking out you're seeing the flag six blowing in the wind a little bit still a beautiful day for golf um, but yeah we are getting a little breeze come in here I'd say temperatures now probably um, mid 60s uh, and sunny as you can see not a cloud in the sky so a gorgeous day for golf now that we had a little bit of a delay this morning and the, now the temperatures are rising again looking at play here on number nine also got some play on number 18 so we may times when this happens go split screen as you're seeing here uh, number nine looks like um, Zach Hartley's going to be next to play Zach's, yeah. from, Zach's from Centerville he looks like he's going down into that bunker long bunker shot here pretty straightforward just the length makes the difficulty here but a lot of the green to work with if you can just get it on the green and chase it back to the hole um, yeah top right of the screen we have Alex Diesel, Curtis Crimmins, Thurman, Shreel, and Mitchell Sargent. See there, Alex Diesel going across the screen with his push cart. I believe that would be, <coughs> sorry, Curtis Crimmins there. I think he's going to be next to play from just off the green in the top right. And a nice bunker shot by Zach Hartley there on the bottom left. Just past the hole about five feet. Ooh, you can see Alex Diesel there just lipping out on the top right of your screen on 18. Good attempt by Alex there. Alex will tap in there. You can see Thurman Shreel eyeing his putt on 18. This is going to be Anthony Moran with an eagle putt on number nine. Yeah, in the top right of your screen, Mitchell Sargent in the red hat. Anthony up the hill, pretty straightforward here. Maybe a little bit of movement from left to right, but uh, very well done. He leaves that for his short tap-in birdie. And again, nine's going to be a, a definite birdie hole for the field today. You can almost feel like, Austin, if you make par on nine, you may be feel like you're losing a, a shot to the field almost. Yeah, certainly. Um, and again, here is Aiden Bruder. He's also got an eagle putt here on nine. Again, if he was paying attention, which I'm sure he was, yeah. <laughs> he should have seen Anthony's putt roll up by the hole. So uh, if he can pick out the line and match the speed, he may we may see our first three of the day. And we oh, do. Oh, bang. <laughs> I, that was a semi-call, Austin. I semi-called that one. I didn't. But uh, an outstanding eagle. So, again, first eagle of the day for Anthony Bruder. Anthony, a senior from Talawanda. Pours one in from about 40 feet there. And then this would be Luke Grillet on number nine. Look up the hill, a little bit of movement from right to left. And it just lost a little speed there. Luke's going to go ahead and tap in, and uh, Zach Hartley will be next to play. Zach came out of the bunker to this point, so hit a nice bunker shot there to 
That's a little longer than I thought, probably about eight feet here. Um, again, this one's going to be going back down the hill a little bit. Maybe a little movement from right to left, um, but pretty straight forward. Being told this is a birdie putt for Zach. So um, let's see if he can go ahead and, and pour this in. Nice stroke, just burns the edge there. All right, as he goes ahead and taps in for par. And that group heads to the back nine. Again, these, these groups here would have started on one, so just completing the first nine. Their front nine of play. Let's do a quick look at the leaderboard here, Austin, and see uh, how things stand. Again, early on the leaderboard, we're uh, getting updates after every three, six, nine holes, 12, 15, and 18 holes. So, again, a lot of these scores are still early on in the in the round. Uh, but looking at individual leaderboards, um, Ian Cambria, Gavin Augustine, a couple Springboro Panthers uh, tied for the lead right now at two under par. Zach Hartley, who we just saw. Um, there on number nine green, missed that birdie putt. Um, he's at one under, and whole host of players at even par: Michael Sargent, Brogan Cambria, Luke Kale, and Casey Morgan. And um, it's just the, the top of our leaderboard, right? Top seven or so of the leaderboard, right there individually. As far as teams go, um, let's take a look at that. Springboro in the lead right now at minus two. Uh, St. X plus four, Bellbrook plus six. And again, all those teams are in that first wave of teams. So that's what we've talked about early on when they were teeing off. Um, teams are played a lot more holes are on the golf course out in front of them. So when you look at that second wave of teams, uh, Loveland at plus 13, Centerville at plus 14, Mason at plus 15. Hard to determine what a good score is at this point again because it's so early in the round. So we're going to go ahead and keep bringing you live action here as it comes through. Um, again, we have cameras behind 1 and 10 tees and uh, behind 9 and 18 green. Here we're looking at the tee shot on number 18 from that camera behind the green. Yeah, you can see Charlie Shank there from Moeller teeing off on 18. You can see there also um, Max Gustafson there in the red shirt. Alex Hyde and Jack Richardson also in the group. So again, Max Gustafson next to play here on 18T. A red shirt there. Again, 18, a par four. No, way, no fairway bunkers on this hole. Oh, there's a grass bunker as you're looking at this from this camera view. You can kind of see the grass bunker there, so the fairway does run around that bunker on the right side of the screen. Um, and then bunker surrounded by, I'm sorry, green surrounded by three bunkers. Um, most importantly, there is one in front protecting that whole location. And then this is running straight uphill and into the wind today, playing at uh, 416 yards. I'm up on a forward tee here, Austin. This hole is a uh, bear if you get all the way on that back tee. Yeah, it certainly is. I think it's 485 or 480 from the very far back tee yeah. that you can kind of see from that camera angle. Yep, uphill into the wind typically, so that's a monster of a finishing hole. But again, um, probably thinking if they're going to tuck this pin here, we'll move them forward on the tee to give them a little bit of a break so maybe they can get something shorter into that, to that pin location. All right, jumping over to number nine, um, as we're looking here. I believe that is Michael Stagnero from St. Xavier. And that's who that would be, yeah. So again, um, 
This is, I'm assuming this is going to be his third shot. No, I don't think he's going to hit his drive down there. Oh, so you think you can get your drive down there to that point? Is I think that's a little even too far today with the wind. Behind yeah, it. he's probably only got 60 or 70 yards in from there. I think it's yeah. even. Yeah. yeah, that would be a the heck of a poke, <laughs> even even on the short hole. Looking at it there from the back, you don't see there's two bunkers in front kind of protecting this green, but uh, fairway running uphill once you get to the green. Downhill from the tee, but once you get to an area about 40 yards short, the green does come back uphill. Um, but, you know, fairway's cut there. You can run it up there or bump it into the front if you've got the right angle for it. Looking back at that there, um, looks like that was going to be Brody Stites just short in the fairway. Um, this is a shot here right now of number 18. And you can see that bunker protecting the pin on 18. And the top part of your screen, you can see number 9. There are actually four bunkers protecting 9, but two protecting the front and the right. Kind of uh, where we are on the golf course. Number 1 is going to be the hole that we saw this morning. It's kind of going off a picture here um, off of the left. So, again, we got play on number 9. So that group, Michael Stark, Stagnero, Ben Isom, Brogan Cambria, and Brody Stites. So I'm sure we'll be getting back to them as they get up around the green and showing the action around the green there on number nine. All right, this is going to be Ben Isom from Lakota here from the greenside bunker. Again, saw a player in the early group hit a nice bunker shot from the, the bunker in front, but pretty much the same thing here, a lot of green to run with, to work with. You can get it on the green and run it by the hole, which he has done nicely. Left himself about five feet or so. Looks like this is Brogan Cambria from over the green. Tough little shot here. Going to have to get this one up in the air and land it softly to get to the stop next to the hole. And again, just put himself in a tough position there, Austin, to get that close. He almost had to risk landing that in the fringe or the rough and having to jump out if you wanted to get it close to the hole. Yeah, especially, I mean, who knows what kind of lie he had. If he didn't have the perfect lie, you don't want to risk something yep. like that. Again, Brody Stites, uh, a little bit closer to the green, so a little e easier shot for him. But still, um, I was getting ready to say, not something that's straightforward. You have to kind of determine how you're going to do that and how you're going to play it. Looked like he may have had a little indecision and led to a bad shot there. There you can see how quickly that runs down by the hole, just landing that on the on the fringe, and uh, you know it does run a little downhill there. Ideally, you want to be um, putting up the hill at this pin, which is you know more toward the center of the green on your approach shot to give you that uphill angle. We already saw one eagle from down there, so definitely a makeable putt if you get yourself uh, uphill at it. Get a little defensive when you're above the hole, so. Um, if you had to choose, I'd take the uphiller. Yeah, I, mean, I, think, <laughs> I think most of us would. <laughs> Again, this is Brogan Cambria uh, from Springboro. Long attempt here, probably in the 40 to 50 foot range. Up the hill, moving maybe a little bit left or right. quite a bit by. Yeah, Brogan will have a little bit more work to do. Can, don't want to assume anything, but can certainly think his second shot might have been the one that went over the green there, so that might be a par putt there for Brogan. Over here with Michael Stagnero from St. X. We saw his approach from 50 or 60 yards or so from short of the green. Looks like he'll just have a little bit of work left to do for could be his par. I think the green's got a little speed in him here today. Um, once you get into these fall conditions, grass doesn't quite grow as quick as it does midsummer. So, you know, mowing at the same um, height, you kind of get a little quicker greens.
good, but I don't think most of these players' speed is going to throw them off. Green complexes here are relatively flat. Um, probably a pretty easy, easy adjustment for most of these guys. And really what they're looking for is a true roll, and, and these greens are definitely doing that. Yeah, for sure. Ooh, Brogan hits the hole there, but stays out. He's going to go ahead and finish it off. Well, we're thinking it's a bogey there for Brogan, we think. But think, really think don't so. know. We don't have any, any walking scores with these young men. So we're just kind of estimating on our part. Again, Brody Stites here to finish up. Looks like he uh, made a good stroke, just got it out of the hole. Maybe misread that one also. Yeah, not a not a ton of movement coming from that angle. So might have just overread that one a touch. Ben Ben Isom next to play here from Dakota East. All right, as I'm seeing, we getting some play around 18 green again. When this happens, we're typically going to try to go split screen to kind of show you as much action as we can here. Nice putt there by Ben. The last person to play in this group, Michael Stignero from St. Xavier. Just a little putt left here for him. Well, hold. Yeah, going over to 18 now. This is going to be the group of Jack Richardson, Charlie Shank, Alex Hyden, Max Gustafson. We saw these guys tee off a little bit earlier from quite a distance away. Made their way to the green now. It's Alex Hyde there from Oakwood pictured on the screen. We got a nice shot of a couple golf bags. Yeah. <laughs> you, there you can see uh, Jack Richardson there from Elder. Uh, you can kind of see his ball. Looks like he's found um, some of the higher grass uh, on the mounds behind 18 green. So definitely going to be a pretty difficult shot here for him. Yeah, I think he's walking forward there, just trying to get an idea where he'd like to land this. Um, got a lot of green to work with, but. Uh, Still a difficult shot here. Yeah, it looked like Jack might have just went under that one a little bit, uh, but very difficult shot from there to gauge how that ball is going to come out. And this is Alex Hyde from Oakwood. Looks like he's going to go back in for. It looked like he thought about club. putting it, but decided that uh, he's more comfortable chipping. And ran that one by quite a bit. You can see Max Gustafson there from Tippecanoe in the red shirt. Off camera, getting ready to play here. As you can see, the ball coming up is a. Uh, Charlie Shank, I believe. No, is that Charlie Shank? Okay, I can't. You have a better angle. 
Or uh, khaki uh, pants? Yeah, that was Alex Hyde. Alex sorry. Hyde, yeah. sorry. Alex Shank is in the yellow. I haven't seen him oh, in quite a bit. Yeah, he he's behind he the green also. Yeah. I can see him there as he steps forward from yeah. the launcher. We can kind of see the green um, from where our location is. So we're... Back. Oh, oh, that's on me. <laughs> Early call uh, for... For me there, Jack Richardson again, tapping in on 18. And there you see Charlie Shank coming into view there. Again, Max Gustafson here. And this putt should have a little right to left movement in it. Pretty quick, I would think. Yeah, I just missed that one a little bit low. And at least a little easier putt here for Charlie again, coming back up the hill a little bit, but still probably going to move just a little bit right to left. Not sure exactly where the fall line is on this part of the green. The pin for day-to-day -day play doesn't get in that position very often. No, it definitely does not. <laughs> But well hold there by Charlie. And finally, last player in this group, Alex Hyde. And well hold by Alex. All right, quickly jumping to number nine. It's going to be Jack Rot in the back bunker. Very difficult shot here. Yeah, it looked like he might have just hit a little bit too much ball there or hit a little harder than he wanted, but he got it on the green. He's got about 15 feet or so left. Yeah, all in all, not a bad shot. Again, tough bunker shot to get close to the hole for sure from there. Here you have Jason Maraca from St. X. Also a pretty difficult spot there. Um, pretty well done there by Jason. And that in the screen right there is David Gregory. Looks like he's waiting for Jack to mark his ball before he plays. As we quickly jump over to Logan Spagnuolo um, coming up. Oh. Nice shot there. David Gregory, um, looks like he is in the greenside bunker there. Depending on his lie, I mean, not a terribly difficult shot. Uh, it does have a little bit of green running away from him. Just didn't look like he caught the caught it as well as he would have liked. He usually would see that on checking up a little bit more than that, out of the bunker especially. These young men line up their putts and get ready to play. You're watching live coverage of the Ohio High School Athletic Association Southwest District Division I Boys Golf Championship from Springboro, Ohio, and Heatherwood Golf Club. I'm Neil Lamberg. I'm here with Austin Schoonmaker, and we're bringing you today's action. might know that guy as a coach right there, I think, Austin. I do. That would be Coach Jeff Scoey. Jeff must know where the camera is, right? So he's getting camera time. <laughs> he sure it is. <laughs> All right, being told that everyone's lying three around this green, so we've got a couple birdie chips and a couple birdie putts. And golf's a funny game, Austin. You get it. 520 yards and two, and then from that point you get it 20 yards and two. <laughs> yeah. It's a silly game. So, uh, <laughs> let's talk a little bit what Jack's doing here, Austin, um, with that funny little duck walk he's got going <laughs> on there. What to, what to, what's he trying to accomplish there? Yeah, he's trying to feel the break of the green in his feet. So. Um, 
see a lot of guys, uh, not just on tour, but especially on tour, obviously, because they're always being televised. Uh, it's called Aim Point or, or Aim Point Express, and they're basically using their feet to, to try to figure out what percent slope the uh, their putt is on, and then there's you know some kind of equation or uh, using your finger. Sometimes you'll see them use their fingers to, to judge how much break they're going to play based on how long their putt is. So uh, he's just trying to feel the break in his feet. Just another way to read the greens versus obviously just kind of eye, eyeing it from behind or from whichever way you're trying to look at it. But it's not a bad way to read. Yeah, becoming more and more popular, actually. Mm -hmm. You see more and more people at least using it. Um, the more information you can get as far as how putt's going to break, the better off you are. Um, nice roll there for Jack's putt. Again, just left him a little bit left for par. Again, being told all of those putts were birdie putts, so going to have another birdie putt here and another birdie chip is what I'm told. David Gregory, though, looks like he's marking his ball now. And I believe this is going to be for par for Gregory. That his chip was for birdie, so lengthy par putt here. Yeah, I shouldn't have a ton of movement. Very straight putt here. Oh, bang. David gets that par putt to go home there. It's a five on the scorecard. Sure is. Chipped it up to a foot and tapped it in. Yep. <laughs> All right, Jason Maraca here from St. X. Again, being told this is a birdie putt for Jason. Jason's a senior. Burn the left edge there. Solid stroke there for Jason, though. Not sure what this is for Logan. I was told there was two birdie chips and two birdie putts, but um, I only saw one chip, so I don't know if he chipped it to this point or if this is a birdie putt. I think we're, we're being told birdie putt, Austin? I think so. Um, he was... We saw a chip from just short of the green earlier, I don't know, probably five well, minutes ago now. So that, that could have been a birdie chip. Um, well, whatever it was, it was a nice stroke. Yeah, it was well a nice <laughs> <laughs> he got it up and down for either a four <laughs> or a five. <laughs> Again, Jack Rott here for the Panthers to finish up his front nine. And does so nicely, nice par. Jason Maraca here. Taps in nicely from two, two and a half feet. And this group, which would have been the 1130 tee time, uh, makes their turn to the back nine. As we pan back up and look back up number nine fairway. We can see the next group making their way down there. This group consists of Charlie Fish, Nick Collins, Ian Cambria, and Brody Miller. And looking on over to 18 as well, we have Colin Joshua, Mark McCreese, Wright Chen, and Will Reel. Let's see. Let's see. I believe that looks like we got two players about to play at one time. I don't think this young man in camera realizes someone's getting ready to play from about the 150 mark back there. I think he probably <laughs> should be <laughs> he can ball paying just attention flew over his head. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that would have been, uh, I think that would have been Colin Joshua playing uh, first, and then that is Wright Chen from Oakwood. Again, Austin and I are trying to determine players by what they're wearing and uh, this group coming up nine some of them are wearing similar stuff so 
if we seem a little confused, it's because we are. <laughs> <laughs> Plain and uh, simple. <laughs> so yeah. we're doing the best we can to identify them. Um, as they get closer to us and they get closer to the camera, it becomes a little bit more easier for us to do that. But, uh, again, it's easy to pick out Wheel Reel. I mean, he's yeah. got the red shirt on, right? <laughs> um, yep. Uh, you can. And you also can get Moeller pretty easily, too, because they got the yellow shirt. But, <laughs> but Colin Joshua and Wright Chen both wearing white uh, white shirts and, and uh, white hats become a little more difficult. I can see here that. That is Wright Chen there walking with his push cart uh, up to the green. And you can see there Will Reel on uh, the red shirt there. Our broadcast location isn't too far away from number 18 green, so we can actually see a little bit more here. Um, Colin Joshua looks like he's about oh, 100 yards or so out. There uh, he is. Coming pretty decent angle although he's coming out of the rough but he could actually probably land this one short just on the green and let it run all the way back down to the hole I think you know can't see the bunker and I don't know if he has to go over that but there's a chance that he he's got a decent angle to at least get this 10 foot to the left of the hole from where he's playing I uh, do not yeah. see that ball come up onto the green so I'm not sure where he ended up There you can see Mark McCreese from Moeller there coming into screen there in the yellow. Yeah, his tee shot was uh, pretty far right as you're looking at this camera angle, but he had it through a little line of trees there, so he actually had a straightforward shot into the green, although I didn't see where his ball ended up. Yeah, and, and honestly a pretty good angle coming in from over there yeah. to that back. Well, I guess it would be a front right, but uh, right the whole location. Okay, right chin here, pretty straightforward chip shot here. Um, yeah, straight up the hill. Yeah, I would even be thinking he might be thinking about making this one. You gonna call it or? Um, I'm gonna hold off on calling it, but I think it's gonna end up pretty close. Hmm. As he burns the edge, I thought for a second he was gonna just plunk it right in there. I thought so too. Uh, Colin Joshua coming out of the bunker there in the front. Yeah, I just ran that one by 15 feet or so. And here's a. Uh, Mark McCreese, um, very similar location from, I don't remember who it was, but someone was right there in the last <laughs> group, almost in the same spot. So um, let's see how he handles that as Will Real. Uh, he's going to chip up here. Looks like he just landed it a little short trying to get his run back to the hole, and it just didn't quite carry as far as he wanted. All right, so Mark's going to have, again, what we saw a little bit earlier, kind of a tough shot here to gauge how you're landing. This one even looks like it's a little bit on a down slope, so maybe a little more difficult to gauge, but I think he could almost land this just in the fringe or just on the green and run it down by the hole. Yeah, he's probably got enough green to work with where he could land something on the green, but either way, it's going to be a really tough shot. As we get a split green, this would be Brody Miller on number nine from behind the green near the camera tent there. Really well played as well. Yes. You can see on the top right of your screen, uh, Mark McCreese. Pretty good shot down there. I'm not totally sure which ball is his, but I think he got that one on the green. All right, looking on the bottom left. Not sure. He's looking like someone's, maybe they're looking for a rules official? Maybe not. This should be Nick Collins there we see in the all black. Um, and Ian Cambria, I guess. Maybe Ian was over there somewhere or looks like Ian's to his ball now. I don't know if he played his ball to that position or what's going on with Ian, but he's uh, got himself not an easy shot left for where he is right here. Not a lot of green to work with. Um, have to use some elevation if he wants to get this ball to stop near the hole. Probably even has to land it in that uh, fringe or first cut and try to let it trickle on the green and roll down to the hole here if he's trying to get Ooh. it close. Yeah, you can see there Will Reel on the top right part of your screen just catching a big piece of the hole there, but just didn't want to go in for him.
chose to play that a little lower and bump it into the rough, and it didn't quite get through there. And back in the top right, Mark McCreese was able to get his shot there from long of the green onto the green. So um, well played there. He's got about 15 feet or so here for his up and down. Nick Collins looks like he's choosing putter here on the bottom left. And put through a little bit of rough and through the fringe and onto the green. Ooh. Just didn't match the lineup there, but uh, well played on his part. A good overhead view here of uh, Mark McCreese's putt. Downhill. Looks a lot easier from above, Austin. Certainly does. He's got it on a good line. Just turned a little bit on him. Well played, though. Again, you can see that break just a little bit from his right to left in that shot from above. I don't know. The hole looks bigger from up there. <laughs> does it? <laughs> I think it looks pretty big from up there. I, I guess it does. I don't know how you can miss it. I mean, the blimp is probably, I don't know, how many thousand feet up. Um, yeah. So from there, you can still see the hole. So yeah. it's got to be pretty big. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like a five-gallon paint bucket. Yeah, it sure does. Sure does. Here again, uh, Colin, Joshua, about 10 feet or so, breaking from his right to left. Should have a little bit more break in it. You really get an idea there of the break and how it slowed down going up that slope. Uh, Nick Collins tapping in there in the split screen. It's going to be Charlie Fish marking his ball there. Charlie looks like he's only got a couple feet left. Back in the top right, we have right chin. Tapping in. Saw earlier he was chipping from just short of the green, so not a very long putt here. As Charlie taps in on nine. And Brody Miller uh, tapping in himself. Well hold by Brody. Back over to Mark McCreese from Muller on 18. Let's see his putt breaking a little bit from his left to right here, and he pours that one in nicely. Again, short walk from 18 to 1. A little bit longer. In fact, players are even being shuttled from 9 to 10. Um, So it might take a little longer to see groups on 10 to, well, maybe not being shuttled. It might be about the same time frame. But, yeah, uh, from 9 green, you got to go um, past the putting green, past the driving range, uh, past the clubhouse to get to 10 T, where you can see here 18 green to 1 T is just a short little walk across the cart path. All right, as we look back down, number 9 fairway, that's going to be Bradley Hinkle. Uh, should be Bradley's tee shot there. So coming on to 9 green here, uh, Bradley should be... 200 yards or so maybe I think it's hard to tell from there but uh, maybe a little shorter even this is going to be it uh, looks like Luke Kale and if that's blue or purple again tough to tell from that distance but Luke's going to be wearing blue Aiden Caswell would be in purple um, and back over again Bradley Hinkle here Bradley is a senior from Springboro, so Bradley might have been in that spot a time or two. <laughs> have to imagine at least once. Not a bad spot to be, honestly. He's, doesn't look like he has any tree trouble there and to the back left hole location. Can use all the green to try to get it close, or at least around in a good spot. Looks like the camera's looking for him just short, so I would assume that's where his ball ended up. 
Aiden Caswell here. Inside the 150 post here, so probably going to be really aggressive at this one. Made a nice pass at it. And again, pretty typical result here. Again, this is downwind. The wind may be fooling them just a little bit. Um, so, yeah. Might be two balls there. Can't really, hard to tell in the rough there, just over the green. We'll find out shortly as this group comes and continues to work their way down number nine. Again, Luke Kale, Walker Wood, Bradley Hinkle, and Aiden Caswell from St. X, Look at E, Springboro, and Bellbrook. Looking here, this should be Walker Wood. About 80 or so, I would say, Austin there, maybe. Yeah, maybe maybe a touch more just because of the pin location, but definitely inside 100. Um, likely his third shot. Um, although maybe, I mean, who knows how, I don't know how long any of these players are, but this would be quite a poke to get it down that far. Uh, so, assuming this is probably his third shot into this green. Again, pretty straightforward here, looking right through a couple bunkers. Maybe have to challenge the bunker on the left side of the green a little bit, but again, um, that bunker sits in front of the green, so if he's attacking the flag stick, really not in play for him if he hits a solidly struck golf shot. Got a... I think he got a thumbs up from one of the coaches there. I think that might be Coach Justin Martin from Springboro. It, it does look to be that way now that he's approaching Bradley there. It looks like Bradley's ball has come up just short. Um, it's going to be kind of a tough chip from, from there. He's not going to have a lot of green to work with. Uh, hopefully he is in the fairway so he can at least have a chance to put a little bit of spin on it. And there above you see Luke Kale, I believe, from St. X. So when he's there in two also. Yeah, not a bad spot to be there for Luke. Um, he's got a lot of green to work with, and he's actually going to be chipping back up the hill. Um, obviously still not the easiest of up and downs, but um, better angle there than there for the, uh, Luke than, than for, for Bradley or the people that are sure. over the green. Yeah, I mean, Bradley's so close there, it's tough to get a lot of spin on that shot, right? So he almost yeah. have to, he wants to stop it near the hole. He's almost got to play that with height, land it, and let it roll back to the hole. Um. Yeah, one of those things where, um, obviously, you're trying to get it as close as possible, but, you know, presuming he's here in, in two, um, really just want to give yourself a chance for a putt for birdie and not try to get too cute and yeah, and leave it and leave himself a chip shot. Yeah, prudent play may be five foot right of the hole in you, a five footer back up hole, not taking that bunker in and just, you know, giving yourself a chance. Um, let's see what Bradley decides to do. Bradley says, I'm going right at it. <laughs> he went right at it. <laughs> Um, and still, you know, that just shows how tough that shot is. He looked like he landed it pretty close to the front of the green, um, and it just trickles over. But um, still has a putt for birdie. Uh, back over to Luke from St. X here. Again, easier angle, chipping back up the hill, uh, but coming from the rough. So still difficult shot here. Looks like that just came out a little bit soft on him. You can see there Aiden Coswell from Bellbrook there in the purple. I believe that was his ball that just went a little bit long. Okay, we're going to go split screen top right. That's Will Dalton from Moeller from long range across the green. Very well judged there for Will on the top right of your screen. Again, assuming this is a eagle chip for Aiden Coswell, bottom left. Well played there for Aiden. Top right of your screen. It's going to be Luke Mead from Elder. 
from just over the green. All right, looks like uh, Bradley Hinkle's going to be next to play on number nine from just over the green in the fringe. This should be a birdie putt for Bradley. Right, we have Owen White there from Tippecanoe. Owen pours that one in on 18. Got another birdie putt here for Luke from St. X. Coming up the hill, 12 or 15 feet or so. Um, breaking a little bit left or right. And Luke just burns, uh, just left that a little bit out to the left and gave it a little bit too much speed. Left some work left for his par. He was definitely aggressive with it. I like the aggression. <laughs> he certainly just was. A little maybe too much there. Got to give it a run, right? Walker Wood next to play. Twelve feet or so for Walker. And this is probably going to move just a little bit from his right to left. Got a little birdie in my ear, Austin telling me that there's no way he misses this. Oh. Sounds like that little birdie in my ear wasn't right. <laughs> Walker does tap in there. Yeah, that's a tough one. A tough one to call there. Well, yeah, yeah, maybe you, you were. Maybe Joe should stick to production and not calling putts. Maybe. <laughs> you were pressured into that one, but <laughs> that's all right. I won't hold it against you. I'm here, Aiden Coswell. Um, I think I feel comfortable calling this mm -hmm. one for Aiden, actually, without anybody in my ear. I think he's going to go ahead and knock this uh, five-footer in for his birdie. I assumed birdie. Yeah. 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 Nice call there. It's yes. you really weren't going out on a limb there from five feet, but. Well, yeah, that's a good know, call, though. He could have missed it. He, he certainly could have. Especially after I called it. <laughs> yeah, that's I mean, it true. became a lot more pressure on him yeah. after I call it. But, I mean, you feel comfortable calling this one? You just said it wasn't that hard to call him from yeah, that feet. Yeah, I mean, this is going in for <laughs> Luke here. See how easy that is? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> See how easy? See how easy golf is? <laughs> Five footers dropping left and right around. That's here. right. And um, Bradley Hinkle left to play here on nine. From about two feet or so. Surely. He taps in. All right, so that is the uh well, the 11.50 time they got off at uh, this morning, making the turn, heading to the back nine. All right, so looking back down 18 fairway here again, this would be the group uh, Mike Schutte, Aiden Kennedy, Eli Rhodes, and Austin Seifring. You can easy to pick out Aiden Kennedy in the group real quick with that bright yellow shirt they're wearing. Also, Austin Seifring with the red shirt. Those those two guys we're not going to misidentify. Uh, Mike Schutte and Eli Rhodes are a little more difficult to figure out which is which. 
Um, Eli had a beanie on this morning, Dawson. I bet she doesn't now as temperatures are rising. Um, we're probably mid-60s at this point. As we pan over there, we see the purple golf bag. So purple golf bag is going to lead me to Mike Schutte from the Elder Panthers. Uh, Mike's got, oh, what do you think, probably 150 yards or so here with a decent angle depending on his lie in the rough, obviously. Um, yeah, yeah, he's going to have to come in with some loft here if he's going to want to stop it close to the hole, even with a better angle from the left rough. But um, got the clear shot here. No tree trouble. As we're panning and see the result there, looks like it came a little bit long over the green. Hey, we have the boss peeking in on us here. <laughs> or uh, should I say Eric Horseman's best buddy is, is, is popping in here on the broadcast. You want to come on camera a little bit here later? You sure? Back to the coverage here at 18, yeah, uh, let, Austin Let's Seifring. get back to what we're here for, Austin Seifring <laughs> from uh, Tip Canoe. <laughs> Got about 125 in here. Um, again, uphill into the wind, probably playing in the 130-yard range or something. I feel a good shot coming here, Austin. We're calling shots now. Yeah, I do. I, I feel love like that. I feel like he's going to get this within 15 feet. All what right. do you think? I, I hope he does. I think the... Statistics oh, might say otherwise. The result there, the pressure was way too heavy on him right there after yeah. I called that one. Didn't look like a good result for him. Sorry, Austin. That's okay. Oh, uh, that was not, not you yeah. him. It was more important yeah. to him than you. Yeah. You're going to shoot the same score here no matter what happens today. I will. Zero. <laughs> uh, Aiden <laughs> Kennedy next to play for Moeller. You can see him from the blimp view. Looks like he's watching this one, and that was the one I should wow. have called as he rolls that one up to about six foot. Fantastic shot there from all Aiden. You were just one off. I was. You had I the right was feeling. Just one off. You it's had just, the right I feeling. I did. So again, these guys playing in the two position for their teams. Again, Elder, Moeller, Oakwood, and Tippecanoe coming up toward the green. A nice view here from above of 18 green. You can see that pin location tucked in behind that bunker. Difficult to get at. Um, and then when we talk about people, when you see them on the right side of the screen having a little better angle in, you can see what we're talking about there is they can kind of run it onto that green and down to the hole. As we go split screen here to number nine, uh, this would be C.J. Scoey from the back bunker. Assuming C.J. was here in two. Again, difficult shot to get close. Let's see how C.J. does with it. Again, pretty typical result there. Players trying to get it close to the hole, just leave it a little bit short. Although, I don't know, maybe that one got onto the greener. I can't really see the result. So, um, we'll find out when we see CJ's next attempt. Um, we see uh, Bobby Horseman in black there getting ready to come up from just short of the green. A pretty straightforward shot here. I think he should be able to get this one pretty close. It just like, looked yeah. like it checked up a little bit more than he thought, but still a pretty solid shot. On top right of your screen, you could see there Aiden Kennedy marking his wonderful approach there on 18. As Gavin Augenstein climbs down into the bunker, assuming Gavin's here in two also. Again, pretty straightforward shot, just the length, um, but plenty of green to work with. Just get this on the green and chase it up the hill toward the hole. Top right of your screen there, Austin. Seafring from Tippecanoe. Lengthy putt here on 18. Down the hill from right to left at the end. It's going to be Robert Gerwin playing here before CJ Scully. Robert, well judged there as he wow. holds it. And you can hear the crowd go wild <laughs> for here. So, Robert, I'm assuming that's an eagle chip for Robert there. Uh, C.J. Scoey next to play here again. We saw C.J. over and two, so three here. This is probably his birdie attempt here. 
again, difficult little shot here, but uh, Robert Gerwin didn't make it look that difficult. He just hold it. Yeah, he knows what to do now. Oof. And ran it by again. Did you see the difficulty there? You just have to land that in the perfect spot to get it to stop near the hole. Unless you're banging on flagstick. <laughs> back in the top right here, we've got Mike Shooty from Elder. In the back right part of the green, about 30 feet or so left. Just left that a little out to the right. Good speed, though. Again, looks like uh, the, the top right. Eli Rhodes still he still has his still beanie got on. the beanie he's, on. He's got a thing for that. It might be his lucky beanie. He's just been waiting for this day <laughs> all summer to put that thing back on. Ooh, good run there by Eli. Just gave that one a little bit too much speed, but he'll have a pretty straightforward putt coming back. All right, Gavin Augenstein here on nine would be a birdie putt. And you can see there C.J. Scooby up there doing the aim point express. Awesome with the fingers and the whole deal up there. So, again, Gavin's got, I don't know, what do you think, about 12 foot straight back up the hill. Yeah, if anything, it might try to leak a little bit to the right early and pretty flat at the end. Yeah, this one's callable, actually. I think Gavin might make this one. I love it. Bang. Wow. I good know. call. I'm, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. I know. <laughs> Back in the top right, we've got Mike Shooty again here. I uh, saw his putt just run out a little bit. He's just got a slight left to right break here from about four feet. I don't know. Again, bottom left. I don't know how CJ can miss this one after Gavin made that one. All right. I'm going to go ahead and call this one. Oh, he's, he's already, he already missed it. it. Yeah. I was calling this one. Oh. <laughs> this is what I was going to do. Bobby Horseman next to putt here. Austin, how's your, how's your feeling on this one? I don't know. After what you just did, I'm not sure I should say anything. Oh, he's going to make it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can see again E. Raiden Kennedy <laughs> in the top right of your screen from Moeller. I'll call I'll call Aiden's spot here. All right. Yeah, so this, he we hit that see beautiful. Two putts going in right here. Beautiful. As Bobby bangs it off the back, yeah, and Aiden does the same. See, we know what we're talking about. We're, uh, you know, we've been doing this for a couple years now. We are trained broadcast professionals at this point. That's right. Well, I don't know about trained. No, not. And trained. I don't know about professionals either. But no. we're doing some sort of a broadcast here for sure. <laughs> And again here, Austin C. Fring had a pretty long putt. Yeah, I'd like to apologize to Austin and his family for calling it. He was going to hit it close from the fairway there. Yeah. So he was probably cruising today until I put the whammy on him. I think they'll forgive you, hopefully at least. Maybe not. Yeah. A nice putt there for Austin. And they'll head over to number one to start their back nine. We get short walk from 18 green to one T. If you're with us this morning, you got to see quite a bit of the number one T shot. Dog leg down the hill from left to right so uh, the nice tee shot there on one that's a birdie opportunity for sure Here's a nice view of number one. You can see from the blimp view, that dog leg from left to right. Uh, 
going to be Mike Schutte from Elder getting ready to uh, attack this hole with a, uh, looks like he's got a fairway metal there, or a hybrid, I can't really tell from the angle, but yeah. Um, Point in the day, players should have a pretty good idea how their swing's going, and uh, you didn't seem real happy with it. But again, you got it solid down there by the 150 post. Uh, he should be fine. Aiden Kennedy next to play off here again. Looks like he's going with the three wood or a, yeah, fairway metal. Whole dog legging from left to right. Looks like Aiden's happy with that shot as he picks the tee up quickly. Some Springboro royalty walking past our broadcast location, Austin. That's right, Anthony Gilkison. Patriarch of the golfing Gilkison family <laughs> here from Springboro. Uh, Austin Seifring next to play here on the tee on number one. All right, as we look back up, um, number nine fairway from uh, behind the green. Try, trying to make out exactly who, who's who in this group. I think that might have been Aiden Walls, but not particularly sure. Again, a lot of these young men were wearing very similar um, similar attire today when they were teeing off. So um, let's just say if Aiden had a green belt on, <laughs> we know that was him. <laughs> a little tough to pick out the green belt from this distance. Um, Well, before we could even confirm who else was walking down that fairway, we're looking at that nice shot of 18. This will be the final players from Elder, Moeller, Oakwood, and Tippecanoe coming up 18. Over on number nine here, let's see if we can't get a better job identifying these uh, these young men wearing white shirts. That would be Ethan. <laughs> As Austin <laughs> finally picks out something we can identify <laughs> Ethan sons of doll with. <laughs> Ethan from Greenville, uh, just short here in two. Pretty straightforward shot for Ethan. Be looking to get this one fairly close, I would think. It's well played there as he's running it back up to the hole. Nice shot there as it just rolls past the hole. Yeah, great shot there. Yeah, he should be happy with that shot. Hopefully that helps him when we misidentify him earlier or later. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I believe this is Aiden Walls from Harrison here. 
And again, he should be in this bunker in two, so this would be, uh, again, we've seen this shot a couple times. Not terribly difficult, just judging the pace there. And again, he's left himself a uphill putt for birdie. Looking there, that would have been Austin McNichols we saw there. And uh, that's going to be Aiden Stanifer right there. Trying to determine who's going to play next. Looks like Aiden's going to play next. Um, I believe Aiden's there in two, so he's looking at this as an eagle chip. I mean, the difficulty in these shots, Austin, we've seen behind the green is how precise you have to be to get it close to the hole. Uh, again, you just land this just onto the green or into the fringe, and it's going to run back by the hole. If you carry it two or three feet too far, it's going to roll away, you know, 10, 15 feet away. So see how Aiden handles this one. Yeah, we did see a chip in the last group from this similar spot here. I'm not calling anything, but. See, he played that onto the green a little farther than what we talked about. And it ran a little bit by, but he had a little bit of spin on that, so the line must have been pretty good. So left himself a five-footer um, for birdie. Yeah, solid shot there for Aiden. Right, well, as we're looking here, um, Austin McNicholas um, kind of, call golf wandering on the green <laughs> to get himself read the putt and uh, lining this one up. This one's, um, what do you think, Austin? 40 feet, 30 feet maybe. Again, from this distance, it's a bonus if he uh, was to hold. He's looking to looking to get this um, within a three-foot circle probably. Again, not real happy with that one. I'm sure you'd um, if you had a do-over I think you'd want to do over on that one. <laughs> all right this one here looks like a birdie attempt here for Aiden walls Burn the edge. Nice stroke there. Uh, leave himself a little tap in for par. All right, being told that this is a birdie for um, Austin McNichols. Apologize if we're misidentifying any of these young men, but uh, I think we have them right. Oh, burns the edge. Stanford again. Uh, and his birdie putt. About five foot. Again, I'd feel comfortable calling this one, but if I called this one, you'd probably say, well, of course he's going to make it, wouldn't you? <laughs> I probably would. He pours <laughs> it in. <laughs> All right, we're going to split screen here with uh, number 18 and number nine. It looks like finishing up on number nine Aiden Walls here yeah on the top right we have Case Morgan Landon Harris Joey Martin and Eli Vassard this would be Joey Martin we totally have three birdie putts on 18 I would assume this would be one of them and on the bottom left on number nine we have Ethan Sons at all um, for birdie about six or eight feet. And we saw someone 
chip in from back here, but we really haven't seen a lot of putts made from back here. That's a little closer than six or eight feet. That's probably in the four or five foot range there. So, mm. and again, the trend continues. Unfortunately for Ethan, from the back of that hole, there must be something in there that's just giving him a little bit of a uncomfortable feeling or something. Because not a lot of putts have gone in from back there today, Austin. No. Top right of your screen, that would have been Eli Vassard there in the red shirt. Looks like Case Morgan is going to be next to play. He's just a little bit left of what you're looking at right now. He's got about 20 feet or so for his birdie. There's Case on camera. Maybe a little bit closer than we thought here. Case, again, a junior for Elder. He's got about 15 feet. Pretty straight, breaking a little bit left. Just left that one a touch short. Martin here from Oakwood, coming straight up the hill. About 10 feet. Oof. Oh. Caught the right edge there, but did not drop for Joey. Again, Eli from Tippecanoe ran his First putt by six feet or so. Should be pretty straight here for Eli, breaking from his left to right ever so slightly. Didn't get that one started out high enough, but just a foot or so left to tap in for Eli. And then Landon Harris next to play from Moeller. Ooh. So, looks like all the uh, members of teams have made their way to the back nines. As they're doing that, we probably get a little better idea. Still early in the round, but a little better idea of how we're standing scoring-wise. Austin, I see you got that pulled up. How are things looking? Yeah, we, uh, as far as team-wise, Springboro leads the way um, through anywhere from 9 to 12 holes. Uh, they're at 4 over par. Uh, St. X. Second place, seven over par. Bellbrook, third place, 12 over par. Just one ahead of Lakota East uh, at 13 over. Uh, Moeller rounding out the top five. Um, still not through nine yet, doesn't look like, at least on mine. Uh, but they're at 17 over. Um, so again, three teams advancing, Springboro, St. X, and Moeller uh, right now in those three spots, but obviously a ton of golf left to play um, for all the teams, uh, even on the outside. 
Uh, individually, Ian Cambria, 100 through 9. Charlie Fish and Luke Colley. Oh, and sorry, Case Morgan and Gavin Augustine, they are all, all four of those players are in a tie for second at even par. And obviously it's still too early as we don't really know. Uh, we don't have even a close to a good idea of you know, who's going to be the advancing teams. We're not really going to know, you know who can be advancing individually until we get a better idea of what teams are going to be uh, in that position. That's right. There's Aiden Walls again. I can see Aiden's green belt now. Yes, you can. Uh, getting ready to tee off on number 10. If you couldn't see his belt, you could actually read his last name on his uh, yardage book. <laughs> <laughs> Over on number one, uh, it's Landon Harris. Still a little bit. Okay. Case Morgan. Okay. Austin Nicholas on number ten, and Case Morgan. Teeing off on number one. Oh, I'm sorry, I think that was Aiden Stanifer on number ten. And it looks like Case Morgan's ready to go here on number one. Less than driver for him. Starting it out near that 150 post. Okay, solid swing. Ethan Sunsdahl from Greenville. Thanks to play on 10. And Eli Vassard in the red shirt, top right of your screen, getting ready to go on hole number one. of action all over the place here now, Austin, as we pan back to number 18 green. Yeah, over on 18, we have individuals of Colin Babowski, Marshall Morency, Sam Strouser, and Seth Jones. Backwards hat there would be <laughs> Seth. <laughs> Can't really miss Not him. a normal look you see on the <laughs> golf course for sure. Kind of um, unusual for someone not to be protecting their eyes there with that ball cap. But yes, easy to pick Seth out. We've got, I believe, Sam Strauser coming from across the green there. Extremely long chip shot there for Sam, but. We'll give him an okay. I mean, that's a tough shot. He's got it down there in a makeable distance. Colin Babowski. Babowski, there we saw real quick. And then looks like we just saw Seth Jones play up there. I saw his ball in the air as we were panning toward him. Let's see if we can get a result here. Eh, I don't see it there. Well, maybe it's short in the rough. But That would be Marshall Morency there, though black shirt, gray pants. And again, Colin Babowski there. Looks like in a grass bunker just short. Playing up, landing it just short and running it on. Yeah, really well played there. Yeah, nicely done Excellent there. shot. <laughs> I believe Marshall Morency is going to be next to play. Marshall, a sophomore. He's going to let everyone go ahead and mark. He's got a pretty straightforward pitch out here, depending on the line. Marshall's from Anderson, also. They're the Raptors. They are the Raptors. 
like he just left that a little bit short there. Maybe you can kind of see the lie from here. Maybe it was sitting up a little bit too much for him. Kind of caught a little high in the face and didn't get all of that that he wanted to. Again, this group qualified as individuals, so if it, you see more coaches here uh, than you would with the teams. The teams one coach for each team trying to follow four players where there are a couple schools that have more than one individual qualify but uh, yeah coaches are um, you've only got one player here you're pretty much following them the whole time that's right that would be Sam Strausser's ball coming into screen there saw his pitch from just short left of this green Got a little bit of work left to do. Again, Seth Jones there in the backwards hat. Ooh. How'd that one not go in? No, it was going that slow and <laughs> caught the edge. You'd think it would have fell. Gravitational pull of the earth. Yeah. Again, Marshall from Anderson. Bang. Bang's at home. Colin Babowski finishes up. Sam Strouser last to finish here on 18. Finally down to number nine here. Weston Moeller from Springfield here. Spot we've seen quite a few players just over this green. Difficult to get this one close. And pretty typical result from back there that we've seen today. And this is going to be Jack Ward from Harrison. Um, just off the green there, getting ready to come up. And Jack's looking. Um, no, looks like he's ready to play. He's chosen putter here to putt through a little bit of rough. I just think this gives him the best opportunity to get it close, Austin. Or hold it. Again, kind of tough to judge the speed sometimes going with putter out of the rough. And Jack seemed to have a little bit of a trouble there. Gonna be Jack Wittenauer here from Little Miami. Again, from that spot behind the green that we haven't seen very many putts go in. Again, about 15 feet, and doesn't look like from his uh, body language that he made it. But we were blocked out by the hole there. I think he was just a little bit short and just walks up and is going to tap it in. All right, back to Jack Ward. Weston Moeller looks like he's on his way up and Ooh. just burns the edge. All right, now Jack Ward looks like he's getting ready. Just a little short. Lastly, 
Well, Jack's going to finish up here as Braylon Haney. He's got about, hard to tell from directly behind him, but about 10 feet or so. Yeah, I think it's a callable distance, Austin. You think I should call it? I mean, Are you saying you should call oh, it? Oh, I mean, I think he's going to make it, but you can call it if you want. I think he's going to make it, too. This is a dual call. First dual call of, of the week. <laughs> Oh, even Braylon was stunned. Obviously, I think that was just a dimple from rolling in there. Yeah, yeah. Maybe if we didn't say anything, yeah, you know, right. you fault. never know. It's our fault. Yeah, definitely. We we sucked the wind out of that enough to get it to stop just short. <laughs> <laughs> As uh, Weston Moeller taps in there. And those young men will head to number 10 to start their back nine. Just leaves one more group of individuals to make the turn, and then everyone else coming up 9 and 18 will be finishing their round. You're looking at 18 now. This is the group of Brady Compton, Mike Fickle, Peyton Lawley, and Quentin Stahl. Okay, this is a great it. shot here, Austin, from above. What the players are looking at coming up 18 fairway. Sorry to talk over you there. But no, you're fine. <laughs> you're in charge here. <laughs> we use that loosely. Yeah. <laughs> We've got Mike Fickle here from Lakota West, chipping from just over the green. Just caught that a little bit harder than he wanted to, but only about 10 or so feet coming back up the hill. Peyton Lawley, I think. Yeah, in the bunker there. Yeah, in the bunker there next to play. Looks pretty good. Yeah, well played there. Yeah. Just kicked a little right on him, but he should be very happy. I mean, he had almost no green to work with. Yeah, the slope ended up grabbing that and just having it run away from the hole. But a nice shot from where he was there. Left him a definitely a makeable putt straight up the hill. Again, as Austin and I are trying to make out players here. I believe this is going to be Quentin Stahl from Butler from behind the green, but and you can see the pace of these greens starting to uh, firm up a little bit with the sun and the wind blowing today. Um, players aren't having any trouble at all getting balls to the hole right now. Definitely not. Brady Compton here from Fairfield. Uh, about uh, 30 feet or so. Again. Straight up the hill and knocks it four feet past. Ooh. Mike just burning the low edge there. In the red. P. 
Peyton Lawley here. Saw his nice bunker shot from just short of the green. Ooh. Again, Quentin Stahl here exactly. from Butler. Start with the mayor's video. Pours that one in. And Brady Compton from Fairfield. Nice putt there for Brady. All right, as this group, um, our final group of individuals, makes their way to the back nine for them. Austin and I, we're going to take another 20-minute break or so. So we're going to play a quick message from Mayor Agenbrod and a couple of our sponsors and then get into you some more instructional videos. And Austin and I are going to be back with you here in about uh, 20 minutes. So we'll bring you the rest of the day's coverage once we come back. And uh, we'll see everyone again, hopefully, in 20 minutes. Welcome to the City of Springboro Heatherwoods Golf Club. I'm Mayor John Agarbo. We are so happy with the Ohio High School Athletic Association. Southwest Regional Golf Tournament is going to be hosted right here in Springboro. Welcome. We are so glad to have you. We wish you nothing but success throughout the whole tournament. If there's anything at all we can do in Springboro to make this tournament even better, please let us know. We'll see you around the golf course. Weibel Energy Systems is a full-service mechanical contractor and building services company focused on making buildings work better. You can rely on us for all of your building's operational needs, including HVAC installation, service and preventative maintenance, building automation and controls, energy services and monitoring, healthy building consultations, and commercial plumbing, as well as security cameras and door access controls. Weibel Energy Systems serves Dayton, Cincinnati, and Columbus. Learn more at GoWeibel.com. Brad Smith here, Director of Instruction at Heatherwood. I'm going to teach you how to do a little bit of chipping and get a little bit better. A lot of people hit it over the green, hit it thin, try to fly it to the hole, that kind of thing. You can learn the same technique with different clubs. Okay, You can even putt it if you can. So whenever you can, try to putt it. And then we can go from there. So if you're close to the, the green, you can putt it, roll it there. What I'm looking at is about three to five feet on the green trying to land it there. And then I'm saying, okay, is the pin very close? I'm gonna use my 58 or 54. If it's a little further out, I'm gonna use a pitching wedge. And if it's even further out, I'm gonna hit the eight iron. But my landing area is always the same. 
So the technique, I'll just do the technique here real quick for you. So the technique is all about taking the ball, put it in the middle for now. You can play it forward or back later on. Just play it in the middle for now. Set up. You can open up just a little bit and then take your whole body and move just a little bit this way. So even my head goes this way. So I'm stacking everything on this left side. That's gonna allow me to go up and follow through on this side of the ball. So I'm hitting down into the ball a little bit better. So my practice swings are gonna match my landing area. So I'm not looking at the hole. I'm not saying here's the hole, I gotta swing that big. It's the landing area, which is a different type of shot for most people. Because everything we do, putting, you look at the hole. This is how big I swing. Chipping, no, right here. So I'm gonna put my ball right in the center for now. Lean forward, hands are forward. Look in the landing area. You can watch my eyes go from the landing area to the hole. And then I'm gonna take it back with my left arm and follow through with the body. A little long. I have my 54, it should be a 58 for me. So that's kind of how we do chipping. If you knock it close, then you're gonna be putting one putt, the most, maybe a two putt. So two putt or better, you're, the worst you're gonna get is a bogey. So that's how we do it to become a golf professional and would you become a really good player. Brad Smith here, Director of Instruction at Heatherwood. I'm glad you came back to watch how you chip. Some of the problems that I see is the weight transfer. People are still trying to lift it, whether they flip their hands or falling backwards. Trying to lift. Don't want to ever lift, because what happens, I hit behind it. So we're always trying to stay forward. So the best tip I can give you to try to learn how to stay forward is put this left foot back. You're standing on one leg, basically. So hopefully you have pretty good distance, but you can see I'm bottoming out in the front here. So we're gonna set up. So that ball is gonna be a little bit more forward. You can see all my weight went to the left side, put my foot back, and then use the left side. Not bad for one leg. So this is how we do it. This is how you're gonna get better at chipping here at Heatherwood. Brad Smith here from Heatherwood, Director of Instruction. I'm here to show you how to putt even better, okay? Not only we had a speed drill, we have making sure you hit it on the line. And the line is this thing I made for a couple pennies, two pencils, a string. You don't have to have the colors. I think I had an old uh, Halloween pencil and some red string. You can find, do whatever you have to do. The whole key is to get this ball so it's, the string is intersecting the ball. So then what you're doing is you're trying to roll this ball on a straight line. So you gotta find a straight line, make sure it's straight uphill. I guess you can do downhill, but I like to go uphill. And all I'm trying to do is understand if I'm pulling or pushing. So this is where we get the, make sure the ball is rolling down that imaginary line in this case, we don't have the imaginary line, it's the real line, and I can get my putter that has a line here, and I can line it up to the red line. So this line here is I'm gonna set that up to the red line. So you can still run your, your process, your routine if you want, and it's all about taking that ball down the line. And you can see I had good face control, it rolled down the line very, very well. If I push it, you'll see, so it could be swing path or face angle, so my face angle is gonna be a little off, and you can see I pushed it. Plus, I hit it too hard. Speed control is pretty important. So this one, I'm gonna pull it. 
So this one I get here and the face shuts down, like a lot of people do. They shut it down because they're looking or they're getting too quick to look at, go in the hole. You will not lose a ball on the putting green, so no reason to look up. Keep your eyes still, take it down this imaginary line and you'll start knocking in some putts. Let's say you're playing golf. You don't have this imaginary line, hopefully you have it in your head, but you can put the ball, you can put some lines on the ball Okay, or if you don't want to use the lines, there's usually a, you know, you could use tie list or whatever and line that up to this imaginary line that you have when you don't have the line. And we get set up here. I can get it lined up there. There you go. So that line matches the line I want to roll it down. So now I can line the line up of the ball with the putter. Again, the putter line. So if I didn't have this line here, I would line all that up if I'm out on the plane on the golf course, and now I can roll that ball, hit a little too hard, okay? And I did push it a little bit. So that's why you shouldn't practice what you're not pushing in the pulling, okay? I like to practice what I want to do, not what I don't want to do, okay? But at least I know the push and the pull, that kind of thing. But I can line that putter up. If you have good speed on this short of putt, the ball should only be this far away. Okay, anywhere from the fr front part of the hole to the back, about a foot past. Don't want a longer and you don't want a shorter because you're not gonna learn break. Very important. But that's how we win. And it's all about here at Heatherwood, learning how to hit it like the pros. Brad Smith here, Director of Instruction at Heatherwood, here to show you how you chip a little bit better with some of those problems that you may have that I see as an instructor. We have one is one of the, the problems that I see people trying to scoop the ball, the flipping, the flipping. So they have a tough time leading with the hands. Take your alignment aid. If you don't have alignment aid, take another golf club, turn it upside down. But you can take your alignment aid we have a bunch of them here on the dry range you can practice with. Just put your alignment aid here, hold on to it, feels kind of weird. Put the alignment aid on the side and all you're doing is working on not hitting you on the side. Pain is the quickest way of learning, okay? You start getting a nice bruise, you'll figure it out. So weight on the left side, lead with the hands, weight on the left side, lead with the hands, and you can see that never touched the side. And that's how you start chipping things in. Hello everyone, I'm Matt Cole, the head golf professional and director of club fitting here at Heatherwood. One thing we put a really big emphasis on is club fitting. Most players don't know just how important it is to their game until they can actually see it. And we utilize technology made by Foresight Sports called the Foresight GC Quad. What it does, it has four cameras, so it takes 200 high-speed photos at 10,000 frames per second. So basically we can know everything that's going on with that club and how we need to build the best set for you to improve your game. I got my friend Chase here. I'm gonna have him hit a ball so that we can show you just a little bit of the technology we offer here at Heatherwood. Go ahead, Chase. Pretty good one. Hey folks, if you look on the screen, what's gonna come up is basically gonna show us everything that's going on with that golf club. So as you can see here, it's even able to give us the point of contact, which is the red dot on the face. It's giving us the path where the face was and tells us the lie angle of that club, which is extremely important. Anytime the lie angle of that club is too far down, 
the toe's gonna grab the ground and flip open. So you're gonna miss more shots to the right. And there's a lot of golfers out there that miss a lot of shots to the right. So anytime, just come in, give us a call. We'll set you up with a fitting appointment. Find out why we're one of the best fitters in the state of Ohio. Brad Smith, Director of Instruction here at Heatherwood, and we have the luxury of having Austin hit a shot for us, and we're going to talk to Austin how he thinks through the, the, the process of playing golf. So we're here on number 10 at uh, Heatherwood, and we're trying to play a shot where we have trouble on the left-hand side and a little bit on the right side, but the right side I don't feel comes into play that much. So way I usually would do it, I would tee up since I play a draw, I'm going to play on the left side of the tee, away from trouble, teeing away from trouble. So it's all about angles. So if your angle is better from one side or the other, that's what you're going to try to do. So Austin likes to play a fade with his driver, however he plays a draw with most of his other clubs. So we're going to talk to him about how he would play this hole. So we have a dog leg left. And with this yardage book that he's used to using through college and now as a professional, he's going to look at the yardages and know how he's going to be playing this hole. It also shows him how, if, the, if he knows where the pin is, where he needs to come in from also. So he may change his strategy where the hole is. So on this hole, we know the pin is on the right-hand side. So he's probably going to play a draw, but we're going to ask him. So how would you play this hole and tell me how you, what you're thinking in this process? Yeah, so I'm definitely always going to try to hit a draw on this one just because of the dog leg left and because of how the trees kind of interfere with if you were to hit a fade. Um, some guys like to take it up top and can kind of fade one over the corner. I like to just drop back a club. A three wood for me draws a little bit easier, so I can aim just a little bit right at that 150 marker out there and just try to shape one from right to left around the corner a little bit sure. to give myself a good chance. Yeah, because he sees on this here, he sees that the cut is pretty, I mean, how far do you hit your driver or your three wood? I carry it anywhere from 265 to 270. Yeah, so he, he can cut the corner pretty easily without any trouble. So that's what he's trying to do. So, and I think he likes to tee up on one side or the other, depending on the shot. With, where, which side do you want to tee up on? With, with the draw, definitely I would tee up more on the left side of the box. Okay, um, perfect. This hole, sometimes I might tee up a little bit more right, depending on where the tee box is located. If it's on the far left side, I would definitely go a little bit right just to give myself a little bit more visual of the fairway. Good. But today with the tee box more centered, I'll, I'll tee up on the left side to give myself the room to hit the draw on this shot. Perfect, so it's all about angles. Perfect, so let's see how he does this. And one thing you should be watching, he runs a great routine, very important. Why do you run routine, Austin? Uh, it's important to keep it the same uh, over every shot. Uh, so I have a checklist, kind of you could say, that I go through in my head, um, and it's just a system to keep keep me in the in the shot and make sure I do it every shot beforehand. So it's all about staying focused. Absolutely perfect. Great shot. Thank you. Is that pretty much what you visualized? Yeah, definitely. Very, very close to what I visualized. Maybe wanted a little bit just further, a little further left, left. But yeah. I mean, I'll take that 10 times out of 10. Yeah, it's in the middle of the fairway. So yeah, just a little more left. Yeah, yeah. So that's awesome. Yeah, good job. No complaints there. Thank you. That is exactly how professionals do it here. <laughs> Thank you. Good job. Thank you. School Athletic Association Southwest Districts Division I Boys Golf Championships. I'm Neil Amberg here with Austin Schoonmaker. We're uh, starting to wind down play a little bit and we're going to bring you the rest of the coverage of today's event to uh, try to figure out who those three qualifying teams are along with the three individuals uh, heading to next week's state championship. Um, everybody's on their back nine now so we're getting a little better idea of what a, a score, a qualifying score is going to be and um, we're going to continue bringing you live action until uh, until we figure out who's heading that direction. 
Uh, again, cameras behind 9 and 18 greens going to be bringing us the coverage of both the end of the front 9 and the back 9. And as we're looking up number 9 green right now, this should be the group of Jackson. Nope, I'm sorry. This is going to be the group of Jack Berger, Brody Hansen, Noah Bittner, and Bryce Massengill uh, working their way down nine green or nine fairway again nine is a short par five uh, two well struck shots are going to get you around the green so definite birdie opportunity for these people to finish off their rounds um, all these young men uh, started on number 10 so they're going to be finishing play up right here and as they do that and more and more of them do that we'll get a better idea of of the standings and the leaderboard and um, what Austin and I think is going to be a, a score to get us to next week's state championship. Austin and I were talking over it a little bit at the break. Um, it's going to be around 310, we think. Maybe a little bit less. Uh, right now, looking at the leaderboard, Springboro, um, while they were in the league, as so I'm trying to get it to load on my phone, Springboro at plus one, uh, St. X at plus eight. Um, then from there, we take a little bit of a jump. As the leaderboard's rolling there on this on your screen. Um, we'll get it up on my phone here and we'll talk about it in a little bit once I get it to load. Austin looks like you got you may have yours to load, Austin. Yeah, we've got Springboro at plus one, like you said, Neil, St. X at eight over par, um, Lakota East at plus fourteen, and then Bellbrook at in fourth place. Uh, as you can see now we've got it pulled up here as well. Uh, Bellbrook at plus fifteen, a uh, molar tip a canoe at 21 over um, so still you know Lakota East Bellbrook they're through 12 holes so still got some golf left um, plenty lots of golf left to play so um, Neil and I were just ch talking about how um, with you know six or nine holes left to play um, it's going to be somewhere around that third place score is somewhere going to be around 300 to 310 um, but we'll obviously keep you guys updated as scores keep coming in. Yeah, looking at live action here on number nine. Um, make out who's who here. Uh, looks like Brody Hansen in the bunker there. Well, maybe we got two lefties in this group, Austin. So looks like this is Noah Bittner in the bunker. Nicely played there. As he knocks it down there to about three feet. So we'll definitely well played from that position. This looks Brody Hansen's going to be next to play. Brody just short of the green here, assuming in two shots. Again, pretty straightforward pitch shot right up the green. I should be able to get this pretty close, if not to scare the hole. aggressive with that um, obviously not what he was looking there for there Austin now gave it a little bit too much All right, this is going to be Jack Berger um, looks like he may be in the in the grass short of the bunker there or, or definitely not in the bunker play that up in the air nicely use the uh, elevation to try to get it to stop but again you can see the green spurning up and getting faster as that one ran all off the back from there so just a tough angle to get that um, to stop on the green now yeah, looking at the split screen now the top right of your screen 18 is going to be Connor Schulte or sorry Connor Schulte Casey Eversoll Rohan Reddy and Jack Bales let's see uh, Rohan there in the hoodie and Bryce Massengill here from Troy coming from the back of the green All right, got that to a nice tap-in area there. Here again, Brody Hansen um, from Mason. We saw his chip shot run over the green here to this position. Again, pretty straightforward here again. Just get it onto the, the fringe or just barely on the green and let it run down by the hole. 
That top right of your screen, you see Jack Bales there from Beaver Creek from long left of 18. Jack Berger here from Coleraine. All right, as everybody lines up their putt here on number nine, let's see who's to play first. Looks like Jack Berger's going to go first here. And top right, I believe, not really pictured right now, but Rohan Reddy from Centerville off to the right of the screen. He's got quite a long putt coming from across the green. There you can see Rohan. Pretty solid putt there for for him from that length. And Brody Hansen trying to finish up here on the bottom left on number nine. go ahead and tap in to finish his round. Again, these players finishing up their round. They would have started um, early this morning. We were on about a half hour delay, so um, started on one and ten respectively, but yeah, concluding their play on both nine and eighteen right now. Top right of your screen, you're looking at Casey Eversole from Loveland. Oof. Again, Jack Bales from Beaver Creek next to play on 18. A little bit under there, and then Brody Hansen both finishing Ooh. up on number nine. Good putt there by Jack Bales. Just left it a touch low, but good speed. Bryce Massengale on number nine on the bottom left. Jack Berger to finish off this group. Top right there, Connor Schulte from Talawanda finishes off his round. Back to Rohan Reddy, Centerville from Five feet or so. Again, he had a long first spot here on 18, so good to get it that close, but not going to be too thrilled with a miss there. See Casey Eversole there finishing off his round as well for Loveland. As the players uh, shake hands to conclude the round, again, all scoring you've seen up to this point, uh, whether you're checking it out on uh, Golf Genius and using D as in dog, the number one, B as in boy, M as in Mary, V as in victory, and G as in golf. So. D1B MVG as your code to get you into the Golf Genius app to see live scoring. Or if you've been checking out scoring on the iWanamaker app, all oh, that's unofficial. Uh, these players now will go into the scoring area, uh, verify their paper scorecards 
and then sign scorecards. So once those scorecards are signed, um, then we'll get a better idea of who's finishing and, and the actual scoring. So sometimes, uh, you know, there's some mistakes made in data input and stuff on the golf course. So um, they will, again, verify everything and they'll double check it. And, and then we'll have a better idea of what's going on as far as that goes. Um, as far as what's left on the golf course, um, we've got a couple groups left um, from the first team wave. So this looks like Reed Schaefer from Cole Rain. Just short of the green there in the area somewhere. There's a the camera trying to zoom in and pick it up. Uh, other three players in this group, Ben Mornow, Mason Weimer, and Blake Sager. Again, these are players are playing in the two positions for their teams. And as they're finishing up on number nine, they would have started on number 10. I believe this is Blake Sager uh, from Troy there. Assuming that's his ball, just short of the green there, honestly in a pretty good spot from behind those trees. Again, as these young men make their way down number nine fairway, a quick look at the leaderboard uh, individually. Uh, right now, uh, Ian Cambria, Gavin Augustine both tied um, at one under par through 12. Charlie Fish, Bradley Hinkle, Casey Morgan, and Marshall Morancy at even par. So there's an idea, again, of the leaders at this point. Again, it would be th qualifying three individuals for next week's state championship who are not on a qualifying team. Uh, right now, again, it's kind of tough to tell whose qualifying teams are going to be, but Springboro and St. X are in pretty good position. So if you look at those top one, two, three, four, five, four people, um, five people, five out of the top six are from those two schools. Uh, Casey Morgan from Elder, Marshall Morancy from Anderson. Um, at even par would be two of the qualifying spots at this point. And then we get into... Um, Aiden Standifer would be qualifying at one over right now. Those would be the three spots. A lot of golf left to play. Too early to call anything there. Um, as you look at the team leaderboard. Um, yeah, we've got jumping over here to Reed Schaefer uh, with his eagle chip here on number nine. Looks like that's just going to run out again. We've seen that all day. Just hard to get the balls to stop from um, if you're not uh, right enough to have enough green to work with and going into the upslope. Blake yeah, again, Sager here. It's hard to make yourself do it, Austin, but if you don't get it down there around hole high, if you leave it short in that spot right there, um, you know, if you're in a point where yeah, I can't get to the screen, you might want to lay back to where you can get yourself a full wedge in where you can spin something. So, you know, leave yourself a 90, 80, 90, 100 yard shot where you can take a a lob wedge or a sand wedge and put some spin on yeah. it to get it to stop because yeah, you're not going to get it to stop uh, unless you hit the absolute perfect shot from that area short there. Yeah, for sure. Um, this is going to be Ben Morneau from Mason coming up here. And again, you can see he hit a nice shot, but that green's just firming up and running right off of it. Um, and again, Pretty typical position. We see people that are um, in that spot just running off that back French. Yeah, over here to Mason Weimer. Uh, with this wind picking up, back into the wind should help him stop this one coming from the other direction. Honestly, long is probably going to be a better play, uh, especially with the with the wind picking up. You're just going to be pitching back a little bit sure. uphill into the wind, so you should be able to stop that a little bit easier than short. Yep, I would agree. Blake Sager, again, just over, chipping back up toward the hole. He decided to putt it. He, uh, he tried to run it through that rough again. Very difficult to judge how it's going to jump and roll through that rough. Caught up a little bit on him, a little more than what he had expected. Reed Schaefer again, putting from the fringe. Kind of 
fools you a little bit. It runs so fast away from you down that hill uh, <laughs> that they think a little more uh, tentative coming back up the hill when you can be a little bit more aggressive going back up the slope. Ben Morneau next to play here for Mason. Just coming up a little bit short there as well for Ben. Split screen, top right of your screen there on 18, Ty Huber, Jacob, Alkire, Elliot, Durbin, and Jack Faulkner. Coming up on 18. And again, this is Blake Sager, bottom left. footer in. Ooh. And he does. I thought you might call that one, but uh, <laughs> nice way to finish his round there. Yeah, back on the top right, you can see there Jacob Alkire there in the orange shirt, black pants from Loveland. Elliot Durbin from Centerville in the yellow. Schaefer had the pin put back in here for him here. And Forward although in. we didn't see Reed's stroke, we saw him take the ball out of the hole. So Sure did. Uh, it was the most beautiful stroke we've ever seen. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> the, the result is all that matters. All right, Ben Morneau here to do the same. And he does. And finally, Mason. From Fairmont to finish up. Top right looks like Jake, or sorry, Jack Faulkner from Beaver Creek. He's going to play a long attempt here from across the green. Nicely hold by Mason. Again, back top right there on 18, Jack Faulkner from Beaver Creek. Extremely long putt here, going back downhill at the end. Left it about five feet short. Really not bad from that distance, though. Next to play here, Jacob Alkire from Loveland. As the wind starts to pick up here at our broadcast location, the flag sticks start to really whip a little bit. Definitely uh, getting a little bit cooler out here as yeah. well as that wind yeah. picks up. Looks like Elliot Durbin will be next to play here on 18. Elliot pours that one in nicely. Jack Faulkner from about five feet to finish off his round. Jack, just a freshman for the Beavers. Oh. Jacob Alkire finishes up his round. So those young men complete their round today. You can look at the team leaderboard real quick here. Um, like I said, we just covered the individual leaderboard a little while ago, but Springboro is in pretty good position right here at plus one. 
um, through 12 holes. Um, Austin feel pretty comfortable about where they stand right now. Uh, St. X at plus 11. Uh, Lakota East is starting to creep in there. We're, they're definitely within striking range now of them. And we are taking the top three teams. So Lakota, St. X, Lakota East, Bellbrook, Moeller, all those teams, even Elder, um, definitely starting to group there around that, uh, let's just call it plus 20 number for now through 12. As you look at the teams that started in the later wave, um, love one at plus 29. Also, I almost feel like plus 29 is too high. Like that they, you know, they're they aren't going to get up to that at that point. Uh, but the wind is starting to pick up, so that can change if it does get a little bit more windier. Um, I don't know if more windier is the proper grammar <laughs> there, but <laughs> uh, you know what I'm saying. If, I'm it starts to, <laughs> if it starts to blow a little bit harder, it, the scores may rise a little bit. But yeah, I think if you're, I see Centerville there right now at plus 30. Uh, my gut just tells me that that's too high. I don't think we're getting to that number. Yeah, plus 30 would be 314. Yeah, I mean, it, at this point, it, it does seem a little bit too high. But, I mean, like you said, the wind's picking up. I mean, the last couple holes uh, on the back nine are definitely are very difficult. Mm -hmm. So um, you never know. Uh, but I, I'm kind of in the same boat as you. That does seem a little bit on the outside looking in. It might not get to that, but um, yeah, again, certainly something to be said about posting a number. You know, if they post that 30, uh, 30 over number or whatever, you know, some of those earlier teams post. I mean, that's, I mean. Yeah, and again, those are the teams we're looking at. They're level on 29, center at 30 that are in the first wave of teams like we talked about. They're going to get in the clubhouse um, with the teams on the golf course with a lot of holes left to play. So that is an important number once it gets posted. Um, but yeah, I just, I don't know that there's there's so many teams there in that 17, 18, 20 range, right? 23 range that I don't know that all of them are going to get up there. No, and and honestly, they still have you know Loveland and Centerville still have some scores to come in. So yes, true. I mean, if they were to come in, you know, right at that 29 or 30, then it's a possibility for sure. Um, but again, you know, with some holes still to play, I mean, if they don't play the last few you know the last few players don't play even par coming in it it might be a little bit too high but we we'll, we'll see yeah we're gonna watch it here and find out for sure we sure will um and again um all these teams have made it here through sectional qualifying so i mean they've all had good years and they've all had to play well in the sectionals to get to this point so even though majority of these teams aren't moving on to the state then all these teams i think can qualify this year as a successful season and um, you know hang their hat on that that they played well enough to get to the districts that's right like I said and we're only taking three teams out of here and three individuals not on those te teams so majority of people here today are, aren't going to be playing next week um, again but not to say that they haven't had a good year all right so as we're looking here now on the 18 green I see the group of Okay, uh -oh. I see some players coming down nine here on camera view, but again, right now, if you followed us at all, when we did the D2 and D3 boys and also the D2 girls, we're gonna bring uh, Maureen Russell Hodgson in um, to do some interviews once some players start completing play. And uh, you know, she'll talk to some of these young men and see how their day went. And, and who knows, Austin, we may have another clutch Mikey <laughs> in our midst here. Um, so I think she's got someone right now. So Maureen, uh, welcome to the, the broadcast today and who you've got. Hey, thanks guys. Um, it's so funny you mentioned Clutch Mikey because we've got Jack Bales and Anderson Davis. They're both from Beaver Creek High School. And you want to send a message to Clutch Mikey, right? Yeah, he beat me today. Um, <laughs> he, he got me by a few strokes out there. I mean, it was a tough course today, but I just... I'd like a Waffle House sponsorship too, so <laughs> let's let's talk about that. Everybody wants a Waffle House sponsorship. So Anderson, how did you do today? Uh, I played the same exact as Jack Bales here. I mean, Clutch Mikey was playing the course about uh, 100 yards shorter, but that's okay. He's a good golfer. I trust that he played the course well. Uh, I, I'm just terrible at golf, so congratulations to him. What was so challenging today? Well, I mean, the greens were really tough today, and I couldn't – 
I, I don't think I could putt to save my life. I mean, yeah. if there was a Waffle House sponsorship on the line, I would have missed the putt. I mean, it's just disappointing. How did your coach prepare you for today? You know, he's been very encouraging all season, especially to me because I haven't had the best senior year. Uh, I'm just going to be straightforward. But uh, he's never given up on me. All, for every round, he's always like, I believe in you. I know that you can play well. And um, I didn't play well for him today, but that's all right. I know that that's, he's not gonna, that's not what ultimately matters, that we have fun out here, and that's a great opportunity. What was your plan or your strategy coming into today? plan was to hit it straight and go low and we were not able to do either of them today so that's all right okay finally you both said you were seniors what are your plans after high school uh go to college um maybe play golf in college uh I also play tennis so maybe play tennis in college I mean it just depends also hoping to attend a four-year college get a degree hopefully somewhere in the music industry um a few of the colleges I looked at had uh, club golf, so I might play that. Definitely not good enough for the golf teams there, but uh, definitely be playing golf for the rest of my life. It's a great sport, and uh, yeah. All right, we'll say go Creek. Thanks, guys. Go Creek. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. All right, thanks, Maureen. Again, I'm Neil Amberger here with Austin Schoonmaker, um, bringing you the rest of the coverage today from the Ohio High School Athletic Association Southwest District Division I Boys Golf Championship here at Heatherwood Golf Club in Springboro, Ohio. Starting to wind down the rounds here. Some kids finishing up with their rounds. Uh, actually just about got all the teams in from wave number one this morning, so we'll get a pretty good idea of how the, that worked out for them and be able to gauge a little bit as some of these other teams start coming in. Cameras behind nine and 18 green. We're looking at a live shot here from behind number nine. Um, perilously close to those out of bounds stakes there, but I believe that that would be Thurman Shreel. Um, and as we pan over, I think that's Curtis Cummins. I think that is Curtis Crimmins. I'm yeah. sorry. Um, and again, short par five today, downwind, and as the wind picks up, plays a little bit shorter even so. Um, looks like he's got it up around the green in two shots there. And as we jump back to Thurman Shreel, um, just inbounds, but inbounds he is, Austin. <laughs> yes, he is. That important thing there. <laughs> that uh, six feet can make a big difference, and looks like he was able to get it up around the green also in two strokes. So, again, um, been kind of challenging that pin position today just because the greens are firm and fast. and. Um, We've seen a bunch of people who leave it just short having a hard time even to get it to stop on the green and, and trickle back into the, the fringe or the rough. So as these guys are walking up um, nine green, um, they are the young men playing in the number one position for their teams. So this is uh, Colerain, Mason, Fairmont, and Troy. Um, once these complete play, they'll have all their players in and again, a few minutes after that, there'll be, uh, you know, final scores posted. But so Alex Diesel here um, with the print golf shirt on uh, from Cole Rain. He's a junior. I didn't see where they were as they were coming down the hill. Awesome. He's in that, that finger in there about 100 yards, right? Yeah, he is. Yeah, so he's likely his third shot. Although... A really long header might be able to get down there, but I, I would assume this is probably his third. And again, what we've talked about, it's very difficult to get it close to. You almost have to per hit the perfect shot. As I'm saying that, he lands it in the rough just short of the green, has it trickle out of that rough and run right down by the hole. So yeah. um, outstanding shot there by Alex. Yeah, especially coming from the rough like he was and, and the left rough. <laughs> uh, just to emphasize that as well, not uh, even a worse angle. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, that's about as good as you can do from yeah, there. Yeah, you could have taken a large bucket out there and not hit it closer than that one. <laughs> that's for sure. Also in this group, uh, Curtis Crimmins, Thurman Shreel, and Mitchell Sargent. That would be Curtis Crimmins there in the white jacket. And again, look at his scores here. Um, Cole Rain's probably a little bit too high to qualify. Mason at 32 over. They're on the borderline of being too high. 
Fairmont uh, and Troy are, they're not having their best days compared to some of the other teams here. So again, these will probably be it for the season for everyone in this group. Um, again, looking at, we got two sophomores, a junior and a senior, so. Sorry about that if you picked up that noise there. Um, this is gonna be Mitchell Sargent here from Troy. Again, he is a sophomore, so a couple more opportunities to get back to the districts and try to qualify for the state. Looks like he's walking down, looks like he's walking down into the bunker, but I don't feel like he dug his feet in, so I think he's probably just on the grass upslope here. Again, difficult shot from this angle, being this close to the green. That shows you how good a shot Alex's was from way back in the 100 yard range. So I think he'd be happy to get it just where Alex is from here. And again, it's a nice shot there and uh, very well played, but you can see it kind of just keeps trickling away from the hole. So, but yeah, well played on his part. So Mitchell should be happy with that as we jump to the back of the green. Again, Thurman Shreel, I believe here. Again, Thurman is a senior. Um, so this should, will be his last last round of high school golf. Let's see if he can end it uh, with a bang. That's right. Beautifully played there. Yeah, nice shot for Thurman there. And finally, Curtis. Curtis, yeah, Curtis Crimmins from Mason there. Yeah, being told he is, Curtis here is here in two, so this is his eagle bid. Oh, really good there. Very well played. Again, you see the difficulty of that shot, though. He landed that just perfectly in the fringe, trickles on the green and runs whatever that is, four foot pass, so. Difficult to get stopped close to that hole there. You can almost see a little ridge in that camera view there where it kind of sets up on a little ridge. Um, it's probably a little exaggerated. I don't feel like that slope's there is, is that much of a slope that it looks like on camera, but it is a little slope there for sure. Again, we saw Alex Diesel hit that beautiful approach from around 100 yards from the left rough. So this is his attempt for a birdie. I'm gonna call it Austin. You are. I am. And he's gonna make it. Never got started online. Yeah. broadcast location starting to blow some of our <laughs> paperwork around so I don't know if all this stuff blows away I, we're in trouble Austin. You haven't memorized all the names yet? <laughs> um, not I'm yet. I'm a step ahead I guess. I guess no, you I'm are. Just kidding. You have more of a mental capacity than me I guess. Uh, Michael Sargent here from Troy. I in this six footer. Right. Yeah, power <laughs> lip out there. Again, we've been watching that putt all day, and we saw one, someone chip in from the back of the green, but I don't remember very many putts going in at all from back there. All right, Curtis Crimmins here. Again, Curtis is a sophomore, so a couple more opportunities to qualify for the state. This will be a birdie putt for him. as it just slides by. Alex Diesel for his par attempt here. Good 
cut there by Alex. Finally, last player in the group, Thurman Shreel. Be a nice up and down to finish off his high school cool high school career here. <laughs> that one to go all right so I'm being told Marine's got somebody else for us here but we're gonna go ahead let's watch uh, Michael knock this one in before we go to Marine but get ready Marine we're coming your way after Michael holds this short little putt take it away Marine all right we've got two more beavers here Will Creighton who's a sophomore and Jack Faulkner, who's a freshman. And guys, how'd it go today? Um, it went all right. I played really good at the last run at G-Walk, had a 78. I was throwing darts on the greens, but today I just didn't feel like it. I was almost playing like Clutch Mikey. I had a 92. Um, wasn't, wasn't feeling the best, but like the second shot I feel like was difficult today because if you didn't have a good second shot, you were in a bad shot with the greens. Green, greens were rolling today like a solid 13, but I mean, if you're on the green, you're not you're not rolling the rolling the rock. But I mean, I'll give it to Jack. What do you have to say about today? Yeah, Jack, were you rolling the rock? I'm not even sure what that means. Um, <laughs> yes, I was uh, rolling the rock slightly better than Will. Um, but um, same thing that he said that if you hit a shot 30 feet short of the pin, it might roll all the way through and you might have a downhill chip. But that's not super easy to get up and down. So how were, how was the course for you today, playing um, wise? Course was really pure actually. It was just unfortunate that they rolled the greens last night. Kind of really screwed me today, but um, had unlucky, lucky shots coming down the stretch. And I feel like the holes through 14 and 17 weren't the best for today. Um, but although course was playing pretty pure. Well, coming out to Heatherwood's always a great time. Course is always in great shape, especially today. Greens are rolling pretty fast, so golf is golf. So how long have you been playing golf? Um, well, I'm 14, so probably since I was five, six. What made you interested in golf? Um, my dad, who I beat all the time, but my dad. But How about for you, how long have you been playing golf? Um, I've been playing golf for like four to five years. Um, my grandpa got me into it. Um, main sports baseball, but we just started playing golf, having a good time. Um, although, I mean, at least I beat Clutch Mikey today. I mean, one stroke's one stroke at the end of the day. I guess so. He's a legend here at Heatherwood now, Clutch Mikey, for these regionals, right? All right. All right, guys. Well, thanks so much. All the best to you. Go Beavers. Hope we see you next year. Thanks, Maureen. All right, we got to, looks like we got some play on number 18. As kids are coming down nine, I've got some people, it looks like someone almost chipped in in front of us here, Austin. Yeah, I believe that was Zach Hartley from Centerville. Yeah, Zach's plus two for the day is what we're showing, so he's actually in the running here. If he could have chipped in for birdie there, he got to plus one. I mean, he's right there on the number, I think, that's going to get into a playoff. Um, we'll, go, we'll go split screen here, and I've got, uh, looks like Alex Hyde there on the bottom left on number nine with his approach shot in. Looks like that was Aiden Bruder that just came up there and tapping in. Yeah, it looks like we have Anthony Moran next to play from Loveland from long left to the green, or on the green, but a very long putt from the left side of the green. Anthony currently at three over through 15. And then Max Gustafson just short here. And the friends I'm assuming Max could, well, Max could definitely be there in two. Oh. Really good run there by Anthony. Long range, he's gonna have some work left to do, but burn the edge. Yeah, you see it just keep trickling away there also too, how quick it gets down there by that hole. Let's pan over in the bunker here. Um, Jack Richardson, a 
the other side of the bunker here, just short. Again, nice angle up here on number nine, for him, plenty of green to work with. And if he hits a solid shot, he should be able to get this fairly close. Yeah, and apologize to Luke Grillet on 18. He was in the gray hoodie there. That no, he put a hoodie on. Yeah, he? he did. <laughs> this would be Aiden Bruder from just over the green on 18. Uh, Jack just ran his through the green again. Pretty typical result that we've seen on number nine today. Again, you can see the speed there on number 18 as the ball just keeps running down toward the hole. Number nine again, Max Gustafson. Caught that a little, I guess, thin and ran it through the green. Alex Hyde here, as he's got putter. Looks like he's either on the fringe or just in the rough, so he's chosen to go with putter up the hill. Again, this is the angle you'd want on number nine. Um, could be aggressive with it, don't have to worry about it running too far past the hole. In the top right, we have Anthony Moran from Loveland again. He saw his first putt from long range. Just burns the edge on his second one. Like Max has taken something with not a lot of loft on it, so not sure what if he was just trying to bump that into the the rough and let it trickle on, but he got a lot of golf ball there. So Anthony Moran from Loveland tap in there on 18. Next up, play Aiden Bruder from Talawanda, and then Charlie Shank from Moeller on number nine. Aiden pours that one in. Zach Hartley for his up and down here on 18. Zach gets that one to go. Nice finish there for Zach. And that was Max Guffson there. Max is having a tough time getting it close to the hole here on number nine. Max is a sophomore, so he's going to have a couple more chances to come back and do this. Um, Jack Richardson in this group, who you see uh, taking the flags to Cal, the sophomore also. Uh, Charlie Shank from Moeller there in the yellow is a junior, and Alex Hyde is the only senior in this group. So um, three of these young men are going to have the opportunity to be back at the districts next year. This is Jack Richardson coming down the hill um, 15 feet or so, and... Mm. <laughs> Again, just burns the lip like we've seen numerous times before. And again, Max Gustafson here. Haven't seen many go in from this angle today, and another one just trickles by on the low side. Last player playing this group, Alex I Sr. from Oakwood. Got, uh, let's call it five feet here. This will probably be it for Alex's high school golfing career here. This would be a good way to finish it by knocking this putt in. Ah, and nice he does. One. All right. Taking a look at hole number 18, we have Michael Stagnaro, Ben Isman, Brogan Cambria, and Brody Seats. All right, Austin, a quick look at the leaderboard as uh, Brogan gets ready to play. Uh, Mason has posted 32 over in the clubhouse. So there's our first score. 
first number to shoot for. Again, as we're just starting to get uh, players um, from the second group, second team wave into uh, into play here. As we pan over here, this is, uh, I believe that's Ben Isom from Lakota East. Again, they're in the, what do you think, Austin, 120 yard range there, something like that? Yeah, maybe a little bit farther back, but something in that range, 125 yeah. maybe to that whole location. Again, they've got themselves again uphill into the wind, a solidly struck shot. I mean, you can attack this pin, although it's hard to get at. I mean, it's, it's, it's doable. Yeah, for sure. And again, all four of these these four teams that are coming up 18 now are the top four teams on the leaderboard. Again, that would be Brogan, Cambria. Coming into 18. Again, didn't see it on the green. I think it came up a little bit short. Again, this whole plane uphill and, and into the wind, I mean, sometimes you can get fooled down there and where that they're playing their approach shots from Austin. It might not be feeling the wind as much as it is up by the green. Um, I would say that's probably what happened to Brogan right there. Yeah, for sure. And Ben Isom, for sure. They both look like they came up a little bit short there. You can see Michael Stagnero from St. X uh, just short in Brody's seats. Looks like he's found the green. It kind of shows you the difficulty of that hole today. Again, attacking that pin, you got to carry that bunker, that grass swale there. And uh, you can play it out to where Brody did there and not have to take those on. But if you do, you've left yourself with that long downhill putt that's tough to get close to the hole. So I mean, that's kind of the difficulty of number 18 today. And uh, i, I got to believe it's playing as one of the more difficult holes. Oh, uh, without a doubt. And again, when you're looking at the leaderboard and the team leaderboard, know that uh, the people finishing on um, 16, 17, and 18 are more difficult finishing holes than uh, 7, 8, and 9. Um, so, you know, if you see um, some of these teams here, which is St. X, East, Springboro, and Bellbrook, got a little tougher finishing holes than Elder, Moeller, Oakwood, and Tip. As we're starting to see more and more scores post, I think, um, well, it looks like Brogan must have went over and not short. He's got fooled by the camera <laughs> shot there. Sure did. He's going to have a tough shot he here. Does. He's in that uh, tall native grass area behind the green there that you just got to take a whack at it and hope for the best. And he's hit a really nice golf shot there. It's not going to stay on the green, but um, all things considered, well played. Yeah, he got it back below the hole, so uh, should have a relatively straightforward shot from there. You can see there Ben Isom from Lakota East on the very right edge of your screen, coming up from short right. Looks like that might have just trickled past. I'm not entirely <laughs> sure. You know, Austin, the crowd's so large around the green now. We we were able to see the green and see how the results <laughs> are from our broadcast location earlier, but now there's just too many people there. As you can see from above, there's we're kind of off to the the right side of that, and that group of people right there are just they're blocking our view. Don't uh. they know? <laughs> Don't they know we're over here trying to watch? That's right. Uh, all right, this is Brogan getting ready to come onto the green here. Pretty straightforward chip shot here. Should be able to get this pretty close. It looks like, like he went a long, little long there. Yeah, I gave that one a, a run. He's going to have a downhill right to left or coming back. And again, five players on each team, four scores counting. If you're looking at Springboro's score right now of plus one, Brogan's score is not counting at this point. Um, so uh, Brogan struggles in this hole at this point wouldn't affect the team. You're looking at Brody seats here from Bellbrook. Long yeah. range here. And again, all these putts now are important for the team play, right? Uh, Bellbrook 
just outside of Lakota East for that third qualifying spot. Again, Brody's score isn't going to count for them today. He's had he struggled a little bit today, and um, you know, it'll be nice to see him finish strong, but it hasn't been his best day for sure. Um, but he's got some good experience here in district play, and um, only being a freshman, you know, being in front of cameras and and the big crowds and everything today, it'd be a good experience for him to take forward and uh, use it to to build on his career. All right, looking down here, this has Ben Isom. Ben is a senior um, from Lakota East, and again, right now, if things ended the way they are, uh, Lakota East would be in that third qualifying spot. As I look at the leaderboard real quick here, Ben's score is counting, so um, this is an important putt for Lakota East. It would be um, great if he could make it. <laughs> That's for sure. Um, yeah, I would assume this is his par attempt here. Looks like it's going to be a little bit too far to the left there. It's as yeah, it goes left. Yeah, he never got it started high enough. And you can see the speed right there. Is that just one more turn and one more turn down the hill? Um, but he's left himself a nice straight uphill putt here, so he shouldn't have any trouble with that one. And finally, broken camber. No, it looks like it's going to be um, Michael Stignero from St. X. Can St. X at this point, 15 over, Lakota East. 16 over. So again, this is important as he just catches the hole with that one. Um, Bellbrook at 21 over. Uh, Moeller at 27 and Elder at 29. Um, so we're starting to get a better idea how things are playing out here. Um, again, taking the top three teams and those top three teams um, get to move forward to the state championship next week. Oh, Brody. Seeds pours that one in. Nice way to finish off there. Sorry, I think I cut you off there, but. No, <laughs> you're good. I'm just rambling on over here. <laughs> That's what we're supposed to do, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, again, but trying to give everyone an idea of what we're looking at here. It's going to it's gonna be an interesting here final hour or so of golf as we try to figure out what three teams move forward. Ooh. Well stroked there. Again, tough to get that one high enough at that pace. Again, as I've said numerous times today, three teams and then three individuals not on those qualifying teams are going to get to go to um, Ohio State University Golf Club next week and play in the state championship on the Scarlet Course. Again, that's going to occur on Friday and Saturday of next week. I was talking to Steve Jurek earlier, Austin, and it doesn't look like the weather's going to be great for that. That's perfectly aligned for the <laughs> state, state tournament. Yeah. No question. <laughs> state tur state yeah. golf tournament in Ohio, you, you're not supposed to have 80 degree days. That's right. <laughs> All right, let's look at the uh, individual leaderboard real quick here and just kind of get an idea of who would possibly be in those three spots. Right now, Casey Morgan at even par would be the first player not on a qualifying team. Um, Bobby Horseman at one over and Aiden Standifer at one over would be Actually, Lakota East is in there right now, aren't they? I believe so. Yeah, so Aiden Stanford would be in the second position there. And then um, we'd have a tie right now with Zach Hartley, um, Aiden Kennedy, Marshall Morency for that third qualifying, third qualifying spot. So that's where we stand right now as we look on number nine. Um, this would be Mark Makris from Moeller. which should be his second to number nine green. I'm looking intently. And again, definitely reachable. Um, and as we've talked about today, you probably want to be a little bit long if you can be. Um, I see people ducking in front of me here on number 18. So it looks like we've got a group coming up number 18 also. As uh, David, I'm sorry, Will Real plays his shot on uh, number nine. Yeah, you can see right Chen there from Oakwood. 
sizing up his shot on nine. See these young men walking up nine fairway there as we go split screen here. And again, um, teams on 18 here. Jack Rock coming up there. Again, fighting it out for the final positions here. Again, Springboro in, in good shape to take that um, qualifying spot. But St. X, Lakota East, Bellbrook, um, those three teams and there's a couple more there too but three teams are, are in the running for the final two spots yeah the score has just been updated here <laughs> as, I, as I speak and St. X and Lakota East are both now at 18 over par uh, Bellbrook has they're in now at 21 over par Moeller at 27 and Elder at 29 aren't totally out of it yet um, but again as we're looking forward here I, I'd take I'd take 25 over and, and sit in the clubhouse and watch it happen, Austin. Yeah, that that's seems to be a good number for sure. All right, as we're looking back down number nine here, I believe that is going to be Colin Joshua um, from Elder getting ready to play in here at number nine green. And again, we have Jason Maraca there. Uh, you can see there for St. X, looks like he's short right of 18 green. Again, he's on the preferable side as far as going uphill at that pin. Um, I believe Jack Rott's going to be, looks like he's short of that bunker, or maybe just in the beginning of that bunker, short of the green. Yeah, just in the beginning of it. Looks like that one's a little bit too hard. I'll have some 20, 30 feet, if not a chip, coming back. Yeah, and again, right now, Springboro at two over par in first place. St. X at 18 over. Springboro has quite a bit of a buffer here to to play as uh, Jason Makura kind of hit his chip shot a little bit heavy, left it short there. As the, I'm not even sure the cameraman was aware that he played there, Austin, as he's panned <laughs> into the side. But, yeah, we saw him play that shot there. And... Um, you can see David Gregory there from Bellbrook in the purple and Logan Spag Nolo from Lakota East in the white jacket. I think got another player that's caught the longer grass here, long of 18. It's kind of a guess here, Austin, right? Well, how that's going to come out of there. Kind of have to make an educated guess about where it's going to land. And again, he can. I mean, it's going to be a tough time to get it close, but he'd almost have to land it perfectly, just short in the rough or just in the fringe, and just let it trickle down to the hole to get it real close. Yeah, it looks like he's he landed that about 10 feet or so on the green. Um, but again, he's got it, you know, off the green on the other side, but uh, much easier shot from there. Uh, like you said, you have to almost risk leaving it short to get that one close. Yeah. Again, Bell Book right now is in the first position out of qualifying. So, again, all those shots around the green right now could add up to something as we uh, go split screen here. I believe this is right chin with the bunker shot there on number nine. Top right, we have Jack Rott from Springboro. Looks like his bunker shot just went through the fringe. But he's got about 25, 30 feet here on 18. Looks like he ran that one by a little bit more than he would have liked for sure. And Mark Makris getting ready to come up on number nine as we jump back to... Again, David Gregory there in the purple shirt, white pants. Looks like Jason 
Maraca played. You can see his ball there is about three or four feet away. Could be Colin Joshua from Elder coming up there. And again, here's David Gregory. Pretty well played there. Looked like he got it into a little bit of the longer rough. He's got about four feet there. That would be Logan Speg Nulio. Will Real on the bottom left. Coming across the green on number nine. Good angle here. Uh, well judged for pace. Just left it a little bit out to the right. But pretty good effort on his part. I believe Jack Rott from Springboro is going to be next to play here on the top right of your screen on 18. Jack Rott with six feet or so breaking from his left to right. Nice putt there by Jack to finish off his round. Jason Maraca there. Just left that one a little bit low, but he taps in on 18. As we saw Mark Makers come up there again. Something in that putt they have a hard time reading, Austin. They just keep rolling it right by the <laughs> edge. This is uh, going to be right chin. I've seen some made from this angle. He leaves it a little bit out to the right, but good pace. You can see the difference in going up the hill there. As far as judging the pace is um, coming from the other direction. And that was Logan Spagnul Spagnulo. Just missing there. But he taps in. And lastly, David Gregory, on the top right of your screen. Joshua here, straight up the hill from, hard to tell the distance from this camera angle, I'd say 15 feet. I almost feel like calling this one, Austin. <laughs> oh, I thought he made it. As he leaves it just on the edge. Will Reel to finish up. And all the players in this group are seniors on number nine, so... Um, Looks like this might be uh, their last hole in their high school career. So. Mark Rick. Makris here to finish up. Again, Muller not totally out of it. Um, but they need some good play on their part to get in there. Again, score right now is plus 18. Take that third spot and Muller at plus 28. So have to make some birdies on their part. Um, again, they've got time to do it. Three players still on the course and some easy holes on that side. Uh, to get posted, so not totally out of it, but uh, again, Mark just needs to pull this one in and then see how his teammates do as he just leaves it below the hole. All right, as these young men go ahead and shake hands at the conclusion of play for them. Head into the scoring area, turn the scorecards in, and, and then we'll get an update on that. As we look down number 18, we 
believe that's Brody Miller from Bellbrook coming in here. Brody hits a beautiful shot in there, about six or eight feet, as I can tell from my camera angle. That's uh, the one we've been looking for all day. He just fires it right in there at the hole. Well done on his part. Looking here, that's Charlie Fish we see there in the blue. Charlie's got it up here pretty far. Um, probably got about 80 yards or so to the green where he's at right now, and a decent angle at it. Again, coming out, looks like coming out of the rough, so be tough to control the spin, but uh, again, good angle. I would think it, you know, he, he should be aiming maybe just a little bit left of the hole as he's playing it, right from our angle, and try to hit it the right distance and leave himself maybe about 10 foot or something. And he's hit it along that line, but just a little bit long as it rolls through the green into the back fringe, but not a bad play for Charlie there. Again, these are the teams that are Ving for uh, position for next week's state championship and looking at individually Charlie Fish at plus one right now Ian Cambria Gavin Augustine Casey Morgan are one under par so Charlie's pretty close to to, to them so a birdie and a couple mistakes from those groups he could actually finish in a muscle position but uh, right now team wise it's probably more important to him and his team uh, St. X is at 18 over par Lakota East at 19 over par in the second and third positions. Bellbrook at 21. So they're right there. As you see, Brody Miller fires a fantastic shot in there. Could be huge for the Bellbrook Eagles as far as moving forward if he could make a putt there. Looks like we've got uh, Ian Cambria just short in the uh, fairway here. A little pitch shot there. You can see the angle. He's probably got to just take it over the finger of rough there if he wants to get it close. And again, taking it on that line and running away from the the hole there, pretty tough shot because he's so close to getting any spin on it. Um, he's hit it 20 foot pass. Again, spring broke quite a bit of a cushion here. Um, they're in good position to move forward. Uh, right now, they are um, five over par as a team. Uh, we'll go split screen here at the bottom. We've got Owen White um, there in the red shirt as we look at the, the play up here on the I'm sorry, bottom left is Owen White, upper right, and we're looking at Charlie Fish there. Again, Charlie Fish is, um, putt could be pretty important for them. Again, they are at 18 over, and um, he's got it in there in two for a birdie putt. Um, Owen White here with a nice chip shot, but you can see the difficulty of that is it just runs away past the hole. Again, Charlie Fish down the hill here for birdie, probably, oh, let's call it 30 feet. Looks like less than that on the camera angle. As on the number nine down at the bottom, it will be Henry Mullen playing his chip shot. He's played it beautifully. Yeah, great shot there by Henry. And again here, Charlie Fish for his birdie attempt. Looks like it's going to be a little low there. All these putts for St. X, Lakota East, Bellbrook, extremely important um, as far as who gets to move forward to next week's state championship. As we look back over on number nine, um, Will Dalton. Um, very, very difficult shot to get close. Um, tries to run it through the rough and on the green and just leaves it into the rough. That's the risk right there. If you want to get it close, you, you risk leaving it in the spot and left himself a difficult shot even now where he is. Again, top right, Nick Collins. Oh, my. <laughs> I really thought that was going to go in. And again, those putts came right now, Cody East, um, 19 over. That could have been a huge putt for them since they're only two spots ahead of Bellbrook, who um, Brody Miller has stuffed it in there. Um, I believe this is where we even was shortened to three. This would be for par for um, Ian here. And again, Ian Cambria in the top right for Springboro. And uh, Luke Mead for Elder, bottom left. 
yeah, players just not seeing the break. They're all coming up a little bit low. Just goes to show you how close Brody Miller hit it from the fairway. Charlie Fish looks like he's got about, nope, it looks like we're cutting over to him right now. No, he's just practice putty. Charlie Fish has got it about four or five feet, and Brody Miller stuffed it in there for birdie even closer than oh, that. Wow. So, um, again, big swing right here could happen between uh, Lakota East, St. Xavier, and Bellbrook if uh, Brody was to make birdie here and, and one of the other two makes a bogey. And Charlie struggles to get it in the hole there as Owen White tries to finish up on number nine. Looks like Ian Cambria will be next to play here on the top right just from three or four feet for his bogey save. Henry Mullen finishing up on number nine. Henry a senior. This is Luke Mead also a senior. Ian taps in for a six on 18, and Brody Miller from Billbrook for a birdie. Yeah, beautiful shot from the fairway there from Brody. Just stuffed it in there right on top of the hole, and again, could be huge for them as far as the team goes. They're right now just two spots out of the qualifying for that third spot. And yeah, he goes and birdie. makes a buddy, birdie there. Um, great way to finish for him. Again, Charlie Fish for his five on 18. Owen White taps in on nine. So as good group concludes play, as do, well, both groups, nine and 18 are both uh, finishing up here now, shaking hands. Again, as they do and walk off the green, let's quick look at the leaderboard here. Springboro plus five, and again, in good position. And here's where the excitement comes in here. St. Xavier at plus 18, Lakota East at plus 19. Bellbrook at plus 22. So those three teams right there fighting for two spots. Again, individually. Um, really depends on how what happens with those three teams <laughs> before we even know. Yeah. So once we'll let this play out a little bit here and then we'll 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 speculate on who's in or who's not out um, as far as individually goes. Like I said, Spring Bro looks to be pretty good, so you can just take all those guys out as far as that goes. But um, Casey Morgan from Elder looks like he's in a good spot to move forward. Uh, I would say Aiden Standiford right now, if he could finish it one over, would be in a good spot to move forward. And then we'll just have to see what happens. If Lakota East is out, then, you know, um, Bobby Horseman is in. But if Lakota East ends up being in, then that changes some different things for, like, Zach Hartley and... Um, Luke Colley and things like that. So just kind of have to see how it all plays out here team-wise, and then we'll figure out the individuals after that. But looking at team scores, Ian Cambria, Gavin Augustine, Casey Morgan, all playing great today, all at one under par. All right. And you can see here... Um, guessing um, that that's going to be Mike Schutte. It's hard to tell. Um, but I think that's Mike Schutte from Elder. Far, I'm not even sure where he is. <laughs> I think that's it. I think that's the tee box for nine. Oh, yes. Yeah. That makes yeah. sense. It now. was confusing me a little bit. That off the yeah. set there. There's a tent. Must be some people out there watching golf today. So, yeah, he's probably a tee box on nine coming down the hill there. Um, again, this group's going to be Mike Schutte, Aiden Kennedy, Eli Rhodes, Austin Seinfringe. Seinfring, sorry. Um, and again, Elder, Moeller, Oakwood, and Tip. And again, there is the statue of Tommy Boy. Some, probably some girls for tomorrow's uh, 
district tournament. Probably could get some practice in here today. Again, we will be uh, broadcasting live the district tournament tomorrow. Um, start at 10 o'clock as long as weather cooperates. We tried to start at 10 today, but got bumped back a half hour. So we'll see what happens in the morning. But uh, yeah, uh, girls will be doing the same thing we're doing here with the boys, Division One girls tomorrow. So if you want to maybe pop us on at work and <laughs> watch what's going on out here, or better yet, come on out and watch the play um, tomorrow morning and into the afternoon. Yeah, it looks like we've had those last two groups have finished up on uh, 9 and 18. Those scores were entered at least by the officials off the green. I don't know if they've actually been finalized inside yet, but Springboro at six over now. I believe Ian Cambria um, is in the clubhouse with an even par round of 71. St. X, um, 19 over. Lakota East, 20 over. And Bellbrook, 23 over. Uh, after those last scores were just posted. Yeah, and important uh, to know when they're posting their scores, we're seeing holes every three holes, so they're actually posting scores for 18, 17, and 16. So, you know, even when we saw Birdie Miller make a birdie there on 18, we don't really know what he did on 17 and 16. We're just kind of speculating at that point. All right, as we look back down the fairway here, this looks like Aiden Coswell from Bellbrook. Um, looks like he's got it on the green, just, sh just short. Nope, oh, Austin's pointing out that that's probably black again, the shadows. Yeah, so that's going to be Walker Wood for Lakota East. And again, he's got it on the green, just short. Uh, so he's got about a 20-footer, but it is a birdie putt for him. It's going to be Luke Colley from St. X. Next to play again, about the same distance, 120, 130, or yeah, maybe even is, 140 or this so. This is about the location that Brody Miller stuffed it from in the group before. So you can definitely attack this pin from there. And let's see how, uh, let's see how Luke does. Yeah, back into the wind, um, so he's going to play a little bit longer, but that does usually cause the ball to stop a little bit quicker. So even though the pin position is pretty tough here on 18, um, the limited green to work with um, coming from the fairway should be help, helpful having back into the wind, although it does make the shot much harder. <laughs> Again, it looks like his ball caught on the bunker face and looked like it jumped back down in the bunker. As we see a ball rolling up there just short, um, trying to see. I can see who that was that hit that shot. Um, I can tell you it was probably either Bradley Hinkle or Aiden well, Bradley, Coswell. Bradley's <laughs> going to be on the, the left side of our screen there, so that would have been Aiden Coswell coming up just short. Bradley looks like he's pretty close to the, uh, the uh, hazard there, but I think he's in play. Yeah, I saw a ball come down after he hit. It looks like he might have had some tree trouble with some overhanging limbs, so he's just short of the short of the bunker and one of the grass bunkers, I believe. Um, so no one stuffed it like Brody Miller no, did in the last group, but. Um, All right, so as these young men walk up toward 18 green, we're gonna kick it to Maureen for a quick interview and hopefully get back here and watch them enjoy the play. Got Anthony Moran, who's a senior, and Casey Eversall, who's a junior. They're both from Loveland. And how'd it go for you today? Went all right. I mean, I hit a lot of good shots. You know, hopefully I, I could have made some more birdies down the stretch. But overall, it's good, good day, good season. Yeah. Okay, because Casey's saying you had a really good day today. Well, you know, I mean, it could have been better, but I'm always just happy to get encouragement from this kid. You know, he's really just the heart and soul of this team, and I'm just really trying to, you know, do my best to support him. What makes you the heart and soul of the team? No, I just love supporting our guys. You know, I'm really happy to be a part of this team. Just really happy. So how'd the course play for you today? Uh, it was nice. I mean, Heatherwood does a great job. Uh, all their events really, really well maintained. I mean, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Any special strategy you thought about before you started to play? Uh, I mean, really just hit nukes, you know, drain putts. And yeah, I mean, that's really all you need at the end of the day, truly. Yeah. Are you agreeing with that? I agree. I agree a lot. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I wish you all the best. I hope that you come up on that leaderboard and that you get to go on to states. All right. Congratulations, guys. Thanks for being here. All right, thanks, Marie. As we jump back to the play here on 18 again, 
Very important to moving forward here. This is uh, Luke Colley, just short of the green in two. So this will be a birdie chip. Looking to get this close up and down and make par. Yeah, and tough you, angle from there. Yeah, and you see what's happened most of the day. It gets going down that slope, and because you're so close to the green from that angle, you can't really get any spin on it, so it just it just runs away. Bradley Hinkle next to play for the Panthers. It's coming a little bit back uphill, but still a pretty tough shot here. About as good as you can do, really. I mean, yeah, and you see it run away again. Bradley had to have a decent lie there to uh, play it up in the air like that again. That's really the only chance you got there is to get it a high lofted lob flop shot or something, <laughs> some sort in there to get it to land softly and and just roll down by the hole. And it's so risky to play that, especially uh, you know when all your shots are important. You're looking at the back of Aiden Coswell there. From Elder, or sorry, not Elder, Bellbrook. Getting my purples confused. I believe it's going to be Walker Wood. And it's Walker's second shot in there, so this is a birdie putt for Walker. Again, I know I keep mentioning this, but let's team competition wise. Um, St. X plus 19, Lakota East plus 20, Bellbrook plus 23. This would be a birdie putt for Lakota East. It's come up a little bit short there, but just the tap in left for Walker's par. Yeah, again, giving that putt the respect it deserves there, Austin. That's right. As the hole runs away six, eight feet. Um, could have been disastrous for him. He'll, he'll take the He'll take the four, as I think most people would on this tee today, as there's um, to that pin location. It looks like uh, Bradley Hinkle's next to play here. Uh, Bradley's eyeing this putt. No, I, actually, I think. Uh, Luke Colley's going to play next. I see Luke from the back of the green here. Yeah, so Luke Colley getting ready to come up from about 25 feet or so. Again, we've seen this putt a lot today and scared the hole a couple times, but no one's made it. Bang. <laughs> that was the reverse jinx right there. No one's made it as he yeah. pours it in. Easy. Again, could be a huge, I think that was probably a par putt for uh, Luke. Could be a huge putt for St. X as a team. Again, here we got Aiden Coswell. This is definitely going to be a huge putt for, for Aiden and Bellbrook again. They are three strokes out right now of uh, tying for that third qualifying spot. So. I think everyone's missed this putt on the low side, so you, you got to get it outside of the hole on the right a couple inches here, I think, would be the perfect line and just let it die into the hole. Yeah, for sure. Started off on a good line, Austin. And right in the hole. Great putt there. See what happens when you listen to me? Ooh. All right, we'll go split screen here real quick. Um, so we got groups finishing up on 9 and 18 at this point. I believe that was Eli Rhodes chipping from just over the green. Um, but top right next to play, Bradley Hinkle for his, I think, par par putt here. He was just short of the green, I think, in two. So this chipped it up here pretty nicely. Yeah, and Austin Sigfring from tip in the bottom left. Bradley just missing that a little low, but he'll tap in. Again, Springboro in good position to move forward at this point. I know Bradley was one under for the day, so a disappointing way for him to finish. Um, Back over to Aiden Kennedy, bottom left from Moeller. Seen very many balls short from no, outside all not. day. Or definitely not. And again, this is the 
group, Mike Schutte, Aiden Kennedy, Eli Rhodes, and Austin Sigfring on number nine as they finish up. Eli still rocking the beanie. Just taps that in. told this putt for Mikey or Mike Shooty here is for Eagle on number nine. A wonderful approach there and there for Mike. Judge for pace, just uh, a little bit out to the right. All right. Again. After these guys are done, they will show their hands in the air. Austin Seafring from Tippecanoe. That slightly to the right. And Aiden Kennedy. Pretty good chip shot from just short of the green to keep this one short of the hole, honestly. Hard to tell exactly how far he has left here, but certainly would think it's inside five feet. And gets that one well to go. Well done. All right, so as play continues, Maureen, I hear you've got someone else, so let's cut a view for another quick interview. Jack Rott, he's a senior. And Jack, how did it go today? Um, it went all right. Um, I really couldn't get any birdies in the cup today, but made 12 pars and nothing bigger than a bogey. So walked out with a 77, and I know my teammates played well today. So You were here last year. This is your home course. How do you like playing here? I love it here. Uh, I left NCR to come play here, and uh, I'm out here with a good group of guys, and I wouldn't trade away for the world. How does having the experience of playing last year here and then you went on to state, right? How's that gonna, you, how's that gonna help you for this year? Uh, it's a huge advantage. Obviously, Scarlet is one of the hardest golf courses I've ever played. So um, being able to go back out there and know what each hole does is a huge advantage for all of us. You've been a golfer for quite a long time. Give us some of your background in, in golf. Um, it's really the only sport I've played long term. My dad got me into it when I was really young and I've played competitively ever since middle school and it's just my thing. It's your thing, and it's probably going to be your thing after high school, right? Yeah, um, I'm planning on playing golf after college. Uh, got a recruiter that's going to help me try to get a scholarship and continue my education and play golf. What's the one thing you would give as a tip to someone who's not had as much experience playing at Heatherwood? Uh, the game's 90% mental. Um, you got to reset yourself before every hole, whether it's a big score or a low score. You want to get up there and just try to make the best swing. Well, we wish you all the best in Columbus. Thanks for spending some time with us. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Marines. We come back to the action here on number 18. Yeah. Yeah, Robert Gerwin hitting a beautiful yeah. shot in here, I believe. Woo! Yeah, also, Sorry, that might have been C.J. Scoey. I couldn't tell. Yeah, that looks like that was CJ throwing one in there. Again, all these are important here. This is the final players in the, the team competition we've been talking about at this point. Lakota East is now plus 20. St. X is up to plus 21 with Bellbrook at plus 24. And again, 
Uh, CJ Scoey for Bellbrook has just thrown a shot in there, probably, I don't know, Austin, what do you think, 12 feet? Or, oh, well, no, maybe. closer than that. <laughs> maybe looks closer. closer than that on that <laughs> angle. From here, it looked a little farther away. But, yeah, that looks like that could be six, eight feet. Um, I know the camera angle makes it look closer than that. It might be closer than that. Um, and, again, so things can change quickly here. Again, we're going to get scores for three holes, not just this hole. So, um, you know, it's it's not unheard of for a four or five stroke swing to to you know happen as we're we're watching the golf. All right, this is Gavin Augustine here again. Spring Bros in pretty good position right now um, at plus nine um, to move forward. I, I, we can go ahead and call that Austin. There, the Spring Bros Panthers are going to be playing in Columbus next week. Uh, the question just now is from Lakota East, St. X, and Bellbrook, which one of those, out of those three schools, which two of those are going to be playing with them and joining them at uh, um, Ohio State Golf Club next Friday and Saturday? Yeah, for sure. You can see, you saw Gavin earlier, uh, Marcus Ball. He's got a pretty long putt here. Um, from across the green there, you can see Bobby Horseman from Lakota East there in the all black. Um, not entirely, sh entirely sure where his, where he's going to be putting from. So you can see C.J. Scoey there in the purple. Uh, his ball was the close one inside 10 feet or so there. Uh, but I believe yeah, Gavin Augustine will be first to play. Um, he's got a long putt. Yeah, I got to begin to g estimate yeah. how long. <laughs> and again, that that pin's not there very often on day-to-day -day play here. And, and although Gavin plays here quite a bit, I would venture to guess he hasn't had this putt very often. <laughs> no, not unless he had it last year, which I assume the pin was in a similar spot. Um, but again, just one you're looking to get down there somewhere in inside six feet or so would be a great putt. See how far away that was, how firm we hit that. And uh, it's still going to come up a little bit short, but a fantastic putt from that distance. <laughs> yeah, yeah, inside three feet is, is really good from there. And again, look at an individual leaderboard. Uh, Gavin is tied uh, at one under par. Austin Kennedy from Moeller has finished at one under par. So um, pretty safe to say Austin Kennedy has taken one of the um, – three individual qualifying spots because it doesn't look like Moeller's going to make it as a team. Um, they're going to be outside of the top three. So Austin Kennedy at one under is in for Moeller. Uh, Gavin Augustine at one under also and Casey Morgan at one under. And here we got Robert Gerwin from just the, I think he's in the fringe, just over the right side of the green here on 18. Pretty good spot to be putting from. And I know I keep mentioning it, Austin, but all these putts can be really important as far as moving forward. Yeah, I'm sure he would have liked to have gotten that one a little bit closer to the hole. He's got a little bit of work left to do here. Gavin moving his mark. I think Bobby Horseman's, yeah, he's putting from a very similar spot to Robert Gerwin was. Should have a really good idea of what this one's going to do. Very well done there. Oh, yeah, well judged there for Bobby. And again, the Depending on what happened on 16 and 17. Um, those putts can be huge. Again, CJ Scoey here again. I mean, he took, I mean, it looks like five feet or so. Yeah. Um, again, I think he's got to get it outside of the hole, Austin. Uh, just outside of the hole, an inch and just 
caress yeah. it down there and let it <laughs> yeah. fall over the edge. Yeah, we've seen pretty much everyone under read it from this line, but I mean, always coming from much longer. And again, he tried to play it firm and in the hole, and it just it just got away from him there. Again, he just made the choice to firm it in there, and it just moves too much from that side to, to be able to do that, I think, also. Yeah, it does. It looks like Robert Gerwin from St. X is going to be next to play here. Again, all these point putts can be important. Well stroke, good stroke there for Robert. All right. Not the score CJ wanted there after hitting no. that approach in there, but great shot in um, there. You know, avoided. Yeah, we'll, have to see how three putt, yeah. Yeah, we'll have to see how it plays out. Or, and maybe that putt mattered, maybe it didn't. We're going to know here in a few minutes after they get in and sign their scorecards as Gavin goes ahead and taps in yeah. here for a great two putt there on 18. All right, so we get a little better idea of how it all plays out team-wise here in the next few minutes as those scores get posted. And then once that happens, we'll be able to, uh, you know, identify – which players near the top of the individual leaderboard are on qualifying teams, and that'll give us a better idea of what three individuals not on qualifying teams are moving forward. So we'll go ahead. We still got play on the golf course right now. Um, some individuals are still out there, individual groups, along with uh, um, I'm not sure that group over there looks like they could be done here. But again, we got more play on the course here as we jump back to number nine. Looks like that's Eli. Vossard in the back bunker. Again, difficult shot here. Um, got it in a flat lie, Austin, but again, almost have to be played perfect to get this anywhere, um, you know, five, six, eight feet from the hole. And you can see he landed that just in the fringe and it runs away. But again, fantastic shot from there, really. I couldn't ask to do much better. Yeah, really good from that back bunker as our paper's flying. Yeah, we're getting to the point where we can almost memorize it now, though. <laughs> <laughs> Henry Mullen here. Um, I'm sorry, Joey Martin here. The graphic is wrong. This is Joey Martin from Oakwood um, playing up from that spot there. You can see Case Morgan fixing his pitch mark there for Elder. Uh, currently one under par through 15, which would be a in a qualifying position individually as Elder is currently T5 and looking like it might be, um, they might be a little bit too far back to advance as a team, but uh, Case in a good spot um, individually if he, has played the last couple holes solidly. Yeah, we do have some final scores posted, Austin, as you're talking there. St. X has posted plus 20. Lakota East has posted plus 22. Still waiting to see about Bellbrook what their final score is, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll know here shortly as they all go final as I'm speaking. Um, and we can tell you the teams that are qualifying for next week's state championship at this point as uh, we watch Case Morgan here. Again, could be important for Case because he is one of the individual qualifiers right now. I'm assuming he's probably there. Um, I don't know that I should assume, but in two shots or at least three. So up and down for par would be great for him. But team-wise, going to next week's state championship um, at the Ohio State University Golf Club. And they're going to be playing the Scarlet Course next week, so tough test of golf for these teams. But uh, Springboro has posted plus nine. St. Xavier has posted plus 20. And Lakota East has posted plus 22. So those three teams, Springboro, St. Xavier, Lakota East, are moving forward. 
Uh, Belbra comes up just short, unfortunately, um, at plus 24. So individually, we can look at the individual leaderboard now and get a better idea. Um, Aiden Kennedy is going to be an individual qualifier as we watch uh, Landon Harris there from Moeller um, putting from about 30 feet or so on number nine. Yeah, so Aiden Kennedy is in the clubhouse at minus one, so he's an individual qualifier. At this point, Case Morgan is minus one again, just finishing up on number nine here now as Landon Harris comes up. Very nice stroke there by Landon. And oh, oh just burns the edge. And looking at the leaderboard here at that point, the final individual qualifier would be Aiden Standifer um, at plus one. So, again, it's how we stand right now. We need to see if uh, what happens here with uh, Case Morgan once his score gets posted. But, Austin, we could be in a, a rare situation right here where we wouldn't have a playoff. I don't know that we've done one of these. We did it last year for five days and did three days already this week, and we had a playoff every uh, every time. But right now, looks like we uh, we might not have any overtime golf. I would be we very get home, surprised. We get to dinner early. <laughs> I'd be very we surprised. We get to dinner early tonight. <laughs> well, we very well could get to dinner ho get home and get to dinner early. Uh, that would be Joey Martin there from Oakwood, though. Uh, back to number nine, tapping in. Um, and again, Case Morgan here from Elder. Again, just want to make sure I keep saying it right. The, we're not seeing three holes, so he's got to post uh, seven, eight, and nine here. And at this point, he's minus one. Um, I, I sh when I say that, I mean, Aiden Stanford, he hasn't posted yet either, so he's still got some scores to get posted too. So, um, that's how it stands right now, but we've still got a little bit here before we before we go ahead and, and get to dinner early, Austin. We've got a little right. bit of, of work to be done on the golf course here. Obviously, Case lining this up and knows the importance of this putt. May not know exactly what it's for, but he knows that uh, he's in position here to play next week and wants to make sure he, he gives it his best effort. Yeah, should be breaking a little bit from his left to right. Um, not a ton, though. Um, not as much break here as we've been seeing on hole 18. A little bit flatter part of the green. But probably playing it around that left edge. He's going to try to die it in, maybe sneak it a little bit outside, but I don't really want to give the hole away. But Fine way to finish his round. And again, we'll know shortly once they sign the cards. and whether or not uh, he is an individual qualifier, but I think it looks like he's going to be. Yeah, looking at the group on 18 now, first group of individuals finishing on 18. This is the group of Aiden Walls, Austin, Nicholas, Aiden, Standifer, and Ethan Sunsdahl. You get Aiden Standifer here, important for him, um, as that is, um, I believe that's Marshall Morrency there. No, I'm sorry, in the long group. Uh, Nick, I know this is Aiden Stanford I see on the screen right here. I believe that was Austin Nichols, or Nicholas. I do, too. Yeah. yeah, that was Austin Nicholas there coming down again. Aiden Stanford here right now at plus one. Um, so definitely important for him, right, because we've got a score posted at plus two for Zach Hartley. So if Austin Stanford could get it into the clubhouse at plus one. Again, he's played 16, 17, and 18, three tough finishing holes, but if he could play those three at even par, um, he would be a qualifier. If he plays those three at one over, he's going to be in a playoff, and we're not going to dinner early. <laughs> <laughs> As we look here. Got a feeling. <laughs> <laughs> this would be Ethan Sunsdahl. From Greenville. Just had a little bit too much speed on it, but it had the right line. Aiden Walls here from Harrison. And it does look like Case Morgan has posted with a three under sixty eight, so a great playing for him it was for birdie on nine and he looks like he birdied seven as well so 
he will be advancing as uh, one Out of the individuals. Great Outstanding plan. round for Case. Again, Aiden Walls on camera here uphill, 25 feet or so. <laughs> Wow, really very good well roll. Done. Yes, very well done there. Good way to finish for him. Again, a senior. Unfortunately, not going to be uh, getting to play next week. So, never know. He, you know, he was three over um, through fifteen. He could have. He could have. Yeah, I well guess I might have spoke a little bit early there, but I don't know what that was for either. Yeah, who so. knows? That's right. I want to give him the benefit of the doubt. Right, you never so know. We, we, we're not in it for him <laughs> quite yet. Uh, Austin Nicholas here from Little Miami. And you can see Aiden uh, standing for there, just paying attention to everyone. Uh, every putt that's rolled by this shows you the importance of this putt for him. He's been um, watching everything intently, so I think he knows this is almost the same putt that C.J. Scoey had in the group before. And again, got to give the hole away, I think, Austin. Yeah, he certainly has to start this outside the hole. I um, mean, we saw CJ put Looks some pace behind it, and he and he still missed low. Um, so he's got to be playing this probably half a cup out. And very he very oh. well done. I almost called oh. that too early for him, <laughs> but, yeah, I thought it was going to be in the heart. You saw how quick it moved at the very end there. But So he did everything he could on this hole there from that point. So we'll see. Once he turns the scorecard in, how it ends up for him. But uh. yeah, back over Ethan Sunsdahl here uh, from Greenville. Ethan tapped in there. Austin Nicholas last to finish out here on 18. Austin, again, these group individual qualifiers. Um, I don't know if pressure is the right word, but you know they, it's all on them playing today, right? They know if they have a bad hold, their their teammates can't pick them up and and you know still get to state. So there's a little bit more on them individually they know that it's all up to them at this point so um, I don't know if you've ever been in that position or not but I, I would think it's a little bit tougher to some extent knowing that you don't have four other guys that can pick you up if you have a bad day yeah definitely definitely a little bit tougher but I mean there's also the aspect of you know when you're out when you are playing for a team you're you know obviously trying not to let your team down um, so it kind of goes both ways but um, you definitely don't have the luxury of you know, counting other scores and stuff like that. So, uh, but looking back up, number nine, this is going to be the group of Colin Babowski, Marshall, Morrency, Sam Strausser, and Seth Jones coming down number nine. Can we know Colin has the red bucket hat and Seth Jones, well, he was rocking the backwards hat at one point. I mean, <laughs> he could I hope be he trying is. to <laughs> throw us a curveball and and flip it around. But let's see what else we got here. And again, just as we have a moment, all the scores. Looks like St. X did come in with uh, a little bit lower score. Um, than was originally posted. They shot a 17 over, uh, but still in that second qualifying position. Springboro still at nine, and Lakota East at 22 over. Um, so it looks like there might have been just a little yeah, blur in the, in there, in yeah. the St. X scoring. Um, but still, it doesn't change anything with the you know what teams are qualified. And still waiting for Aiden Stander for score to, to finalize. He had just finished up on 18. I believe this is Sam Strauser we're looking at here from Lebanon. You know, I think Seth Jones put a beanie on. I think he did. I think he did. I think he did put a beanie on. He's just a, he knows what we're doing. He's trying to throw us off. He's trying to <laughs> test our ability to to recognize who he is. But we, we're, 
Good move. Good move on his part. Well, yeah, we're, we're, we're on to him. And and Colin <laughs> threw the bucket hat out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's going on here? Well, yeah. These guys, they get... Again, we've recognized it, though. We're, we're getting Colin oh, almost impossible angle here as I say that. But we did have someone knock one close to the hole from here. Yeah, I mean, he landed that basically on the front edge of the green, and it's still yeah. trickled through just to show how hard that one is. He did, and it didn't look like that... Uh, that Marshall Morris even cared. He watched it bounce right behind his feet. <laughs> he <just> sure did. <laughs> He's like, oh, here it comes. I'll just step forward. <laughs> uh, here's Seth Jones here now again from behind the green. Well played there. It does look like Aiden Standifer has uh, had an official score of even par. Uh, so it looks like I don't know how it would have. Yeah, he looks like he made a birdie on 17. So, um, if that's official, he he will take the third individual spot. We're back to going to dinner early. We are. <laughs> <laughs> As you're doing split screen here, the group on the top right will be Jack Ward, Jake Wittenauer, Braylon Haney, and Weston Moeller. And we're looking on the bottom left at Colin Babowski. Pretty straightforward pitch here for Colin. You can see Jack Ward walking across your screen there. He's already made it up to the green on 18. Braylon Haney on the left side. There with the gray shirt. And then Jake Wittenauer and Weston Moeller behind him there on 18. Nice shot there by Colin, just leaving it just below the hole. You can see Braylon Haney there on 18. It's found... Uh, one of the grass bunkers, short of the whole location. Tough shot from there, but smart shot. Um, not to the back of the green. I don't want to get too cute with that one. This is Marshall Morrency straight up the hill on nine. Oh. Don't know how Marshall stands, but he was plus two coming into the final three holes, so I mean that actually could have been. Uh, if that was an eagle putt, that was to get him to even par. That's so right. I mean it, he wasn't totally out of it right there, and you could tell by his reaction he could probably had a little bit of riding on that one. Yeah, Weston Moeller was there playing also from short of the green, and I believe uh, Jack Ward and Jake Whitnow are going to be. Not sure who's going to go next, but um, looks like they both have wedges out that have just come up a little bit short of 18 there. And that would be Sam Straws are tapping in. Marshall Mornsey now to do the same. And Jake Wittenauer there on the top right of your screen from just short of 18. Yeah, again, also I guess we have to wait and see what score uh, Marshall Mornsey and Jake Wittenauer post here to see exactly where we stand. It's not totally out of the realm of possibility that yeah. they could make an eagle or a couple birdies coming in the last three holes. Yeah, for sure. And Jake Wittenauer there just chipped one up there. I assume that was a birdie chip, so uh, just has a short putt there on 18 for his par. And again, this is Braylon Haney from Wayne. Braylon just a sophomore. And that was Colin Babowski tapping in to finish mm -hmm. out on nine as Braylon chases it by the hole on 18. All right, looking up nine fairway here. Last group on the golf course on this side. Um, Brady Compton, Mike Fickle, Peyton Lawley, and Quentin Stahl. Be Mike Fickle. No, sorry. 
Peyton Lawley here um, near those out of bounds stakes. But again, as we said earlier, he's on the right side of him. Yeah. It doesn't matter how close you get to him as long as you're on the right side of him. Yeah, and unfortunately not pictured, but uh, Weston Moeller poured a nice putt in on 18. Peyton Lawley looks like he's gone long. Um, couldn't see it in the bunker there if it was in the grass beside the bunker. But as we pan back up, and Jack Ward also just finished up on 18. This is Mike Fickle here with the red shirt on in the fairway. Um, and Jake Whitnauer also finishes up on 18, unfortunately not pictured, but tapped in for his par. And Mike's got it pretty close to the 150 marker here on nine also. He's, <laughs> he's so close to it, he's taking it out of the <laughs> ground there. Not sure where that one ended up. No, I didn't see the result there, but we'll see shortly. Looks, I believe that's Quentin Stahl pictured there coming our direction, and as uh, Peyton Lawley. Comes into picture with him there, I believe. Still looking for Brady Compton in this group. Final group on the golf course. Um, coming down nine fairway here again today. We hope you uh, enjoyed the coverage today, and we're going to be sticking around here to do award presentation afterwards. Um, so uh, make sure you stick around and watch that. Again, no playoff today, so Boss and I are going to get to <laughs> get to dinner a little sooner than we have the past few times we've done this but uh, before we do that we're going to go ahead and finish up here on number nine I believe this is Quentin Stahl Just short. Again, not a, sh a lot of shots getting close to this hole today um, from this area, but he's played a nice one here. Go in. Oh. Um, and again, typical result runs all the way by just just over the green or into the fringe. It's going to be Mike Fickle here from Greenside Bunker. just over himself there's <laughs> Brady Compton he's been missing in action this whole hole but <laughs> we has. finally found him and a ticklish little shot here to get close to the hole yeah not a lot of green to work with hard to tell exactly how close he is the closer he is to the green the easier it'll be obviously you can see how he was trying. Well, I don't know if he was trying to land it into the rough, but it looks like that was the right distance. It just kind of kicked um, to his left or right as we're viewing that from the camera angle once it got in the rough. But I controlled the speed pretty nice. And again, Peyton Lawley here in the back bunker. 
difficult shot to get anywhere near the hole. And he's played it beautifully. <laughs> That's excellent. Um, again, fantastic shot on his part right there. Couldn't have done it much better than that. And here's Michael Fickle. Mike is a senior, so um, this will be his last hole of high school golf. I'd like to see him in it with a nice chip shot. Being told that's a birdie chip and well played. Very well played. As Mike taps in, all right, being told that we've got birdie putts left here on nine, so this would be Quentin Stahl for birdie. Oof. Good effort, but again, typical result from pretty much everybody today. Not a lot of birdies from behind the green. It's funny, Austin, you would think that that would be the spot you want to be, but uh, really I think the spot you wanted to be was blow the hole and pin high, but we didn't see very many balls there today. No. It's tough to get it to stop in that spot. As we have uh, Brady Compton here after the nice pitch shot to that point. Nice birdie there for Brady. And Brady's just a junior, so be looking to have another opportunity next year. I'm Peyton Lawley here. Well done. Quentin Stahl hits the last putt of today. All right, Austin, so let's kind of review what's happened here today. We've got uh, three teams heading to um, the state championship next week. Uh, that would be um, Springboro, St. X, and Lakota East, along with three individuals, um, Casey Morgan, Aiden Kennedy, and Aiden Standifer. Yep. Those three individuals will be going to, uh, to Columbus next week. So we had a great day of golf here. Hope you enjoyed the coverage. We will be uh, bringing you live coverage of the girls' Division I uh, Southwest Districts tomorrow. So if you'd like to join us tomorrow, Austin and I will be here again. Um, other than that, I'd like to thank everyone involved in the production, from camera crew to, to Carl and um, Joe in the truck, along with Brian in the truck, and everyone involved in this. Um, also, any final parting words here is we're, we're going to end our broadcast from this location today. Make sure you stick with us. We're going to do a little bit of instruction, and then we're going to come back when all the scorecards are signed and everything and, and do the uh, awards presentation shortly. So hang around for that. But Austin and I are going to be done for the day. Austin, what do you think about the day and any, any closing words? Yeah, great day of golf today. Um, lots of great scores out there. Uh, congratulations to all the, the teams and individuals advancing to next week next week's state tournament and uh, best of luck to all of them i would agree again thanks for uh, watching today and uh look forward to seeing some of you tomorrow yes sir see you tomorrow brad smith here director of instruction at heatherwood i'm glad you came back to watch how you chip some of the problems that i see is the weight transfer people are still trying to lift it whether they flip their hands or falling backwards Trying to lift. Don't want to ever lift, because what happens, I hit behind it. So we're always trying to stay forward. So the best tip I can give you to try to learn how to stay forward is put this left foot back. You're standing on one leg, basically. So hopefully you have pretty good distance, but you can see I'm bottoming out in the front here. So we're gonna set up. So that ball is gonna be a little bit more forward. You can see all my weight went to the left side, put my foot back, and then use the left side. Not bad for one leg. So this is how we do it. This is how you're going to get better at chipping here at Heatherwood.
Brad Smith here, Director of Instruction at Heatherwood. I'm going to teach you how to do a little bit of chipping and get a little bit better. A lot of people hit it over the green, hit it thin, try to fly it to the hole, that kind of thing. You can learn the same technique with different clubs. Okay, You can even putt it if you can. So whenever you can, try to putt it. And then we can go from there. So if you're close to the, the green, you can putt it, roll it there. What I'm looking at is about three to five feet on the green trying to land it there. And then I'm saying, okay, is the pin very close? I'm gonna use my 58 or 54. If it's a little further out, I'm gonna use a pitching wedge. And if it's even further out, I'm gonna hit the eight iron. But my landing area is always the same. So the technique, I'll just do the technique here real quick for you. So the technique is all about taking the ball, put it in the middle for now. You can play it forward or back later on. Just play it in the middle for now set up you can open up just a little bit and then take your whole body and move just a little bit this way so even my head goes this way so i'm stacking everything on this left side that's going to allow me to go up and follow through on this side of the ball so i'm hitting down into the ball a little bit better so my practice swings are going to match my landing area so i'm not looking at the hole i'm not saying here's the hole i got to swing that big it's the landing area which is a different type of shot for most people because everything we do, putting, you look at the hole. This is how big I swing. Chipping, no, right here. So I'm gonna put my ball right in the center for now. Lean forward, hands are forward. Look in the landing area. You can watch my eyes go from the landing area to the hole. And then I'm gonna take it back with my left arm and follow through with the body little long. I have my 54. It should be a 58 for me. So that's kind of how we do chipping. If you knock it close, then you're going to be putting one putt, the most, maybe a two putt. So two putt or better, you're, the worst you're going to get is a bogey. So that's how we do it to become a golf professional and would you become a really good player. Brad Smith here, Director of Instruction at Heatherwood, here to show you how you chip a little bit better with some of those problems that you may have that I see as an instructor. We have one is one of the, the problems that I see people trying to scoop the ball, the flipping, the flipping. So they have a tough time leading with the hands. Take your alignment aid. If you don't have alignment aid, take another golf club, turn it upside down. But you can take your alignment aid we have a bunch of them here on the dry range you can practice with. Just put your limonade here, hold on to it. Feels kind of weird. Put the limonade on the side, and all you're doing is working on not hitting you on the side. Pain is the quickest way of learning, okay? You start getting a nice bruise, you'll figure it out. So weight on the left side, lead with the hands. Weight on the left side, lead with the hands. And you can see that never touched the side. And that's how you ch start chipping things in. Brad Smith here, Director of Instruction here at Heatherwood. I'm here with Austin on number nine. Austin and I have looked at this. He plays a different shot than I do. I play a draw, so I'm going to tee up on, I teed up on the, this side, on the left side, and I know the wind's coming from 9 o'clock. If I'm at 12 o'clock here, I'm saying the wind is coming from west, northwest, which is over here, and so it's at 9 o'clock, and that's to my left here. So when I play a draw, the wind's going to hold it, so I don't have to worry about a big hook or anything like this. I think Austin, what do you do here, Austin? Uh, so with the driver, I, I play a fade. So with that, keeping that in mind, it's going to move my ball more left to right. Um, so I might shift my start line a little bit further left uh, just to allow for that wind just to move it just a little bit more. Perfect. So there's a lot of things involved, not only strategies on angles, but you're looking at wind. 
Um, you're work looking on lie. We talked about that my balls are going to finally roll out because it's going hitting downhill and it's rolling out. Of course, he flies over the hill as far as he hits it and it's way down there, so I don't have to worry about that. So, so we're gonna let him hit a shot here and he's gonna angle where he wants to hit. And like I said, I hit from the left side um, and I play my draw. I play my, my, my shot that I play, my pattern all day long. He's got patterns with his driver and I think his three wood plays a draw mostly and everything else you play what? Uh, I, I tend to I tend to fade it, yeah, a little bit, yeah. Okay, so so he's got some shots in his bag that he can switch back and forth with uh, different clubs. So let's go ahead and let you hit there. Yeah, so with my fade, I'll tee up a little bit closer to the right side of the box. Absolutely perfect. Even with the dogs barking in the background, that was fantastic <laughs> how he stayed focused. So if you run a good routine, you can always stay focused even with these dogs barking at you. So hopefully you can stay focused and continue to do what the pros do here at Heatherwood. Good job. Yeah, thank you, bro. Brad Smith here, Director of Instruction at Heatherwood. I'm here to lower your scores. You've heard the expression, drive for show, putt for dough. This is where it's at. This is where we lower the scores. This is where you win. So it's all about distance control. It's my favorite drill to do. It's all about making sure you have the correct distance. If you have the correct distance, then you're gonna learn break and you're also not gonna three putt if you have the wrong, right distance. So my favorite drill is I walk off three paces from the edge of the green, stick a tee, walk another three paces, stick a tee, another three paces, and so forth. So we work back. I believe it's a four ball learning curve, so most of my students know this drill, and I do a lot of this drill. It's all about, if you know anything about Decade or some of the other programs that are out there, they all talk about speed control. I've been doing this in my junior camps forever, okay? So this is really important. But you have to learn break and you have to have the right speed. You learn break because of speed. So it's a four ball learning curve. So every putt you do, you're just trying to get it barely on the fringe. So you're gonna take a practice swing, what you think is right. That's definitely not right for that little putt. It's a small putt. I don't worry about my stroke. It's all about distance and you're gonna learn from it. That's all you're gonna do. So after I've done that, I set up, try to run your routine after you get set up. You're gonna putt if it's too long, which I feel like that's a little long, so I'm gonna back off on it, and I'm gonna take a little practice swing right afterwards. So that's a little smaller. So now I start all over again. Practice swing, that's the one I think. Get set up. And that's a little shorter. And you would do that for four balls. Then you would go back, I'm just gonna take the two balls and move back. I'm gonna skip the, the, the six steps, I'm gonna to go to the nine, but normally you would go to the six and then go to the nine and keep going back. So I do the same thing here with four balls again. Practice swing to the edge, don't have to worry about making a putt, it's just all about speed. So you can see I got pretty good speed control and that's where you're gonna learn your break. After you do all this and you go back a few steps and you keep going back, then you mix it up and see if your computer, your head, figured it all out. So then you mix it up. Maybe go to the first one, go to the back one, go to the mid one and just mix it up. See if you can have instant recall. Go through the whole process again, practice swing, looking at it, figuring out that's the swing. Get set up and putt. That's a little short. Oh, that would have fallen in the hole still. So that's how what the pros do. That's how you make money on tour. So come to Heatherwood, we'll teach you how to do that.
Brad Smith here at Heatherwood, Director of Instruction. I'm here to show you how to do a pitch. You can get some different heights. I like to think of myself as a clock. 12 o'clock up here, 6 o'clock down here. I got, what is that, 9 o'clock? <laughs> 9 o'clock to 3. Okay, so 9 o'clock to 3. So I like to think of that. As I do this, I set up like a chip a little bit, put a little bit of weight on the front side. My right elbow is going to kind of go in my side a little bit. There's 8 o'clock, there's 9 o'clock, and there's 10 o'clock. So if I work those different distances with different clubs, if I do it with my 58, my 54, my 50, I'm going to have different distances. Some of those distances will start crossing over, but the technique is still the same. You can move the ball forward or back, getting different heights. Right now, just play everything in the center until you get a little bit better at this and you're trying to hit ball divot. You don't want to hit back here behind it. If you're hitting back behind it, back here, you may scall it and may not get up in the air. So we're going middle here. I'm going to go about nine o'clock. I hinge. You can hinge this way with the face down or you can hinge with the face open. It's going to go higher and I follow it. So it's very relaxed. Hinge up and follow through. So you can see my whole body has followed through. That might be uh, maybe 25 to 30 yards. I can go smaller with that same tempo, be more down in here and it'll be a lot shorter. Same setup, a little bit of weight on the front leg, hinge it. That's closer to about 20, the other one's 30. I can go to 10 o'clock now. So now I'm gonna go up a little higher. This should go maybe 40 or 50. So I do the same thing, a little bit on the front leg, hinge it up, follow through a little bit higher. I have different distances. So it's all about different distances. If you want to play lower, you can play it back in your stands and kind of hold on to it. Play it back in your stands, finish lower. That's going to go a lot lower. So different trajectories, different heights. Good afternoon, everyone. Turn that on. There you go. I think we need some gas for you. Call on line one. <laughs> Good afternoon. We can have you all come over this way. That'd be great. Thank you. Good afternoon, or should I say evening? My name is Steve Jurek with Miami Valley Golf, and I have the honor of presenting this afternoon's awards. Before we start our awards, we would like to thank the City of Springboro and Heatherwood Golf Club for their commitment to our next generation of golfers and their hospitality in hosting today's District 1 Boys Championship. We would also like to recognize all of you, our players, our coaches, and just as importantly, those supporting our teams and individuals for all their efforts and energy supporting our next generation. Thank you very much, mom and dads, coaches, and everybody out there. Now, for those representing our Southwest District in this year's state championship, next Friday and Saturday on the Scarlet Course at OSU Golf Club. Our low three individuals not on a qualifying team are, in third position, at even par, Aiden Stanifer from Franklin. Aiden, if you could come forward. Our runner-up at one under par from Moeller, Aiden Kennedy. Aiden, if you could come forward.
our medalist and first place individual from Elder, firing at 68, Casey Morgan. Okay, our third place team who will be representing the Southwest District is from Lakota East. Come on forward, gentlemen. And our second place team from St. Xavier, if you could come forward, please. Okay, in our first place team, uh, certainly a home run for Springboro High School. Come on forward, gentlemen. Okay, that concludes our Boys D1 District Championship for the Southwest District of the OHSAA. All the best to all of you as you more move forward in your golf career.
Do you have info on Pack Crown? Oh, here we go, boy. Okay, so we're going to... Oh, you want to take the mic? You're ready to take over. I'll pa we'll pass it down. We'll pass it down. Oh, hold the mic. Now he gets the mic. I've been waiting for this moment for a long time. <laughs> All right, I think, we, oh, I don't know. We still got the feedback. That's going good. That's got a while. Yeah, it's like mimicking. Where are you guys going next week? Uh, I think the state. the state. state. You know, casual. Yeah, congratulations, Springboro High School golf team. Let's have everybody introduce yourselves and let us know what year you are in school. Jack Rott, senior. Uh, Ian Cambria, senior. Bradley Hinkle, senior. Brogan Cambria, senior. Gavin Augenstein, senior. <laughs> uh, Coach Martin, out of eligibility. 
Okay, so you guys are going back to state. What that's what's that like for you? Uh, it's great. We've been prepping for this all summer and all year. Um, we've played the course before, and I think we're ready to go, and we're going to win it. Coach, what's your strategy? Uh, the strategy is really just go off of the experiences that we've had from last year and then some of the courses that we've been able to play this, this season. Uh, I think they've really prepared us well uh, for what we're going to see next week. What was the best thing about today? The weather. The weather was so nice. <laughs> what do you like about this course? Um, I like how straight it is. Uh, it's pretty easy when you like play it safe, but other than that, yeah. And you got a couple seniors on this team, right? So you're all seniors. So you were you were there last year. You're bringing lots of experience. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> 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 so I know you got a lot of fans out here. What do you tell your parents for all these years of support? Thank you, but I need new clubs after this season. So. Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> oh, oh, thank you. Thank uh, I you, couldn't say. No. You're the best. Quick, oh, quick shout out to uh, Madre and Padre over there. They got me in the golf. Thank you, mom and dad. You guys. Oh, oh, oh. You guys sacrificed a lot for me, and it really means a lot for you guys to come out here and support me all the time. Aww. All of that. Very good. Uh, as a coach, I, I like to thank people here at Heatherwood. Uh, they're really good to us, and they just support us, um, as, as well as all these people that are standing right here. So, thanks. Coach, you have a team full of seniors. What do you want to tell them as they go into this big match? Well, I think our hope is to go out with a bang. Uh, and again, I think they just have experienced so much this year and their last three years. Um, so let's grow from that and let's go to Columbus and see if we can make some noise. We're going to let him make some noise, but we've got one more shout out here from Jack. I'd like to shout out my pappy over in Indiana. I know he's watching this, so I just wanted to say hi. All right, guys, bring home a victory to Springboro. Thanks so much for being here. Are you not entertained? Thanks, guys. Maybe I unplugged something. Should we go this way to not be on the? Yeah. That we're not on the? OK. OK, guys, come on. Are we on up here? Does, do you know we're doing this? <laughs> Just kind of line up here. That's
All right, now we've got the guys from St. X. Last year they were third in state. We'll see what they're going to do this year. Please introduce yourself. I'm Luke Colley. I'm a senior. Uh, my name's Charlie Fish. I'm a senior. Chase Maraca. I'm a senior. I'm Michael Stagnero. I'm a junior. Robert Garwin, senior. And I'm Alex Kepley, the head coach. Thanks, coach. So how'd it go for you today? What was particularly exciting? Uh, just being here was exciting. Got out to a hot start, which was kind of new for a change. But had a rough finish, but then I 17, 18, I came in par par, so it was good to recover. Does being familiar with the course, was it helpful for you? For sure. Um, knowing the course, playing our conference tournament here, it really helps. So, Coach, I'll ask you this. What is your strategy for next week? Uh, you know, it's just a great opportunity to be, to be there. We're very uh, happy for Springboro winning this week and Lakota East. And, you know, all three of us, we want to represent Southwest Ohio very well. And we did that the last couple of years at, at the state tournaments. The Southwest District has been very, very strong. Uh, you just got to go play the golf course one shot at a time. And it's uh, what I tell these guys and ask these guys this morning on the range, what are we doing today? We're playing golf. And what do we do every day? We play golf. So it's no bigger of a stage than that. And if you can keep that mindset, then, you know, you can go play your own game and do the best you can. If you do the best you can, you do the best for your team. You guys ready to do the best for your team? Yes, yes ma'am. Yeah. So we also know you've got a lot of fans out there. Anybody you want to thank? Uh, well, let's hear it from them. We'll send it down. Um, I'd like to thank my mom and dad for always being there to support me, brother and sister for being there, and all the fans, of course. Uh, I want to give a shout out to my family, and I want to give a shout out to uh, B Love for running our Instagram today. Uh, you did a great job. Uh, my, my mom and dad and grandparents, who's pretty much been at every event this year, so, and then all of the, my teammates, it's been so fun spending time with them this year. Yeah, just like everyone said, my parents, they were out here supporting me. And all you guys that came out today, it meant so much. Just be able to look over after a bad hole, a good hole, and just see your friends. It's, it's really helpful. Yeah, we really appreciate all the guys coming out from the team. And I want to thank my parents and my grandma who supported me through, like, every event the last four years. So uh, it means a lot. Yeah, we, we might have the largest high school team in the country. We have 47 kids on the team, and we have about half of them or more were here at some point today. A huge shout-out also to all of our coaches that were here and spent their day uh, with us. Um, and then, of course, all season long, the parents, grandparents, and, and other friends of St. X Golf. And uh, I would be remiss if I didn't say, go clutch Mikey, and uh, we're going we're gonna to be thinking about him next week. What's your coach mean to you? He means so much. He's always there. If we have a rough hole, uh, he comes, picks us back up. He's always there on the par threes telling us what to hit. So can't go wrong. But is he there to entertain? Always, <laughs> always. Uh, one thing I like about Coach Kepley is he's never too high, never too low, which uh, helps us a lot on the course. And I just appreciate all the time he spends for our team, especially with all the emails he has to send. We know he's up late at night and we appreciate it. Yeah, just like Charlie said, Coach keeps you really grounded on course. If you had a, if you had a really good hole, it kind of brings you back and uh, settles you down. So I'm always really thankful for him and the uh, insight he gives on the course. Yeah, just like everyone said, uh, Coach Kepley here, he's always there for us, highs and lows. But Coach means everything. He brings us all together as a team, and he's the reason we're here. He does a great job of keeping the vibes high and uh, – Sometimes he's an idiot, but for the most part, <laughs> for the most part, he does a great job, and we all love him. All right, we all right, guys. All the best to you. I hope you bring home a victory, and thanks so much for spending some time with us. Thank you. Yeah.
All right, now I've got Case Morgan. He is the number one player getting ready to go to Columbus. How does it feel? Good. What's it like for you to, to – were you there last year? Uh, not last year, but freshman year. Okay, so you're a junior? Yes. Okay. So what was your strategy today? Uh, I just stayed patient, and I made a few putts, fell, waiting around, but that's about it. What was the hardest thing about today? Staying patient. <laughs> what was the best thing then? Uh, a few putts dropped. How about standing right here and knowing that you're going to state? That's pretty cool too, isn't it? Yeah, it's nice. So what will your strategy be next week? Um, hit a lot of greens. That's about it. And you're a junior? Yes. Okay, uh, so do you plan to pursue a career in golf? Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. All right, well, we wish you all the best at state. Bring home a championship. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> He's darling.